At number 2, it's just a masterful display of edge guarding from Adelphi's Davian. Check it out. He's got a great opportunity to get in and pass, possibly even just through those arms. Goes for the down throw into forward or forward air, excuse me, a great combo. Could have found some great damage offside, and as that paint just racks up onto this mid-man, that is more and more damage basically for free. Davion, it's edge for guard. A bottom stage. My goodness, what a stall! Beautiful edge guard and England. And in our top play of this week, have you seen the movie Ratatouille? It has nothing to do with this play, but I think you'll see why we bring it up. Look at this rat, though. Look at this rat going up long, dude. Oh, oh he's got first. another. I mean, it's Ratatouille. They're yes. chefing it up. I'm going to go find another. <laughs> Fozzy, quick trade, though. And they'll stall the push for now, but contain just a little bit here. we got a lot more work to be done. It's out of CT already. Right click is missed. Ooh. Yeah, right click is huge going in this round. It's not going to find anything but Tumble Will. Fozzy with a quick trade. Oh, okay. stop. Okay, stop let the it. rat do it all. Oh, my. Phew! What a week and what a crazy set of matches we've been seeing so far. Now, with that said, we're just now passing the halfway point in the season, so that playoffs picture is definitely starting to shape up. Now, if you guys want to stay up to date with all of the ECAC action, then definitely give us a follow on Twitter at ECAC underscore esports. Or, if you guys want to catch all of the matches live, you can find us on Twitch at ECAC underscore esports. Mondays and Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern, Wednesdays at 7. Now, as always, a special shout out to our partners over at Esports U for expanding on our broadcast coverage. We definitely want to give them a special thank you for that. But, you know, that's it. That's the show. That's all we've got this week. Come back next week. Hopefully, we've got a new host. Hopefully, they've stopped bickering and all of that. But in any case, I've been KTAD. It's been a blast. And I'll see you guys next time. Hey, what's up? It's Honix back at it again to bring you the sickest clips from ECAC. But listen guys, here's the thing. Overwatch 2 still isn't out. And it's been so long that I understand what's happening in the Valorant clips now. I just, I don't know how I could have let this happen. Anyways, let's check out the action from week two of ECAC. First up, we've got Miko Baka, who's got a need for speed. They have to be careful here. That kick up not quite in their favor. Patrick has to be quick too. And Nico Baka, he's just sorry through his sky with way too much pace. Yeah, you knew this was coming. When this one lingered up in the air for a bit too long from Janiel's touch, Bradford tried to go up for this one. But Nico, like we said, he's been the fastest player. Welcome to the Great Lakes Esports Conference week number nine. We're getting kind of deep in there. And I'm Chai Lannis, joining me is Vincent, and we have a wonderful best of three matchup for you today. It's two teams that are looking really good, especially Mount Vernon Nazarene University, or we can go with Mount Vernon for short. Up against Baldwin Wallace University, which hasn't had as good of a success rate thus far, but wants to make a change starting now. Yeah, I mean, it, it, listen, there's no no doubt that Baldwin Wallace have had an up and down season, but they are, you know, they've collected wins at three and four, definitely right on the cusp of that 500 win loss. So they're definitely not out of it. Number nine seed going up against the number four seed. It is going to be an uphill battle. No doubt. I'm excited to get things started, Chai. This is going to be a blast. Yeah, there's definitely enough time still in the season to make that comeback happen. Three or four isn't like you're out yeah. of the race or anything like that sort. And I've seen some big comebacks late in the series because it's collegiate, right? So a lot of these teams are new together. Those first few weeks can be kind of rough for some rosters trying to figure out some things. And once they figure that out, late surgences in the seasons are not so rare that we can't expect it or anything of that sort. This is a best of three as well. So I want to jump into the map pick and bands in just a moment as soon as we get that slide up. Uh, because we have some interesting map picks, especially the third one, but... That's a little bit of a spoiler for jumping to that later. Mm -hmm. We still got our first Icebox Haven band away. Some of the more common maps taken away right away. <laughs> and we go to Ascent, which is still a common map. Can't ban them all out. But then we go to Breeze for the second, at least as the guaranteed maps are underway. Yeah, listen, I'm clapping because Icebox. I've seen so much Icebox. Uh, Ascent is, uh, yeah, common. But hey, listen, it's fine. 
I like you said, we got to have some of them. I don't mind Ascent all that much. I think it's a lot of fun, and it's a good measuring stick. As a map, it's a good place to start as we get to see it, because most teams play it. So you get to kind of see where a team is, is sitting, not necessarily at even footing, but on similar footing at the very least. Uh, and as you mentioned, a little bit of a spoiler earlier, Pearl is going to be our final map, should we need it. I'm, I'm excited, should we need to get to that direction. Um, but Baldwin Wallace are going to have to put on a strong showing to force a third for sure and fracture was taken away as well pearl and fracture being like kind of the like two new maps especially new fracture feels like an entirely new map with how many changes yeah. happen especially towards that a site uh so i, I definitely am excited to cast those just because it's fresh for me i've been casting for a while i know you feel that same way vincent we've both been in the game for a while uh but i mean ascent is like you said a really awesome map to start off with because a lot of players uh teams everything uh fans even like to see ascent as like that true test of how strong your team is because it's the most standardized yep. team uh, map it's very straightforward mid lane control very straightforward executes for the two sites a and b so there's no shenanigans to deal with no like teleporters no like four site execute paths like fracture things like that it is very straightforward this is a tactical shooter fps uh map and let's just figure out which team can perform best on this situation. So this will be that big first test for Baldwin Wallace right out the gate of have they improved enough to be able to take down a team like uh, Mount Vernon and themselves. Yeah, and the cool thing, I think, as as we look to head in towards this map is that you can really play this in a couple of different ways. This is fine to, to go like ultra specific and get very deep into the strategy. That's effective. But it's also very effective. We've seen it many a times, you and I, just teams running it down and winning by aim. That can happen too. And so it really is ultimately just can you can you stop something like that? And, well, are you able to use some of those strategies to your advantage? We're into the Agent Select, and this is uh, looking pretty meta to me on the Mount Vernon side. What are you thinking? Yeah, uh, it's still a little strange to me considering meta be through triple initiator, no duelist, uh, but it yeah. is definitely meta. I, I say that strange just because I'm so used to like the old days. Of, like I saw <laughs> teams like TSM running triple duelist on this map right, and that was right. meta way back then. And slowly it's been less duelists and more initiators becoming more meta on this map. And it really is because of uh, such as the thin walls. That's like the like shtick of this map. That's like a, a little specialty for this, since every map kind of has a little bit of a specialty. The Thin Walls, Fade, KO, uh, and Sova. Fade and Sova especially can really abuse those Thin Walls. You see them all over the map, especially that B-Site entry yeah. is very popular with that Odin for Sova. So I'm expecting to have a Fade on one site, uh, Sova on the other, and really try to work those um, that magic. Arena might be locked in from Baldwin Wallace. That is not a pick I'm personally a fan of if it's the solo duelist. I think Reyna is a fantastic pick as a follow-up fragger that secondary fragger the mm. one that could work work lurks things like that uh but the solo duels you don't have the speed to go with the leers are very strong but you don't have any other utility to work with so it's one of the situations where i have to wonder why not just go with a ko or another initiator to support alongside the fade instead yeah, I think there is weaknesses there, but I, I am a big proponent in the collegiate space as well of playing where you're comfortable and yeah. not necessarily being a meta slave, even though, uh, you know, because, I mean, you and I both are on the same page. We, we see sort of all those meta picks at the very highest level, and we just tend to think as those as best. And, uh, well, you know, that's not always the case when it comes down to collegiate if you're comfy on something. I tend to say go for it if it's uh, if it's something reasonable, and so in that way, I feel like Reyna a little bit a little bit reasonable here, though definitely is just a little bit outside of the norm. The other thing that I noticed is, and this kind of continues the, that discussion of the triple initiator. Um, you know, Sentinels used to be so strong here, particularly the Kildre, and we're seeing the Kildre come back. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think the Kildre is going to find value here or no? Yeah, uh, it's tough to say because that changes with a KO that can just like really go through walls with that fragment. It's tough yeah. to find those like traditional spots, but I've been seeing teams be a little creative and just honestly, really, if you just position that lockdown slightly different positioning, then it's not that big of a deal because KOs is typically expect it to be in certain locations. You can see on the map, but you can find the spots where you can't just get that fragment through the wall kind of situation. Uh, it will leave some more gaps. So what I'm really curious about is players that find success on Killjoy competitively these days also have really good lineup options. So you can yep. 
notice that there are going to be those gaps, light up those Xander Swarms, and really just trap them to where if they go in that one gap of that safety, or in like wine or something of that sort, when you're trying to like dro drop that lockdown for the retake B site, uh, or A side, I mean, then they are going to be dead in that corner kind of situation. So, do they have lineups for those Nano Swarms, or will it be a little standard play and therefore far less effective kill dry? We'll have to find out. Yeah, and I, and I think that that correctly sets up a little bit of a dichotomy here in the in the setups that we're going to be seeing something a little bit more traditionally meta in that in that initiator setup that we were discussing, and then something that you know I, to call it old school maybe is is somewhat fair, but is just maybe not seen as much in the Killjoy as well as that Reyna. So we'll see if Baldwin Wallace can use this slightly altered setup to find success and. Well, they do start out on the defensive side, which, of course, will give Vespid her most success with regard to this Killjoy, typically. Yeah, I think defensive side as well. We talked about how this is, like, the true big task for Baldwin, uh, Wallace, and also for this composition, I think their defensive side is going to be significantly stronger than offense as well. So straight out the gate, mm -hmm. we are, like, put to the test for this offensive team. Good point. Now we see whether or not they can step up to the task. Satney Loki will be finding an opening there. Both chambers rendezvousing out of the situation. They elect to uh, disengage. We got a moving forward. It's Kyle trying desperately to find something, but the defense falters, collapsing at A. Yeah, definitely a rough start thus far. This spike has already been planted, and Baldwin Wallace has to deal with all these crossfire angles as well. Looking at this Sova, especially Ultra's tree, is going to make this cut off happen. Finds the kill already. It's all down to just one. Just that kill joy left alone. And on pistol round, not a lot of utility work with. There's no lockdown to talk about on this round. And he was spotted out by the fade. Just a little bit of damage off. The rotation from E Gunner is good. And the timing read from Vespin simply was a little bit too slow. Yeah, a triple kill as well from that KO. Really doing a good job finding entry onto the A site and was able to defend the re-aggression that we saw in towards Tree. So everything working well for the attackers in this round. And, you know, losing out the pistol, it's not the biggest of deals, but you definitely have to be on notice if you are Baldwin Wallace. As we mentioned, you are going to tend to be a little bit stronger on the defensive compositionally. So got to keep that in mind. As we le uh, lean into things here, it's going to be the second round, anti-eco round, pretty standard affair. It's a significant group moving in towards B from Mount Vernon. Three players already here for Baldwin Wallace, but the weaponry is not going to be great, nor will the utility. And already running through is E Gunner. Seeing that, I want to say Edge Runner because of a completely different franchise than Valorant, but... <laughs> e Gunner going straight through, running and gunning works well enough to at least set up a trade. Top G does get that frag and following up his mystery mask. Nami makes it a final man standing, make that zero as they follow up to get killed on Sandy Loki as well. Three alive to keep those guns into this bonus for Mount Vernon. Pretty solid when it comes to the anti eco round. You don't want to lose more than two, but losing two, eh, it's all right. I think everybody sort of walks away somewhat happy, you know? Yeah. It's like, yeah, defense did okay, offense did okay. It's now that things really start to heat up, and yeah. that's because it's a bonus round. If my learning can pick up a round like this one, they're going to be on their way to massive success. So it's very important for Baldwin Wallace to ensure that they take victory. Yeah, okay, you'll need a healthy dose of Kobe and Kobe and just to keep rooting for Baldwin Wallace should they lose this round considering everything we set up earlier on story-wise the killjoy though we talked about that but it's now that they're going to finally start getting that utility really really set up and you see them loan over towards the site which means it's gonna be a lot more than usual over towards a and that's going to find success for them already it's kyle alongside the ally gets the first two kills of the round and mount vernon stopped in the tracks at a main can't get past the choke point just yet Defensive setup there. Kyle trading out the player on the generator, ensuring that there's no problem on the entry. Three players remain, though. Mount Vernon, what do you do here? You don't have any map control left, and 
with 40 seconds on the clock, it's going to take a miracle for you to get out of here and back onto a site. Once I say that, though, they're going to do what they can. Nobody ran start to try and sell the idea that left. this is actually still an A hit. Rancher invested into the Phantom as well for this bonus. So investing a rifle for a bonus round makes it sting actually pretty painfully if you do lose the round. At least try and make some presence towards A. And that's actually selling really well as Mal, Mal Vernon will be left. able to get the spike planted to be site. But the question really is, can they defend it? Yeah, this is Leperuni going to be able to connect and even get out of there. No, that's incredible mystery match goes aggressive trying to play with Whoa. their teammate but unfortunately goes down for the trouble one on four first kill moves the way of leperuni and will always be on a couple of players but that haunt is going to make things nigh impossible giving away the positions as epic you know close things out so a little bit close at the end of the day but a victory nonetheless for baldwin wallace really big that kyle was able to get that kill towards tiles flick around and find the head if that didn't go that way, if Rancer was able to get that kill instead, have presence over towards B main to try to support top G, maybe they could have actually been able to pull off that post plant defense, but it just wasn't in the cards for that round. And life of the lungs for Baldwin Wallace, they won the bonus round as they needed to do so, and this game feels basically tied up right now. Yeah, pretty much. But that being said, you look at the actual investments here, I'm a little bit concerned. Yeah. Syntex not actually buying up. Could have invested in like a Spectre. I think even had enough for a Bulldog, but didn't go for it. So that in and of itself is a little bit concerning, but I guess we'll see if that will matter long term. There is a Hunter Fury up top if you look at it. Aggression denied. Loki. Trying to find some sort of timing in mid, and it is read like a book. Yeah, great awareness by a lot of members. Rancer as well. Realizing there's a gap in the smoke, and we'll check that. It's all down to Epic on the site, and they can't do anything with that hold. It's going to be a five versus two situation, and like you said, that buy wasn't the greatest for Baldwin Wallers. Decided not to really reinvest into this, and it's all down to Kyle. Vandals in hands, and... Rain a comfort pick. Can they pop off well enough to be able to pull off those post play retake? It's one versus four with crossfires and finding squads to deal with. It's going to be a little tough. No more Leers to work with either, but they start wheeling down those members. Mount Vernon, the doors closed, and this might be a timing swing here. There it is by Nami. Good reload situation. Recognizing you have to reload after the spam as well. A bit of a checkmate. checkmate. Keep scrolling the lead from Mount Vernon. Yeah, I mean, it feels good if you're Kyle to get some of those exits, sure, but no. I'll be honest, I think I would have preferred to see a save, even even when they had those two players. Like, 2v4 retake towards A, when you have no control at all of the entirety of a, the a area, it's going to be tough no matter what. And if you don't get something early, it is nigh impossible, but ultimately, they, they go for it, they do what they can, and, you know, what's crazy about that is because of their lack of investment, is, is they kind of are okay. Baldwin Wallace have enough money to, to buy on just about everybody. I think there's only, there's only one player lacking in a rifle. So, a little bit non-traditional, but uh, I guess if it works, I, I can't be mad. I am the Hunter! Well, the Hunter's Fury, fairly close range. It's a little tough to pull it off, honestly. Doesn't find anything with it. So, good by Baldwin Wallace. The fancy feet from Kyle. The exit frags last round, making the economy a little bit more checked. I have the spike. And forcing the failure of a ultimate as well to start off this round. But we'll need to do a little bit more than that if they want to continue that success rate and get the victory on this round. Ah. Oh my goodness. Rare that you walk into another player's crosshair and walk away with your life still intact. Leperuni does that. A little bit of jitter swinging there. Not quite investing fully. Timing pretty critical on the on the take here. Two players and the spike over towards A. They're going to be pushing left. forward. Syntex is going to hear what's going on. Information will come in a little bit late. Syntex has lots of other players to deal with. Pushing up catwalk. A little bit of a labored spray, but Leperuni will eventually walk away. And it's another two on four. Chad, this is getting out of hand. Last player standing. 
even further. So I feel like it's dropped fully on the floor at this point. Nami gets another kill and it's all down at Vespid who had all that set up to her B site to no avail. The swing by Nami is really good too. Nami doing a great job on timings and swings so far this game. Leading the uh, entirety of the Mount Vernon squad as well. So, you know, practice don't mean everything, but when you're sitting at 7-1, and one, you do have to give credit where it's due, hey? Yeah, I mean... Guy praise the people who deserve the praise in the lobby, that's for sure. Uh, oh, yeah. Right now, Kyle trying their best to be able to get those frags of the team, do the Reina thing of just fragging out to find success, and I, I'd say they're doing the job with Kyle for the most part. Uh, the problem comes down to the setups, the reads not being quite there for Baldwin Wallace, and their responses to what Mount Vernon is trying and approaches to these sites haven't been efficient enough to really stall them out, except that one time in A main. Yeah, and of course you got to understand that that was around where they had rifles versus mostly Spectres, a Marshall, and, and a couple of pistols. So the firepower advantage was significant there. So we get into this round. It's sort of just a walk aggression towards Catwalk and Tree Room now taking over. So it's understandable when you look at the investments and how limited they are, but the light bolt going to follow up. It's going to clear out the entirety of sight. But the reality is nobody's there. Oh no. The timing and the frenzy is not going to be good enough. Maybe if his rifle hand it could be a different story, but it is the last to save round for Baldwin Wallace. And can Kyle save a gun at the end of this round? Can he get a kill on Tanami? No. He run away just in time and they're going to have to deal with Sova on the ramps who's weak enough for the leg shot to be good enough. This could be a good eco if they're able to go and get that rifle and save within. It'll be a bot next time either. But yeah, if they get some more extra frags, good work too. I feel like I would have personally gone for a phantom, but maybe it was a trap set up by the enemy. Well, yeah, it's hard to know. Five rounds now for the attackers. And as, as we mentioned, let's check in on that conversation we were having initially, Chad, because I think it's important. We were discussing how it's it's actually a very defensive setup when it comes to the composition chosen by Baldwin Wallace. And how concerned are you about their lack of success in the early stages of this first half on the defense? I mean, in their early parts of rounds, I don't, would expect them to have a whole lot of success because they only have like that explosivity from like a jet or a raise trying to like mm -hmm. go for aggressive things. They don't have like a KO flash like. They don't have any hard flashes on the team, even. It's all nearsightedness. It's yeah. a little tough to really be aggressive around corners and swing challenge for like a main and stuff like that. So they have all the setup from Killjoy, which is really like the big stand is we need to have a good reads, we need to have good responses. And considering composition, it's going to be a lot on base hands, honestly. So we'll get those early reads. Otherwise, they have to do dry peaks like Syntex just tried, but didn't find any success with it. Well, I'm losing out the paranoia in the box. Another big hit to the economy and to the flash utility available to the rest of the team. The Tour de Boris has invested already into this round and the duel from Epic is not so successful. Finally, Loki moving into position with that Tour de Boris, but that's I only for a that. moment as the zero point says goodbye to that Tour de Boris temporarily. Teleport's ready. Nice shot. From Loki to at least equalize things and nearly hits another one that could have been the ticket for rotation planted. towards B and the long run for Vespit. She will do what she can. Yeah, no utility to use at all. It's gonna be just straight aim dueling, which Oh, I just narrowly didn't find the head. Just come collarbone shots, which would kill a normal man, but Omen's not a normal man. It's a void monster, void being essentially at this point, as far as I know the lore, but the dark cover is going to make it basically impossible to push through that. Why would you? It's kind of crazy. And realizing now there's no time. All I have to do is go for exit frags. That's good for one at the very least. The top G shuts Vespid down. And Mount Vernon continues extending the lead and continues building that economy. By the way, speaking of uh, anime, which is what you were doing prior to this, uh, uh -huh. I would love to see an anime just about like Omen and like whatever oh, yeah. the origin story or something is, or, or just generally. Like a day in the life of Omen. What does that look like? A day in the life of Omen. What? Do, does he? Does he eat? 
Who knows? That, that's Who knows? The answers to those questions and more. Coming I did right read that book when I was a kid. Everybody <laughs> poops does only though. Let's play. Ah, that's uh, a good does, question. What's this, uh, what's this apartment look like? Is there even a bathroom? There's a one room studio. Messy? I don't know. Does he sleep? <laughs> See, this is why we need, we need the anime. Yeah. Right, please make it happen. Please. Perhaps he just drops one dark cover and just sleeps in that. That's true. I'm sure that would do well to block. Perches sure. on a rooftop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, an easy entry for the omen. On to omen. Ranster has found some steps in this area time and time again. Whoa. He committed pretty heavy commitment on a round such Ball. as this, but a nice shot to follow it up. And maybe, ah. maybe this is looking better. This is a tag. Can you really punish that? You don't have tree coverage at all, so like you kind of just send this utility, but can't actually follow up on it at all. Ooh, the TP out by Omen. Nami getting a frag as well. Omen realizing there's a lot of people who are A site, but it's all going to come down to Vespid trying to punish and not let them get their plants. If that could really happen, this could be big. Push through. Oh, it's just a classic. No, left. if that was a sheriff, it could be a different story. There's not much for Vespid to do. Just trying to stall for time, but the timer on the clock. A little bit too alive. Too much to work with for Come Mount Vernon. We'll go down eventually. It's all down to Kyle. Couldn't do 1v5 earlier, but 1v3 maybe. That's a good start. Yeah. Definitely a lot more doable. That's for sure. The real problem is the Hunter's Fury <laughs> that's, that's over here. And it's outrageous to see them just playing inside of the dark cover. Now Kyle has to be aware of that. And there's the paranoia. It's all she wrote. In T, as uh, the kids say. Baldwin Wallace unable to do much against the attackers. Even when they're looking good, these rotations that haven't really been necessary for Mount Vernon, they come in and, and it suddenly things fall apart. Definitely a tough look. But by the way, can yeah. you actually span through that with the classic? I don't think you can. Not really. Not, not to the point that would actually matter. I think you can a little bit with the ghost, but not the classic. So, I think you could do very minimal damage with it, but would you really get a kill on it? Yeah. Maybe if they're low. That's about it. Yeah. Because the, the damage the reduction is so it. significant that you're just shooting peas. Okay. Okay. Well, follows rendezvous. Maybe. Oh, better in the second and third shots. So Mr. Max able to do some chip damage. Could be on to fruition later on, but that's still an operator in hand for that chamber. Still able to hold mid if they choose to do so. That's exactly what they'll do. Distraction. By attacking Omen, trying to make happen over towards Talos, but... Not falling for that as Baldwin Wallace members as he dropped the lockdown to A-Site as well, completely stalling out the A-Site attack and hit attempt. That's Operator still watching for top mid as well, and Syntex is providing some support. Oh, that's a brilliant shot from Ranster. Though I will say that the utility from the fade, that haunt to follow up the lockdown, was good to confirm that there's still two players and where they were moving to. They were stalling out up there at uh, at A or thirty seconds Tottenham left was the rotation, but three on four. The duel taken by Mystery Masks and Vesper won that out. There's two surviving, but Epic gone down. Vespit now has to adjust. The advantage is significant. But still, Vespit coming away with more than probably could have hoped for. Time not on the side of the offense. As finally, we're back to winning ways for Baldwin Wallace. It took a miracle, but they were able to pull it back. Yeah, Mount Vernon honestly got sold out so heavily there that... They kind of just had a little bit of a clash of mental, maybe, of just what do we do and maybe conflicting. I, I want to hear what the comments were there from Mount Vernon of is the IGL calling for one thing, but somebody else is calling for something different, and they're just clashing suddenly. And 
I don't know. They just didn't have really good answers on the situation and it allowed a situation where Kyle, who we've seen be able to pop off with kills in situations where they're allowed to, did that exactly the same thing again, as well as that operator hold in mid, providing a lot of confidence for the team of Ball and Ballas. Still a fight up for Mount Vernon though, and with that KO, the old command popped up. They're really able to just run straight into the site, but Vespid's good for two before that exact thing happens. Epic able to get one of their own as well. And it's essentially a 3v2 on the field. Yeah, but Spike is here. there time to recover? No. This KO is going to fall. Sinking alive. So, Loki gone down. This one, another one on three. The attempt, though, for Mount Vernon. Spotted out by Kyle. He's going to get away. Problem being, Spike. Could you? Yeah. From yeah. the shadows. Select this Spike for free. Ooh, we'll but try to head towards me. The problem with using it so early is they still know, like... It, either committed to either on a site or canceled in this in between them so they know he's still not going to be over towards b site this omen is still a side which is why they're still hovering they're just regrouping from baldwin wallace and this is still going to be a very tough round for rance to pull off one dark cover to work with 25 seconds from another shrouded step 30 seconds left there is a world that they can pull off some shenanigans and creativity and win this out as an omen but it's certainly going to be a little tough i'm interested if kyle has another leer left or not that could be a huge entry option for them no they don't that, that dark cover is is huge yeah it makes it so difficult to walk forward they're going to go together though which is something that i, I like from baldwin wallace they've done well here by playing this heads together as they can. Swinging out, cover Rancer spots them both. Another dark cover for no real reason and gonna get caught to trying to use the shrouded step. Not quite creative enough. There'll be another round for Baldwin Wallace. Two in a row, Chad. Yeah. I like the dark cover option there because they have a shroud step. They use that audio cue to make it try to fake like maybe they're gonna go into hell. Because the dark cover would cover for that. Mm -hmm. And maybe buy them up time and separate the members of Baldwin Wallace enough to be able to find a couple of 1v1s. But at the same time, Satney Loki is like, hey, you know what? I'm going to swing through here. Because based on timing, if you are here still, then I'm going to get you. And that's exactly what they did. So I, I like the idea, but it was a little bit too slow. And the bluff was called. So yeah, life given by Baldwin Wallace. They have three rounds now. That's... Enough for at least the curse. That's a little bit enough for like breathing room going into the next half. So they reach that minimum and make this it's still a winnable map, but definitely still a little far down that mountain. No doubt about it. Yeah, definitely a uh, a good first step, first couple of steps really. And Kyle, another opening wow. pick. That's something we really hadn't seen previously from Baldwin Wallace. Is they struggle to find opening picks in many of these situations and. They've done it once again here. They did last round with Vespin. So. Shadows traveling. It's honestly a little bit of a tough look for Mount Vernon until E Gunner just gets two kills from the swings. Mystery Mass finds Vespin as well, who couldn't figure out which target to shoot at as all these members of Mount Vernon should start swarming on site, which I hate. Who do I shoot at? And I end up shooting nobody. It happens to me all the time, so I feel that for Vespin. <laughs> but it's going to be a four versus two situation. Largely in favor for Mount Vernon, but Kyle is one still alive. Loki as well. We've seen these two work magic before. Yeah, a real chance defensively, though, for the attackers. The Nightfall available in that box. Gonna give information further. Nightfall to follow it up. The Empress will be enough. One for one trade is now it's up to Kyle. Doing what they can, but Ranster is there to close the deal. Eight to three, and Last the real possibility the of half. the accursed scoreline. We are getting close to uh, the uh, October 31st, so it makes some sense. Big spook. Spooky. Big spooks. Yeah, right there is that nightfall is a great time to hit both members of Baldwin Wallace, and they didn't even clear hell yet, so they're just thinking like if they could pop out from anywhere. We have no audio cues, and with that as well. Mm -hmm. It allowed Rancer to be just full sprint and wrap around for that flank at the very end from heaven. Last place no they'd expect is, yeah, last place they'd expect is for the omen to peek out from where they you just came from. Fast moving 
Vespin at a speed oh, of knots. Kyle jumping oh, away. Oh, Vespin has been magical as she finally does come back for another double kill. Tries to go for the confirmation on that KO. The wrong decision will ultimately fall. All the good work she'd done previously undone as the last round of this half unfolds in blindingly fast fashion. Yeah, and they saw that judge in hand for Syntex as well. So you know there's a judge coming in, especially now that they shot through. The Nightfall's under a way. This last one of the house, so you have to commit it. But the weaponry is not good enough, and the crossfires and all the members on site is a little bit too strong. Too much to deal with. Not burning, Switching going sides. to that 9 3 half. And it is indeed going to be the curse. We'll see, though. I mean, I, are, you, are you a typical curse believer or no? No. Okay. Yeah, I, I got the feeling. You and so, I are on the on the logical side, so. <laughs> so what what is special about the nine three is like, yes, that is a dominant score. You have three times the rounds of the opponent, right? So like, you feel yeah. like surely this, this is a bag, of course. But if you win the pistol here and you get that conversion to the anti kill, suddenly it's five nine, and then become like a five ten, and at that point you need three really solid rounds to be able to close out that happen sure you'll eventually get these big build ups of uh ultimates like that but will you be able to get three of those uh it, you're not it's just on that like crest of like not quite a done deal for the team yet is why nine three seems to be the curse yeah and it, uh, i feel like a lot of teams I, I feel like a lot of teams are like we've understood the curse reference enough and we get it that we don't just relax, thinking that we are at full momentum going in. It's new yeah. half. We gotta get that momentum back again. Refocus so that hubris oh, no. and that overconfidence isn't quite there for teams these days. They're doing it, Chad. Th this is the pistol round on attack side ascent that every college team Chad ever does. Traveling. It's walk up mid, go market to me. Like every time. One enemy remains. Unfortunately oh, for Baldwin Wallace, mid. they took a little bit of time to get into that position and. That's why Vespin is now looking down the barrel, was looking down the barrel of a one on three. But yeah, it's something I've seen across like six different leagues and uh, mm -hmm. every team at every level. It's just the play to do on the pistol round on your attack side of the descent. Yeah. And I mean, it's somewhat effective, but you can see what happens when you wait a little bit too long. Yeah, I mean, Nami just instantly ran through Gelato, got to top mid, and just had a headhunter long range, so there's no damage fall off there. Let's just go ahead and take some shots and find some kills. Opens up that round for Mountain Vernon. And I do like going for an A main or B main primary uh, attack angle for pistol round, because, yes, mid control is huge for this map. And attacking through mid is a very good strategy. But if every collegiate team does it, like you said, then every collegiate team is ready for it, just like Nami was. Yes. Just push right through it. I, and and that's that's why I mentioned it. It's because I've actually seen a lot of collegiate teams fully anti-stratting that because of how common it is. Just to give like an idea, over I don't know, ten matches on ascent, I've seen it maybe seven. Times. Wow! The fact that Nami found the second kill was actually a little bit miraculous after missing that first shot on the chamber up high. Good that they did. If you're a Mount Vernon fan. They have a player advantage and the round advantage for sure. This is the anti e kill for them as well. And with Nami falling like that as well as a chamber, that's not donating any guns the way of Baldwin with Wallace. That's still just a pistol on the ground. Yeah, a good point to make and to consider whenever you're playing aggressive on these sort of anti e kill type rounds. Player standing. Nice swing. Great little little trade out, right? One player swings, the next player swings forward. Just trying to make sure that you can't look both directions, as uh, I learned the hard way. Nice to see the plant, though, for Epic. It isn't going to be anything further, but just a little bit of extra cash flow is always a positive. Yeah, 300 credits for everybody. A little point for yourself. I I'd say getting the spike planted on the eco second round of the half is kind of like that threshold of it being a worth eco. It's yeah. a solid one. Getting a kill or two is pretty nice too, but all things considered, you're not going to win that round over the time anyway. Things are going really bad for you, so getting the spike plan at the very end is good enough. They will have a bite here though. We saw them win the bonus, or the anti-bonus really, in the first half, but they're going to need to do a lot more than that in the second half to really come back in this map. I'm looking at Kyle, of course, being the person who stepped up a lot for that first half to get the frags, and on offense, Azarena need to pop off here. Oh, that's gonna be an Ares! 
quite the damage that I was expecting, but... Yeah, I me mean, neither, actually. A little chip damage doesn't hurt nobody. Well, I mean, it does hurt Kyle, but from Mount Vernon's perspective, it doesn't yes. hurt nobody. Stubbing your toe hurts a lot. I... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I listen. I'm no, I'm no expert, but I think bullets hurt more than a stub toe, probably. What if it's just a bullet to your toe? I, I feel like that also hurts more than a stub toe. Oh yes. <laughs> so, but, but for yes. reference to like 10 HP worth of damage, <laughs> maybe a bullet to the toe that could be it. Yeah, yeah. I'm on board with that. Oh, Kyle. Not quite on target, but ultimately isn't going to matter. Epic swings around, is there for the double swing, but it's an instant trade of Rooney. Long range of the Spectre. Seemingly outrageously strong with it. Four on One two. enemy remaining. This is a bonus. Wow. 30 seconds left. Oh, is completely surrounded. He doesn't know where to look. Who's going to challenge first? It's going to be Ranster with a headshot as well. And honestly, like, I give Match credit to Top G in that round. Like, getting two kills the way they did with the Spectre was massive. They took down the Ford member of Kyle. They kept Epic stuck over towards Lever. Long to where I thought maybe uh, Mr. Master was going to be able to get the the kill with the Arius going through the wall once they got contact from Top G's vision. But still, it was Top G getting the kill there as well. And then pressures for the very end. That was a massive round for that fade from Mount Vernon. And that's going to make it a match point for map number one. This best of three series. Right I gotta be honest, doesn't seem like it's gonna be showing any signs of stopping right now. The only <laughs> positive news to take away there for Baldwin Wallace is that they're not entirely broke. They have weapons to shoot back with. Of course, there was a shot, Nami. To be able to take one out. Aggression. No real exit strategy from Leparuni, but one for one already having the advantage that's still a good trade yeah it's a struggle of going for something like that when you don't have a duelist or your team no dashes no dismisses as arena and nothing like that and the chambers already getting a crack at the roll and elsewhere for the rendezvous plays before be three and what could be the final round of this map that no command is available as well not Vernon. Not the best of weaponry for Bonner and Wallace to deal with either. So right now, just completely stuck in mid. And honestly, there's there's no like good calls of where to go in this situation. We see on the map that maybe it'll be a site, but there's just no information for Bonner and Wallace to work with right now. 30 seconds left. Well, when there's no good options, you Blinded. just take what you got. Turn away, though. He's going to add insult to injury or answer. Looking for another wide swing, though. Low key. He's connected something. A missed shot on the operator. It's now the no command moves forward. Plant. No, oh, it's a collateral Rangers to close win. out this game. 13 to 3. What a in stone to put on this one. Yeah, we talked about how Baldwin Wallace's team composition was a lot better on defense, and we kind of saw that they didn't really have any good answers on how to get to sites and really dictate the pacing themselves on offense. And on defense, the team composition for Mount Vernon was really solid. It was great for offense, a uh, little bit slow because no duels like that, but a lot of utility to work with really create some openings for themselves. And because they have all that utility, their defense naturally is going to look really good as well. So this is a dominant second half after an already pretty dominant first for Mount Vernon, looking really good on Baldwin Wallace's map pick as well. Yeah, and I mean, a lot of that coming down to just all the individuals showing up as well, you know, that definitely had a factor. We saw Nami there at the very end picking up the collateral, but had a good game throughout on that chamber roll. So the the lack of, of a duelist really wasn't felt because everybody was uh, was showing up when necessary, Chad. With that being said, that was Mount Vernon's pick. So, you know, all things uh, all things being even, there is still a chance for Baldwin Wallace to bring this in back, and that would be on Breeze, which is our next map. But that will be right after this break. We'll be back in just a few moments. Just a friendly reminder that fireworks always add pizzazz to your points. Of this series. Good read there by Jock. Because if he didn't place down that block, that would have been a really early stock lead that he would have gone. And oh, oh wow, that day. absolutely sniped out of midair. 
everyone is in flux when Mount St. Mary's is on the point. And that is the bulk of your healing if you're Emery and Henry. Now you're coming in with both the Vessels and the Shattered, but again, a massive gravity flux comes out from Mount St. Mary's, stops it in their tracks before they can even get started. Yeah, the attack vibes are gonna deal the final blows to several members of Emery and Henry. Eve has got beef with BSU and wants everyone to know it. Be one situation left to clutch it out. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm a little bit afraid here that the wide swing's gonna come out, but Ian's waiting. Ian is being a little bit patient here. Eve is not going to be able to get the first one, and maybe, maybe if Ian was able to wait there a little bit longer, Eve would not have been able to get that three. Someone. Not me is going to have to tell Taylor Halo that sharing isn't always caring. Gonna beat it. Get right out, Halo. Being into it. If nine percent more, they have to touch for even point of a percent. It is counting. There is our send, but he may disappear just as quickly as he has up here. Oh my goodness, Killer Miles! That is a zero to death. If I have ever seen one, Taylor Halo. Don't let your guard down. You never know when Rhino will come charging in. Rhino is all the way back. That just goes to show how much they're not wanting to make it, but Rhino with all the control gets the one on the board. <laughs> Talk about getting one in there. He actually like picks it up initially from like a mini pass to himself that you know an expert is expecting an expert to do something expertly, right? That is just about <laughs> as simple as it gets, right? Like 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 just just literally boiling it down to more basic rocket league right uh, there. Oh my god! And again, Rhino does it twice in about 30 seconds after no scores. We're bringing it around town with Chowin University. Big fights out short town though. Just gets the better of it. Great spray control. Takes two down with him and already. Chowin is looking at a 2-0 right now. Gonna try an entry onto the site with quickness. Not willing to take his foot off the pedal and Town's got a third. The last two coming from CT and Town wants to put the nail in the coffin right here, right now. One's there, he's gonna hear them both. He has a head in front of him, four before he goes down. And all it takes is Dusty to finish this one off. Last but certainly not least, Big J5 coming in hot with a big 5K. Kentucky, they may get the second point for free. Oh, oh that shot headshot? Big J. The oh, another headshot. one! What? He's got and another dragon already. The third? Oh, wait, he a finds three. three! Big J, he's looking for a fourth! Oh my god, he finds it! He is single-handedly destroying Kentucky right now. Oh my goodness! Four eliminations, one Hanzo, and a brand new Dragons Online. The question... Wow, I missed these awesome clips and it's only week two, so make sure to keep up with the action on Twitch at ECAC underscore esports, Mondays and Tuesdays at 8 and Wednesdays at 7. And make sure to follow their Twitter at ECAC underscore esports. And thank you to our partner Esports U and to you for hanging out with me today. See you next time. Hi everyone, my name is Heather Garozo, also known as Sapphire. I'm so excited to join you here today. This is an initiative that means a lot to me. Um, I've been involved in esports now for a little more than I want to admit, but about 20 years um, in, in many different facets. Um, and when I started, I was often the only woman in the room. Um, there were no women competitions. Um, there were no other women on co-ed teams or women's teams. Map number two is about to begin for this best of three from Mount Vernon Nazarene University up against Baldwin Wallace University. And Mount Vernon definitely looked really good in that very first uh, map. And going into the next map pick, at the very least, it will be Baldwin Wallace's map pick. So maybe it's going to be a lot closer uh, of a fight, especially going to Breeze, completely different ball game. It's a lot more aim duels, not as much map-based strategy. 
Yeah, but I, I mean, I, I give it a buck, Chad. I, I didn't particularly feel like the the map strategy was all of that crazy different with regard to Mount Vernon. Like, yeah, there was uh, some of the basic stuff that Mount Vernon were doing a lot better, but Baldwin they struggled overall. It was uh, even in the duels that they they had some trouble. So I I don't know that they'll be doing all that much better. I hope so, but I am I am definitely a little bit scared. But as you mentioned, Breeze is coming up. We're into the Agent Select, and um, I feel like I feel like there's a pretty set in stone way to play this map. What do you think? Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, just Viper setting up for walls for really strong B holds, good executes for A site, and kind of the vice versa, like executes for B site and strong A holds as well. If you want to go with a slightly less meta but still strong, just mix it up a little bit here and there. Sova is great for a big wide open info. That whole drone can see everything for a lot of these sites. Uh, jet chamber, very commonly seen because wide open maps, great for operators, of course. Um, last agent from Syntex, I usually would see like a KO, which is like how uh, MVU, uh, MVNU just went ahead and picked up. Um, other than KO, sometimes we go with like a, a, a fade or the go of the sky. Uh, but I really want to see a hard flash option. Something that Baldwin Wallace really lacked from last map is a hard flash. They couldn't really like hard challenge. There's all these near side options. Therefore, they couldn't really challenge corners really strongly, things like that. Um, so if they can pick up like a KO here for Syntax, would be huge. And I really want to see Kyle start popping off on that jet. I'd be cool. Yeah, well, we are going to see the KO. I was going to say I'd be cool just to see like... Uh, you know, Sky even. I think that, that would have been fine too. But yeah, KO definitely is the uh, the more meta pick in this yep. engagement, you know, and on 3s specifically. So pretty much uh, similar. But one thing that I did notice there, Chad, is a swap. Mel Vernon it has said goodbye to E-Gunner for now and has swapped in Knight. And as you and I were discussing, that swap is certainly a, a, a bad news for Baldwin Wallace. As Knight is a heavy hitter for this team. Yeah, Knight really is. I mean, Egoner also performed really well last game, too. Had multiple rounds of the guy double kill and open up into a site, things like that. So if they're swapping to another player who on paper typically performs a little better, then, man, this is going to be a tough test for Baldwin Wallace after it already was tough to pass. There's no bell curve here. you got to pass or not. Nope. Uh, so going into this map, going to be mirror compositions as well. Um, so we'll have to see how things go. Uh, the KO pick as well, talking about that a little bit. Uh, one of the main reasons why KO is so strong, I mean, hard flashes are awesome. Scouting options, the fragment could be good for clearing out corners safely. That null command is really good for entering sites or at least stalling site executes from enemy teams as well. But also just the, the suppression against chamber specifically is huge. Yep. And against jet. So this is a very strong jet chamber map. And both those agents, if they get suppressed, they lose that eco weapon of the blades of jet, the headhunter and uh, tour de force for chamber. And that's kind of the big reasons why people pick up these agents. And if those are shut down by your one utility piece, the agent, one agent countering two, really strong pickup. Yeah, well, not only that, but, you know, the positionings uh, that both Chamber and Jet tend to take on this map are ultra aggressive because they can use their uh, their abilities to get out, whether that be the rendezvous or the, or the dash. Those are canceled out. And you can see Nami forced to use the rendezvous there because the zero point comes in. So exactly what you're talking about coming to fruition almost instantaneously. Here. The dash through this wall went up just in the time that Nami was not able to quite get the headshot angle. Spike planted. He wanted shock bolts will go off. Here. Will not find much, a little bit of damage to the jet, that's about it. Kyle's not going to be sitting pretty happy and pretty, but it's going to be even less so now they're down. It's going to be 3v5 as the pressure comes through. The Sheriff will maybe be good. No, it's not going to be fun to kill at all. Knight, we talked about, but it might have been a cast of curse. Everything's going wrong for Mount Vernon. Baldwin Wallace remaining. able to hold on strongly as the Viper finally goes down. Just a lone Ranger. Uh, so the Viper goes down and the Poison Cloud is what went down. Little Ranger of Viper couldn't fight in the fights. The shots in long range. Still will go Mount Vernon's way, and that round looked like it might not have. The tides were turning. Yeah, definitely a uh, sort of problem moment for Knight. It comes around the corner, and everyone just has their head in their hands trying to hit that shot. But we've all been there, to be honest. And it's, uh, it's not fun. So yep. I'm sure we'll see something a little better moving forward. The... The real difficulty, I feel like, on the, on this map, 
if you're playing with pistols, is how do you close the distance? When I mean, you look at what's been purchased. It's Guardian, a couple of Marshals, um, and then I mean, Rance, you're going to be playing close range on B with the Judge. Like, closing the distance towards some of these Marshals is just so difficult if you don't have rifles in hand. Yeah, I, I think this is the hardest map to win a bad buy on or a bonus on uh, Ecos just because of the wide open areas. Naturally, because of that, it's better weaponry will typically reign supreme. So let's see Marshall buy that. That's it's kind of like the Eco weapon that works out really well for a lot of people. The Judge close quarters for a Viper works really well on top of it. But the Marshall close quarters, uh, not the best, not the best. Yeah, I think Knight dashed into that position. Uh, definitely a little bit of a questionable decision, in my opinion. But hey, still coming away on top. But that's the problem. You give Syntex a uh, possibility. He's going to take away another frag. And now it's relatively even. Two players pretty low. One on either side. And a two on two ensuing. Mystery Masks going to have to move in. Try to find something here. Nami. On the flank, and I don't know that they're anticipating Nami's position. The longer that things go down, the more that this will become a possibility. It's all Last about the timing here. Nice shot. Remains. The judge connecting, but long range is just not where the judge is going to be good. Nami will clutch things up, but a definitely a scary round for Mount Vernon. It feels like the... Uh, clean the clean game that we saw last map is just not the same as we've seen this this first two rounds yeah a player we'll look at a lot right now is knight somebody that we might have passed a curse might could be coming in here a little bit of hubris perhaps because the position has been very bold uh with the sheriff that's swinging what through it. yeah swinging through the toxic screen on the first round of the sheriff and just spamming all the shots missing them out and then the second round just going straight up close quarters with a marshal uh, right around the corner. It's, it's been very, uh, very uh, confident positioning that is just not working out for them. So I want to see Knight start showing up, taking this uh, fight a little bit serious, more seriously. And if that's the case, I think Mount Vernon is going to be a lot cleaner on these rounds. However, going in this next one might be a little tough to pull that off, really, because Baldwin and Wallace, they're the ones that have what is essentially an anti eco at this point. I always say be who you can afford to be, you know? Yeah. And Knight clearly believing that he can afford to be somebody that he was not in those last couple of rounds. That could change, though. Epic certainly making an adjustment. Knight will find one kill. Pretty long range on that as well. It's 4v4, but only for a moment. Opie moving forward, trying to deny Ranster. Oh. I love this judge. It's so great. And I'm looking at Knight. They did get that kill in mid with a singer from a flank option. It's very aggressively done. And now with a Vandal of Hand, found another one kill on sight. Makes a number of curl advantage for Mount Vernon. And while Vespin has these lineups, there's so much time to burn. These lineups are going to not go to everything with this forward positioning. Knight knows exactly where they're coming from. Lines it up, takes them down. It's going to be a round win for Mount Vernon. And that's their bonus win that felt like an eco for the start of the round. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's so crazy how this uh, has come through. And, I mean, it, the crazy part is it, the game thinks it's thrifty. We know because we're watching that they uh, they just had those weapons already. But a, uh, a bit of a ridiculous engagement situation overall. But I, at the end of the day, the outcome is the same. Baldwin Wallace get smacked in the face with just a, a bonus round victory. And that's not good. That's definitely going to mm. gonna hurt their confidence as, as they move into this. And you, you can see what they've bought up here, Chad. They're going for... I mean, this is how you win thrifty rounds if you do win the, on this map. It's three marshals. A whole bunch of marshals. This is pretty much the only time you'll ever see more than one marshal bot on team. The Knights already off to the races, has a Vandal in hand. And we saw in the last round how crisp that aim was. So while the positioning was a little bold in those first two rounds, on the third, we definitely saw why Knight has good track record and why that player was hyped yeah. up going into this One map. Enemy remaining. And everybody down, else on Mount Vernon, man. The all rifles in hand, it's just so tough for any members of Bone Walls to really find success. They have to be so good with this martial aim. And Loki, no spike in hand, completely surrounded on the map. Hard to really deal with the opposition here. This is Mount Vernon. Playing it nice and safe, not taking unnecessary risks as they're holding the angles and slowly encroaching on the enemy. 
I love the statement not taking any risks when they're like literally in the spawn of the attackers. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. Didn't overpeak there. They realized they lost a couple of players, didn't want to give any additional weapons away. Valid as ever. And well, already a double up. This feels aggressive to say the least. I mean, double up on this map, don't get me wrong, very good in general, but. Yeah. Uh, this early? That's a big investment. That's, uh, that's a lot of cash. I think their economy can afford it. Like, even if they lose this round and lose all their members, they still will be able to buy up rifles for four of their members, all and right, also okay. Nami will have Let's tour to force next as well. So, like, there really isn't much of a risk here. And also, double up, like you said, it is actually good on this map as well. And at night has a blade storm available. So even if they get pressured for one of these ops, they still have that option for a retake or deal with that support pressure. Top G positioned in a way that their shoulder will be exposed to a person who they won't be able to see themselves. So that was very interesting. Rancer, big kills, especially on Kyle, who was able to just pressure over towards nice angle. So if Rancer didn't get that kill, it could be a site open dub and two kills going away, Baldens instead. So massive step up from the Viper. Yeah, Knight, Knight would have been in big trouble there had Ranster not, not been in the back anymore. No way. Great little dodge. If you're a Syntax there, you are molding out of control. Oh. Solid flash dodged just by the one area <laughs> that Nami could be in. Oh, man. Man, yeah, that's a bummer, dude. Like, I can't blame Syntax for challenging that either. Like, how often did that really happen? You did everything right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like now we like you see this come out. Like you're already, Teleport he's already through. moving towards it. So like, oh man, that's just unlucky, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. Viper's pits are online, uh, so we'll probably see that get popped over towards B site, especially since Rancer is left all alone right now. Knights in the vicinity, but soon be a buy brown for BWU on top of this. So I'm surprised it wasn't popped right away. But I guess good they didn't because A site's gonna be the one that Baldwin Wallace will attack towards. The Viper's pit early might be a little shallow for a good hold for the site though. Certainly does feel that way, and the push continuing. Yeah, look at this. The actual spike plant not going to be defended via that pit, and so you see the orb come out in position. And the only good news out of this is that. The man advantage is there for the attackers. The trademark is a little shallow as well, so it's not going to really see mystery masks coming around the corner until the last Spot second. It? it was spotted or shot out. The swing no. through is good for Loki. I don't think he saw that. I don't think he spotted the the leg there. That's the only thing that makes sense. Nami trying to get out. Nicely done. Quickly adjusting to find that frag. is going to try and get something further but all players exiting in their direction and it is a uh, a round of investments but a round of victory nonetheless for baldwin wallace and one of those operators was saved they have a tour de force as well so they can still donate that overnight that works. and have nami use the a tour de force have a double op again or just buy two physical operators yeah they sold that i was like that doesn't make any sense if you're gonna go double op you might as well use ultimate but maybe they go single. I think the single operator, even though the double operator is viable on this map, I still prefer single op. Because uh, double op, once you have to get into a force retake situation, having two operators retake a site, it just feels so bad. I, I definitely also think it, it, it matters a lot who you have on your roster and how comfortable yeah. they are in those situations. But Bye. couldn't agree more. Knight, aggressive as ever, is going to be punished, though, going that one for one. And that's... A lot less uh, positive for the defense, realistically. You've, you've thinned things out. How is that not a collab? Oh, it looked like it was going to be. I was waiting for it, man. Perhaps I'm lucky for Nami. Maybe if he waited another millisecond or two, it could have been. I don't know. But it's the way of the road. Viper Spit is still available for Mount Vernon, but that Null Command and Hunter's Fury makes it a little bit tough for Mount Vernon to really pull it off properly. So... Hopefully, uh, for Mount Vernon, they'll be able to burn some of that utility, at least one of those old tanks, before popping their own. As I was, I was saying before, but before we got robbed of that collateral, these one-for-one one, one one trades really actually aren't positive for the defense overall. No. Though. 
Right. Because the, now they have three places to defend and only one member per area, and they cannot rely on the, the teammates left. who are now dead. So it's going to yeah. be an A attack here. And Baldwin Wallace are going to walk in to just a single defender. Ooh, Top G knocking a spot out. Too far away for that recon bolts to see them. That shot did not go Top G's way either. That's towards door. So this sub node here, Top G is here. The pink out, now they do know. And Mr. Mass getting the frags and in and out. Push and pulls for these two members was so good. And takes out the three members of Baldwin Wallace, just the two of them. The bill gets spiked, defused, certainly. And that's going to be another round win for Mount Vernon. That is an outrageous run of kills from Mystery Mask, right? Like, just walks in the door, one shot missed on the op, but even then, finds both of the kills on the players defending the Spike Planner and then the Spike Planner down as well. Just brilliant work. As we get down to it, we're going to see that one more time, though, and let's see. How close was this to a collab? I, that that you, was glad on my screen. I'm like just, saying. just a handful of milliseconds. If you waited, mm -hmm. then maybe it's like a server thing, you know? Like, oh, it's so oh, yeah. close. I mean, what we see on our screen isn't necessarily what the server sees, but what we right, saw looked tough. like a collat. Ooh, saw that hammer arm. Nami, can Ron be out of here? But now waiting this long has Gamble. Will they come all through the other side? But they have Top G watching for oh. Amy as well, so. Nami. Felt like that one was close. Just over exerting just a little bit. Oh, what confidence from Kyle to take that duel after just hearing the fact that this is an operator here. And Nami just taking names. There will be one player to fall down as Syntex comes up through the tube, applying the additional pressure, but still. The man advantage clearly in the hands of Mount Vernon is down to a lonely Loki. Well, it's nice shot by Loki. One of the players that really stepped up for Ball and Wallace last map on the scent, but couldn't quite do a 1v4 clutch this round, which is quite the, the task Marshall. to expect somebody to do, yeah, with the Marshall too. They'll be able to buy up now. There's still enough time to be able to get that breathing room for that half that we talked about last map. But it really feels like they need to do a lot more. Because the breathing room of three, which is kind of like that minimum, wasn't enough on a sense. And I feel like that is probably going to be the same story on Breeze. Yeah, I'm right there with you. It does feel like just everything is going the way of, of Mount Vernon right now. There's just not been, you know, any of those, those close moments have just not gone Baldwin Wallace's way. Even that 3v3 as we were talking about. Well, the timing. Tommy. I love this angle. You can only really use it once per map. Yeah. But it's easy to get punished on it. But it's so fun to pull off if you can do it properly. And Nami now is looking towards Vesper's way. As somebody who tries this angle a lot and gets punished more often than not, I'm so happy Down that it eight. works now for Nami. But Baldwin Wallace certainly is not excited about it. Very cheesy spot to be sitting in. That, and that was a 2v5. That's, <laughs> that's the spot where after you die to I it, you spot. just throw your hands up in the air, maybe slam your desk a little bit. Like, what am I supposed to do? You know? That, that's that's, that's what that's that, yeah, that's that in a nutshell. <laughs> Nice try once again, but another good little flank there from Ranster. Eight to one. And somehow, some way, this is this is even more dominant. Yeah, it's Bald and Wallace's map pick and had a rough go so far. Knight joined the view of just admiring cobblestone architecture and now okay. you know, nature's beauty. <laughs> <laughs> Just the bright skies. The view of day. That, that's <laughs> that's what I enjoy here. Listen, they did a great job of modeling. This is a big moment for Knight right here. So many members of Baldwin Wallace right here in the face of the operator wielder. There they go. They fall. The challenge from Nami as well. Can Rondu put out? No, they're pushed too far forward. They won't be able to teleport out there. So an operator doing it over. Baldwin Wallace wants it, but. 
positioning they were in, operators that could be very useful on attack. No oh left. man, up over the top. That was such a bad decision from Knight. Mystery Masks comes around the corner. That elbow position, <laughs> seeing a lot of a lot of action. There's Loki once again lonely, <laughs> as I said before. There's one v two. Has the shots connected? Knight falls down. This is winnable. I remember it was about Burn absolutely sending it. Bellard Wallace says yes. Thank you. Do more of this, please. Feed me. <laughs> Feed me. Feed me. Our answer's going the right direction, though. I feel like no matter 30 what, seconds left. Ranster's position here is Spike going planted. to be unexpected. Okay, maybe not. Well, Ranster was in this spot in the last run as well, which is why they're kind of thinking maybe they'll expect me to go for a flank, and that's exactly <laughs> what Loki immediately looked to check. It's actually a, a good like mind games read by Ranster overall. Yeah, I forgot that Ranster was in that position. You're absolutely Toxins right. Could throw out a Viper's Bait here, just to troll, but it's just going to put down the toxic screen for now. Tap on the spike. Inflation Got the information. Is there oh. time? There's no time. Doesn't even try for it either. Have they not? Clutch. Unfortunate time to lose out via the time. Mount Vernon, but hey, Baldwin Wallace, the best they've looked thus far, two out of the last five rounds has been theirs, and whilst yeah. as, a win, as a win rate, that's not that great, but you know, it's much better than the prior five rounds. Yeah, 40% is better than zero. You can't argue with math. <laughs> Though many have tried. <laughs> yeah, many have tried, but if you're a collegiate player, you gotta respect it. That's, that's right. That's part of college. Uh, Definitely. Def Speaking play. of math, uh, Baldwin Wallace, after winning that round, still is on a save round because the economy is so poor. And Mount Vernon is one to be able wow. to fully buy up as well. And now is Top G pushing up in a way that they haven't done so yet. Could be a big surprise factor for Baldwin Wallace if he plays his timing right. Oh, man. Knight. Wow. Just waiting. Another night for the quad. Everything lining up perfectly. Last Four quick frags and uh, another flawless victory. We have yet to really see, in, in either map number one or map number two, this Baldwin Wallace team be able to put together multiple rounds in a row. Like, mm -hmm. I think they had had two rounds back to back, back over on a, on a set one time, but yep, it, it was certainly not consistent. And you got to find those consistent victories if you're if you want to build any sort of economy. Yeah. Last round of the half. The Kami sees us with seven ultimates on the field. All those are going to have to fly. That's been was short last time. I think that's going to be short again. It will be. Uh, it's uh, interesting yeah. that they're going for that multiple times. There is like a little bit of a little peak. If they plant this backwards, <laughs> yeah, they'll at least actually get planted. the spike somewhat in the pit. No, so they can no, see. It oh, matter. they fall though. That's the danger. Command as well. On the flank. Nope. Denial. That no command making it difficult to use other options. Has the Hunter Fury in the back lines. You're gonna have to. Gonna have to confirm that kill eventually. One enemy remaining. One player remain. The Hunter Fury and nothing to be found out of it. It is 10 rounds now, double digits in the first half, Chad. Switching sides. I saw a lot of ultimates there. A little tough to make, keep track of the action, but honestly, Rancer played that perfectly, realizing they're just on the edge of that no commit or the fragment. They're not taking full damage, so they're gonna be they're able to stick the diffuse to halfway at the very least. Fall off it on the perfect timing as soon as that tunnel vision happened because they got pinged by the recon bolt. That's exactly when the rest of the members of Alpharian were striking back as those Ball and, uh, Wallace okay. members were trying to punish the diffuser of Ranster. So, perfect situational response by all these members of Alpharian just as a unit playing that majestically and just shut it down. And it was getting a little close to the wire on the timing, but 
is still firmly in their hands. So three away from closing out this entire series is Mount Vernon now going to the second half. Domination, that's what we see in Vespa. She's gonna have to stand tall here. Loki on the other side, a crossfire set up and prepared for the defense of Baldwin Wallace. What can be done though? That zero point losing out and the rendezvous away as Loki finds the opener. That's actually huge. Mount Vernon, they have been the architects of those opening picks more often than not, and to pick one up on their own is massive. Yeah, finding Nami as well. So the duelist and pseudo duelists are gone inside of Mount Vernon. No easy entry, no Luxo sponging anymore. Just gotta deal with straight gun battles because their utility across these two initiators and controllers is gonna be pretty weak as well, considering it's a like pistol round. So numbers are definitely gonna be quite the advantage for Baldwin Wallace. And it's a situation where man Rancher, a shot. 30 seconds. Needed left. even more so. No utility. Already used that toxic screen over at A. At least the plant of this spike will come through. So small victories uh, are abounding. Nice standing. shot, close range. Syntax gonna take the other player out, which means two it's bullets. one on four, and yeah, two bullets in the chamber. Gonna have to reload that. HP though does keep this a little bit more doable. Body shot needed, necessary, and called in. Two players remaining. Jumps, jump being abounding oh, he knows or at least one more is the shots are connecting an upgrading over to the ghost so weak playing ring around the rosy just a singular bullet required but the time is simply not on baldwin wallace's side loki will get the frag but the frag is irrelevant because you win rounds uh, based on that swipe what a round by ranster Already the player that I was praising and having really good situational awareness and playing things perfectly by small windows of opportunity that they find. And right there, the members were... So to be fair, there's weak members. This one shot to the body is good enough. So it's the easier shots. But So you got to give credit to the rest of the team the there. But Grants are still finding those little moments of peak shot, back cover, just in and out, dodging and weaving, and using that cover and just kind of guerrilla warfare moment by Ranster. Pulling it out and playing the time at the very end as well is beautiful. 1v4 in total there. And huge mistakes for Baldwin Wallace. Just allowing that to even be a possibility. Would not have gotten checked, I don't believe. But she still hits a brilliant shot. Left Rooney down and out. The shot darts, though. They are going to be her demise. Epic collecting something and ooh, maybe well, doubling down on it there. The Viper's Pit now pulled out on A, but in a two on two and a flank coming through. This is maybe not so true. Oh, this Viper's Pit is far better than we saw on the other side of things. Kyle, though, a great timing, but can't find the kills. No way, Stinger doesn't get a kill there. Razor shuts it down again. It is all down in a one versus two situation. Epic with just a martial hand. Will not get lucky on the right click on a Ranster. Has so much information to guess through and cannot find either of the two of my Vernon. It's gonna be 12 2 score point. line match in serious point right now. Are you kidding me? I, I genuinely thought that, that that singer got the kill. Like, like I heard the headshots and I'm like, oh, he's dead. Dead, right? No. It's so frustrating. Losing out in such a ridiculous fashion. 12 to 2, and now Vernon on the cusp of uh, making this an even more dominant scoreline than Ascent was, which is saying something. Last chance saloon now for Baldwin Wallace as they head into this one. Nami, not like this. Mm. Double kill to open the proceedings. Also. Made this look easy, simple, and... Uh, Finally, will be stopped. Vesbit, who's been quite consistent over these two maps, is at least going to stop that bleeding. Oh, what a shot from Mystery Mask as well. A knife with a stinger up close. That time it works. It's just the bane of Kyle's existence, apparently. Doesn't work for them, works for the enemy. 
What's up with that? All down to Loki, the last one I'm in, alive. Does find a nice headshot there. This is a winnable situation, though it is certainly dire. Loki, Sanity Loki, needs to win this to keep their chances alive in this series. It is not going to be the story to be told this day. 13-2, an even more dominant game than the first. Mount Vernon wins the series 2-0. Yeah, and I, I got to be honest, Chad, I didn't think there was any way it would have been more dominant, especially considering that Baldwin Wallace elected to head towards Breeze. But I think that our, you know, our thought process there was that, you know, maybe if, if we get something a little bit different, there'll be a little bit more chances to succeed. I think that the the aim difference, especially when you, you chalk up that 1v4, really did come to the forefront, in addition to the fact that if you win a 1v4, props to you. But... There's definitely an aspect of that where the other team w misplayed the situation, and I think that that definitely came into the fray as well. Yeah, on the opposite side of any good play is a bad play. That's just the nature of how things work. Um, and overall, Mount Vernon has had far more good plays this series. Yeah. Uh, Baldwin Wallace, uh, another terminology like, or phrase I like to use is you either win or you learn. And I think uh, Baldwin Wallace did a lot of learning this series. Um, yeah. Hopefully they can take those lessons, review the bot a little bit, and come back stronger the next time around. Uh, but simply today, Mount Vernon just showed up big and showed to be the better team. Yeah, and uh, you know what? Listen, it was a number nine seed against the number four seed as well. The uh, in this conference, Great Lake, Great Lakes. It is definitely still uh, anyone's game with regard to being able to pick up some some speed here at the very end of the season and make sure that you're able to uh, jump into those playoffs. So, uh, well, with that being said, I uh, I am excited to see more from this Mount Vernon team as uh, as we move forward. But we will be looking for an interview from Mount Vernon. We're gonna head to a short break though to get that set up. So Chad and I will be back with our interviewee in just a few minutes. has changed drastically over the most recent couple of years. Uh, initiatives like this are, are so meaningful to getting more women involved and giving them a stepping stone to join those tier one leagues, to join co-ed teams, mixed teams, um, and hopefully become the best in the world. So I came to join today to just tell you a little bit about my journey, hopefully inspire you um, whether you want to go down the path of being a professional gamer or a content creator, or you want to work in the industry, there's so many different options. And I wanted to share a little bit about my story with you. Um, so first off, I'm actually at um, Valorant Champions in Istanbul right now. The match is happening like just behind the door from me. So you might even hear <laughs> some of the crowd noise going hype. The crowd is obviously cheering for Fnatic. Actually, I just heard a loud cheer right now, so something epic might have just happened. But uh, so apologies if you hear that background noise, but it's all part of the vibe. It's all part of just being in esports, living and breathing esports. Um, my journey actually started just as a player. Um, I was a multi-sport varsity athlete in high school, um, tore my MCL, was out, out on an injury. Um, and then I found esports. My brother would have his friends over and I didn't want my brother to be better than me than anything. And I just started playing. And this was actually Counter-Strike. Valorant wasn't out at the time, of course. Um, and turns out that I was pretty decent at it. And so started playing more and more and more, um, found some teammates, traveled down to the CPL, which is like the top tournament at the time. Um, thought uh, after winning a bunch of tournaments in the Milwaukee area, that we would come in and do really well. Uh, turns out we were terrible and <laughs> we finished dead last, um, lost to a Finnish team that was one of the best in the world. Um, but it only motivated me to be um, a better player. Um, so uh, I kept competing. Eventually I made it on to some of the top teams. Um, both, uh, I was in co-ed teams, um, played in ESCA Invite, which is now the equivalent of ESL, uh, ESL Pro League. Um, and also played on some co-ed teams, uh, played with teammates like uh, Miss Harvey Potter, who is now the coach of Evil Geniuses, uh, Alice Liu that can play with Co Complexity's Valorant team. Um, some of the things that I learned uh, in my competing journey, um, it's not just about um, my, my physical skill about in the game, not just how quick you could react to something. 
Um, but communication, teamwork, these things are so, so important. Um, at Valorant Champions right now, I get the opportunity to listen into the teams and listen to their communication. Um, it's amazing um, how they refine their craft and refine how they communicate with their teammates. Um, it's something so fascinating. So I encourage you, one of the things I, I like to tell up and coming players is record your team's comms and listen back. Did you give the right calls? Um, could you have done better calls? Could you, those sh calls have been shorter and more precise? And those are the ones, some of the things I've learned um, as a player. Um, throughout that playing journey, uh, one of the highlights was in 2012 when I traveled to Paris and competed in the Esports World Cup, which was the top, top tournament for women at the time. Uh, and we came in and we won uh, the World Championship, which was so exciting. It's so amazing to play in front of crowds of thousands of people. Um, they were cheering against us because we were playing against a European team and we were an American team. But that feeling is just like unlike anything else when you can raise that trophy and they play the national anthem of your country. Um, I hope many of you playing in this competition will get to experience some of that um, one day. It's, it's truly an honor. Um, some of the other things besides besides competing and, and winning trophies, um, I played in 250 tournaments over the years. I believe that's the most for any woman. It's hard to keep track in the early days. But um, beyond competing, I, I work in the industry. So I'm a vice president uh, at Dignitas. It's one of the oldest operating esports teams. Um, we had for many years one of the top women's teams in the world. Uh, I also founded uh, a women's initiative called Radiant and operate women's esports tournaments just like this. Um, and I've realized how important that is. Um, a lot of people will ask, why do the women need their own tournament? Why can't, why can't they just play with the guys? And my response back is, if you look at a game like Valorant, um, there's a reason why there are so many women competing in this game compared to other esports titles. It's because these women's initiatives exist um, and they give women um, something to work towards, something to get started. Um, it, it gives them a more safe environment, uh, a harassment free environment um, to kick off their careers. And I hope one day we don't need women's tournaments. That's the end goal is because more women are competing and more women are going to start to shine. And we are back. Uh, we're going to round out this best of three from the Great Lakes Esports Conference from a winner's interview. A member from Mount Vernon Nazarene University now going up to a 6-2 scoreline. It's going to be Nami, who is the chamber extraordinaire for that series. Uh, Nami, thank you so much for joining us. We have audio only, but thank you so much for being here. Uh, talking about that game, I mean, you guys definitely were off to a great start. Seem to have confidence all the way through. And this is kind of like what you expected going into this. Or is this kind of like what you're looking at moving forward in the rest of the season as well. Yeah, the games went pretty well. Uh, the first map, Ascent, is uh, one of our stronger maps. Uh, we tried a slightly different comp uh, because one of our players weren't here, but uh, it seemed to work pretty well. Uh, yeah, Chamber is it's pretty broken, I'm not going to lie. So, But yeah, the whole team played really well together. Uh, it was a good good victory for sure. Well, let, let's kind of dig a little bit deeper into uh, you, you guys as a team um, and and talk about the, the season as a whole. You're doing well now, jumping up to, to six and two as uh, um, you were five and two coming into this. Who who do you feel like is uh, the most difficult opposition within this conference? Um, right now, it's looking like Ohio Northern uh, seems to be the top dogs. Definitely beatable, uh, as we saw. Mount Union actually take them down. So them and Tiffin, really good team as well. Uh, there's kind of a few powerhouses that I think could all pull up sets on any team any day. Uh, so I think it would be really uh, fun during playoffs for sure. Well, and, and so just to kind of dig deeper on that, I assume that you feel that you guys are one of those teams that can pick up some of those upsets. Or do you think that you're looking at for those playoffs? Are, are you looking to potentially be able to win it all? Or what are the oh, expectations? Yeah. Uh, we are our strongest in playoffs. I'll tell you that much. So right. teams may look down on us going in, but I'm sure we'll give them a little surprise there in playoffs. Uh, definitely think we have the... Uh, a skill to take it all 
Uh, it's a matter of can we get our cohesion fully down? Uh, been changing up a lot of stuff. So once we get that down, I think definitely a team to be to have a chance to win it all. I'm not gonna lie. It definitely seemed like every member of your team was enabled and capable of just being able to pop off for any round and make any round winnable. Uh, a lot of times that seemed to be the case. And a lot of times it seems like you guys were kind of just sending it to see if you can end it faster, perhaps get to dinner or some of that sort. So if that case, what's on the menu for the celebration dinner tonight? Uh, I don't know. I might, I might go ask some guys if they want to get some uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. That'd be, um, that'd be nice. It, it is Thursday, so get those okay. bonus wings, you know. Boneless? Mm. I was going to ask, bone or boneless? Okay. I got to be boneless. I'm sorry. I know there's some haters out there, but... Not on this stuff. It's desk. easier to eat. Oh, I go. enjoy it personally. What sauce do you get, though? Um, Honey barbecue. Let's okay. go! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like oh, that. I like my, it. Boy, right. my boy rants are some lemon pepper. I, I disagree, but... <laughs> yeah, I do as well, but I'm not going to rock against lemon pepper. It's not preference. You know? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I just want to open the floor as well as rounding up this interview of what you want to say out there. Shout outs, thanks, or uh, any kind of words for the opponents out there might be listening as well. Oh yeah, uh, shout outs to Baldwin, of course, for the fun game. Uh, they definitely did some really good things. I don't want them to be discouraged by that loss. Um, and shout out to my team. We they, they, they back me up as much as possible. So it's fun playing with them. And then shout out to Mount Vernon for uh, allowing us to be able to have this opportunity to play. And my mom. Awesome. Hi, mom. Hey, guy, <laughs> mom go. shout out in there for sure. I love the sportsmanship as well. Definitely shout out to Mount Ball and Wallace. Uh, it's not a match unless both teams show up, and Ballin definitely has some good looks for sure. They just got oh, to yeah, learn some lessons sure. and move forward, and hopefully they can improve there. Yep, yep. All right, Udami, well, thank you so much for joining us for this interview. I yeah, really thank appreciate you, that. Thank you. Good luck out there for future matches. Enjoy the wings tonight. And uh, everybody out there watching at home, uh, we are going to have more Valorant action with more best of threes tonight on this stream. It's just going to be a break, and we're going to come back. The next match is scheduled to be at 7 o'clock Eastern time, which is, uh, you can see the clock in the bottom there. It's going to be roughly 30 minutes from now. It's just a short break, but when we come back, it's going to be the NGC NJCAAE uh, week number four. It's going to be uh, Suffolk Community College versus Westchester Community College. It's going to be a fantastic best of three to watch, and we'll see you there. twitter.com slash septolens don't put that in i'll get in trouble so that's that's worth it that's did i get too close to the camera on that one a little bit too close should i should i oh should i back up a little bit okay sorry about that my bad i've been awake for probably close to 32 hours like i have to like hold my keyboard like the normal way because if i do it i feel like i have arthritis and i hold my keyboard like that it blows my mind i can never do that like this kid this guy right here he's got his keyboard like off at an angle his isn't that extreme there's a kid all the way down to the far end who has his keyboard all the way at like a horizontal that's really cool they're gonna be at that table right over there public information oh i don't know but <laughs> this isn't live so it doesn't matter it's not live but like you and i know yeah we know i'm not gonna tweet it awesome what game do you play Smash Bros. Who do you play? Is it embarrassing? Is it like Villager? Yeah. <laughs> is it Villager? Am I spot on? Oh my god. Is it the Ice Climbers? No. Is it Game & Watch? No. Is it Pichu? No. Is it Wario? No. I can keep going. I think I can name every character in the game. I believe in you. Is it, did I say the Ice Climbers already? Yeah, you said them. Is no, it them? them? Is it them a second time? No. Okay. All right. Um, oh, is it one of the Lynx? Yes, it is. Is it Toon Link? It is. Oh, that is pretty embarrassing. Is that is rough. Right. Who do you play? I'll give you $20 if you guess correctly right now. First try? First try. Give me a single hint. It's an obscure character. An obscure character. Not played very often. Is it Wii Fit Trainer? <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> I'm the interviewer for a reason, baby. I do what I do. I don't need the money. I appreciate it, though. I appreciate it. Hi. So Bowser Jr., We Fit, and I... <laughs> I forgot already. <laughs> Are you all lying to me? Am I being gaslit? No, 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 Bowser no, no, Jr., We Fit, now. and you told me already. Oh, uh, Toon Link. Yep. Where's my main support at? Bye. Who are we playing this weekend? Uh, a lot of Brig. A lot of Brig, really? Brig Lucio, probably. Brig Lucio, really? I shouldn't say that too loud. I don't want to give all your strategies. It's over under. What do you mean over under? Like, like, do we think we're going to podium? Do we think we're going to come in last place? Not last place. Not last place. Certainly not last place. What about like fifth place? That's doable. That's, that's doable? That's, that's winnable? Third place? Third, third mm, that's where that's where things that's get like, dicey. That's very doable. Okay. First place. That's very doable. First place, very doable. Love it. That's the mindset. That's what he loves to hear. Yeah. Oh my God. Hold on. Cut the cameras. Well, who are you? Hello. Oh, oh my God. I saw you earlier. I saw the back of your shirt. And I was like, I was like, I know that name. I know him. It's a quick play game. They they Q snipe each other at land. 
I thought it was a scrim. It's just unlucky. Are you actually a villager player? Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about villager being notably worse in Smash Ultimate than they were in Smash 4? Uh, I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know? You never played Smash 4? No. Oh, that's all right. Nobody, nobody's going to hold that against you. Yeah, who do you play? I play Robin. Okay, wow. Did you know Robin has the lowest pick rate in the game? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Come on, the LEDs, it looks just like Samus. Huh? Do you disagree? I guess I can see. The it. Samus vibe. Show the controller to the camera. We're interviewing. This is recording, by the way. Surprise. No, my Who do you play? I play Peach. Oh, oh, wow, I like that. Who do you play? I play the Shotos, mostly Kazi. No, you lose against Kirby. Yeah, lose against Kirby. That's just like a statistics thing. Yeah. It's maybe. maybe. <laughs> this is a death match. I think they're all in the same one. They're all on Icebox. Are they, oh, they, are they all in the same death match? Maybe. Who knows? I feel like none of them can hear me. I want to like approach somebody, but no one, no one can hear. They all have both their headphones on. What's up? How do we think we're doing? I think we're doing pretty good. Yeah. What's, what's your kitty? Uh, we're looking at 10 and 6 right now. Oh, hey, that's third, dude. That's better than I expected. Who's, who's bottom frag right now? I want to go talk to them. Ian, Ian, hey, how do you think we're doing so far? Uh, you know, it could be better. Could be better? You're one of those rough days? Well, you know. Let's go find more people to harass. Yeah. Where's, Bo where's Boise State? Best Who's your favorite to play? Oh, right now, it's got to be their Chamber of Breach. What country is Cypher from? Oh, dude. Um, it's Moroccan, right? It is Morocco! Oh, my God, I don't think anyone is going to get that. Oh, you're good. You're good. <laughs> All right, see you later. Let's go harass Boise State more. Who is this? What school is this? Boise? This is Boise. Oh man, that's okay. Boise still got really good odds. A large bagel, one of their tank players, Nerdy Bird, they're off tank, both of them not here. A little bit scary, for being honest. Getting warmed up, getting ready to cast some players. No, cannot cast, interview. Change of mindset, change of mindset. Words. Oh, you get no, but last words until we until we come back. Oh, okay. Because we're leaving. Enjoy. Oh, that was good, that was good. Anything from you? How are you doing, Polly? Awesome, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> Welcome to ECAC Top Plays of the Week. This is Rod, your favorite host, back at it again with more stellar plays from Collegiate Esports. Special thanks to our partners at Esports U for the additional coverage. Now let's hop straight into it. Starting off this week at number eight, we have Torchy showing aerial dominance. They show that you're gonna have to work a little bit harder if you wanna get back on their stage. Now you gotta mix up your timings getting back onto the stage. Toyuchi is looking for something, able to still find the jab, Ooh. and the foil is going to be. Next up, we have Cabinus, showing us what impact on a support player really looks like. With the timing of a Lucio God, they come in to claim the play of the game. Player just going to deny anyone an attempt to hit the objective, and I mean, at this point in time, you gotta expect those rollouts to be as quick as they are. Moving on to Rocket League, we have Swax, showing why they own the airspace with a nice self-follow-up, netting WSC the goal. As we are going to try to find out that little nugget of information, Swax is going to drop this one down and give us a tie game here in game number two. Gets that nice little touch over the defender, Peter. As an Astromane myself, nothing brings me more joy than watching Zeno hold it down on the C site with a nice 4K to secure the second round of the half. Fine, there's a 50 50 ah, angle oh there, checking a beautiful down. spray down Let's onto three. Players remaining. come in for the rotate from the Only rest of the map eight. control, and a beautifully played round by FS. He capped off by a nice one. Now, at the number four spot, we see that luck is a skill when Post gets two back to back kickoff goals. All it took was six seconds to go from a deficit to the lead. That is comeback potential. Other ways. I don't, what? Okay, so Warda actually messed up their kickoff. They 100% did not mean to land like that and then just happened to get a wave dash into it. Hey, listen, fortune favors the bold and sometimes it's better to have dumb luck than to not be lucky at all. So we'll take it 100%, especially if they get another no. one. Kabuki to tally it on and they're proving it isn't just Coming back into Smash, we have Bryce showing the alleged guard of the gods. It took a couple Gordos to nail it, but this clip truly ended in perfection. Nope, not a footstool in sight, unfortunately. I'm just gonna be looking for some sort of an edge guard here now. Oh! That Gordo is right oh! in the way, and Bryce gonna be able to get the. Conrad came into this round swinging. They really showed what happens when you combine the skill of a great player and the blessing of the RGX Vandal. Over aggression, it worked out so well. I mean, 
just a double kill already in their favor. Which so far as the sheriff, I mean, has been truly impressive. And unfortunately, the team has not been there to follow up. Conrad, now looking for the A's, already in and three, looking for two more. There's the fourth, and it's up to the tail to save the day. Conrad goes in deep. Oh, they're able to find it. Conrad. Finally, at the number one spot this week, Frosty lays down the law with the stunning barrage. What a way to tell the enemy to get off my point. Frosty to move in, unabated, unhindered. Here comes the rocket Whoa. barrage, and it's lighting up the scene Woo! with four. Well, that wraps it up for me. This has been another fantastic week of ECAC Top Plays of the Week. As always, follow us on Twitter and catch us live on Twitch at ECAC underscore esports. You can find us live on Mondays and Tuesdays at 8 p.m. EST or Wednesdays at 7. Thanks again to our partners at Esports U for providing all the additional coverage for us to show you. This has been Rod, the best host of this season. I'm just saying, and I'm signing off. Again, that, that's why we're here, right? This is why every, a lot of people are trying to figure out, you know, how do we replicate what you guys are doing? How do we, you know, how do they do what you guys are doing to a degree? Or why are you guys doing what you're doing to a degree? But you know, to kind of, I think, focus in then a little bit more, I, I want to talk about gameplay a little bit before we jump into to business and, and all of the other stuff, you know, Jensen, this one, this one's for you, right? I want to talk a little bit about this because to, to someone like me, who's, you know, who's traditionally a League of Legends fan and all that, I know that you've been a coach that's been, you know, all over the world. You've worked with a lot of different professional teams and different regions. Um, my my question, I I I I really want. I think a lot of people want to know how did you end up at Maryville and, and why North like a North American collegiate college? What was the draw? Or what what brought you here? How did you get to this point? Um, when I first came to NA, I worked with the models uh, with the academy team, and I realized that there's no cultural challenges that exist in. It's very unique to any any esports, right? Where there's this very interesting intersection, uh, because in unlike traditional sports in esports, uh, players they don't start training with under a structure or, or a system or a coach uh, from a very early age, which is what which is what happens if you want to pick up any other sport, right? Like you start going to community events or whatsoever, and then you start developing your skills and your literacy of the game from the from the age of six or seven, and you're very used to working in a team environment, a coaching environment. But in esports and for League of Legends, a lot of times uh, players, they go to a, they, they go up, they climb the ranks in solo queue where everything is basically self taught And then all of a sudden they need to be placed into a team environment. And I realized that this is something that the Asian teams got right, where they had this these B teams, this, they have the B houses in Korea and Taiwan, um, you would spend almost close to a year just being a understudy or training partner for the team before you even join an academy team in the first place. And uh, in China, they have like these massive uh, beating systems with like lots of players in them. The moment you hit a certain rank on the ladder, they fly you in. Uh, you are then boot camping for a month there at the facility. And depending on how well you do, uh, they then decide whether to regain you on as a training uh, partner or as a trainee in whatever capacity given how well you perform in those scenarios. So um, the West was very lacking in all of this. And culturally, to do the same things and try to replicate the B-house environment or what they're doing in China or Taiwan would not be possible to do. Uh, but the West has a very successful model of developing sports and talent, especially in America, when that, that is in the collegiate space. So I looked at this, I saw the resources that was available. And uh, when then, uh, when Kuroki pitched his vision to me, it's like, yeah, this is this is what I think should be the future for development in the NA ecosystem for esports. Oh, right on. I think, well, maybe maybe let's follow up on that a little bit then. Because Dan, okay, so Dan, you you know, you pick up Jensen, you, you've got this going. Um, I think that's going to be my, my question then is, are, to any other schools that want to be competitive like you guys on that level, is this something that we should be expecting to see in the future, right? Is this now you know, the, the standard that, that you guys, you know, Jensen, you and Dan, do you guys feel that this, if, if every college of, across the nation is starts doing this, if they start, you know, recruiting coaches like Jensen and, and trying to build this atmosphere, is this going to be the, the next standard or is this something that's very successful that 
right, obviously it's proven to work but is it sustainable is it possible for everyone or maybe not everyone but right the, the greater sense of the industry and the ecosystem how do you guys feel about that uh it's a it's a dream of mine obviously to get to a point in the future where uh every university has an esports team that's taken seriously and uh, every day they report to practice it's an improvement driven mindset across the whole program um i think for me though like the reason isn't necessarily like to see like a march madness with millions of dollars flowing through it for me it's a little bit more simpler than that the reason why this is my vision is just because uh it's best for player development and just players in general um what we see in the in tier two ecosystems almost across the industry uh that's like below academy i would say like right before you i, I would almost con i would consider academy professional uh because you're, you're making a salary higher salary than exists in a lot of semi-pro sports actually uh but in the tier two ecosystem you kind of go from like your parents bedroom making no money on a discord server with a coach that hasn't been certified by any national body uh to play academy and, and that's horrifying to me so uh while i don't see collegiate as being or maybe maybe it does end up being this way but but it doesn't have to be the definitive path to pro i want it to at least be an option like a parallel option similar to how you can go through the canadian hockey system where you can choose to spend a couple extra years developing and maturing physically and emotionally and in, in the ncaa model before you go to the show in the nhl uh i'd like to see that 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 reality in 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 esports this isn't something where there's hundred there's 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 a century of, of history to to the competition so um it's a it's a very powerful tool especially when you're trying to convince your parents that this is a worthwhile pursuit that you can get a college degree um and it's one of those things where um at least in america with how with how expensive college is uh getting scholarships uh after your first like after like your 18 to 20 year old years is usually harder academically uh, you usually get the majority of your scholarships going into school when you're when you're an 18 year old freshman and the way that the current path to pro is set up a lot of players are foregoing that 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 span of time to try to go pro for no pay and so um for me it's it's more about uh like a health of a pipeline health of the ecosystem health of of uh kind of the player experience of of, of pursuing this um, and, and, and that's the big thing for me. And obviously, obviously it's a dream. Um, I want Mary able to serve as like a case study and a model for that. Uh, we want to show results. We want to eventually be competing to win proving grounds, um, to, uh, show that this can be a functional, uh, alternative to the, to the traditional tier two within esports, And that's what, that's what we strive for every year. I can add to that a little bit, just from a business perspective. I think, you know, we're very fortunate to have Jensen and Dan here at Maryville, but I think if you're a university looking at, you know, just adding a coach, you know, maybe not to the magnitude of Jensen, but I think you have to look at the metrics. I think if you look at what the ROI and the business case of adding relevant esports within your university, uh, what that means to your um student life and all those different things all those things that they try to check boxes within higher ed i think having a relevant esports program or a relevant system within esports um every university should be looking at it because their baseball players and their basketball players and football players are all playing gaming and a lot of these esports you know figureheads and coaches etc um you know are the relevant people in digital media and it, it helps the school with a brand perspective and I think just having any sort of relevant and adding bodies within the esports ecosystem at universities, you have two or three basketball coaches, you have two or three soccer coaches, you know, both on male and female. I think having relevancy within esports, it has probably a 15 to 25 X, you know, return versus like traditional sports. And I can say that with my background and everything like that, and just knowing how we look at it. But at the same time, if you're not looking at esports as a relevant you know, not even revenue stream, but relevant digital eyeball within your sports and student life perspective, I think you are sort of behind the times. Hello, hello, hello. Happy New Year's, everyone, and welcome back to the ECAC Esports channel. As always, my name is Kyler K. Ted Tandel, and I once again have the privilege of introducing you all to some of the best collegiate esports plays. Now, I know when we left off last year, I teased a little bit about some big news on the horizon, but that news is finally ready to break. 
Now, this year, in partnership with CSMG and their newly launched Esports U Network, we will now be able to bring you guys double the amount of ECAC matches. So, with double the matches comes double the highlights. And with that said, I mean, obviously, right, do the math here. It means that we get to take this video, this series of videos, to a weekly top eight instead of just the top four like we did in the past. But anyways, that's enough out of me. I'm sure you guys are ready for some hype plays and crazy moments. So without further ado, here you go. In our season opening clip, we have Ghost and Ox with a devastating 1-2 combo that just breaks SLU at the knees. Or is it boosters? Nice bounce, but a nice goal! Right past the defender, Ox makes it look easy. I, I'm so surprised because I couldn't... At number seven, Rafam pounds his chest and decrees that he is the strongest in the jungle with this sick 3k to flip the point. The arms and keeps everyone alive through that. Amplification matrix came through, but we didn't get the same benefit we saw last time with the amplified fire strike. Instead, is angry monkey time from a fan with a 3k. Call that the primal blade. As our first smash play of the year, it's the clean nine stock from Hydra to lock down New Jersey City's 2-0 win against Hassan. As they go for that kill confirm again, it's not going to connect this time, but there it is, just waiting on the platform for the spike and JCU cleaning up in their signature style. Hydra leading the charge all the way home. Next up, it's every shorty player's dream and what's going to be a nightmare for University of Albany up close and personal this is the one player who's got a chance with his read all about timing here so step forward now into the angle certainly good for one Yikes. there's the one no one's reswung he's reloaded this never happens to a shorty player Nevin is up now as well in our next clip who needs teammates when you've got a wall grim surely doesn't snaps and passes they tried their best and that is an open goal but unfortunately out the top it's gonna be the header in tit for tat grim takes it in on their own Ooh, spicy little double tap right there you saw him looking for it but that's not an easy read rounding out our top three it wouldn't be a highlight video without our first ace of the season d Duraco, this one's for you enjoy Take out GSV. Yeah, a great shot. Oh, there. Oh, Blocko. I know exactly the first coming the for the for Ace. Blocko looking for one of their own. It's going to be a 4K already coming through. Now a 2v1. The hard rotate through. And the kill. Rocco picking up the Ace early and curing a true single player dominant. In our runner up spot, AZ Tropical has a bunch of things to do in this clip. The SD into. Well, well, well he's got a lot. Just, just, just take a look. But All right, two missed? stocks to six for the fan, six for the Fanshawe team. Starting off strong, forty-five percent, fifty-four uncontested. Uh, let's see what Andy has to offer because right now he's getting duffed by the Street Fighter. Ooh, very good option coverage with those up tilts, but you're gonna get jabbed once, and there's the uppercut right there, sent straight off the top. Az Tropical now battling it out on Yoshi's story, looking okay. kind of tough. And as I was saying, if a character is going to start steamrolling, it's definitely a character with uh, so much uh, crazy zero death potential as we've seen in Ken. Because wow, only 19% so far. And this isn't just any character, this is against Fire Mithra. Oh my Ooh! god! Getting dared right AZ! in the face. AZ Tropical only two stocks away from time this entire And in our number one spot in the you hate to see it category, what's higher than a high noon? Well, Becomics has the answer. Out Leo Leon here, however, Kid Universe making important and inexorable progress. Leo, Leo Rafam taking a lot of damage, and it's Becomix finding three on the way down. Down goes Duck, and this is looking like an absolute rout for Kid University. Must Kingdom University just found lacking in points. Man, after seeing all of that, doesn't that just make you want to say, Wow. I mean, for me, I'm definitely speechless and so excited to continue bringing you guys these plays and all of this collegiate esports content. Now, if you want to check out more of the buzz on social media, definitely give us a follow on Twitter at ECAC underscore esports 
or if you just want to check out the action live, be sure to tune in on our Twitch channel at ECACR underscore esports. With that said, I do want to give out a shout out to our partners at Esports U for not only helping to us expand our content, but really also to help bring up all of you guys more of this great collegiate esports action. Now, thank you all so much for watching and feel free to let me know, you know, what types of matchups or moments you'd like to see next. As always, I've been KTAD and I'll see you all later. Have a good one. Hey guys, KTAD here and welcome back to the ECAC Top Plays of the Week video. We're in week number 7 and trust me when I tell you things have only been heating up. These teams are fighting for a chance to make it into the playoffs and because of that, I mean there's so much crazy action to get into and you know, don't take my word for it. Let's check out the plays. Starting us off, it's a play that'll have you asking yourself, how did he do that? As Melee juggles and ping pongs blighted right off the stage. Because the, the projectiles are so ever present, that reflector right there that you just saw is going to be in the back of Melee's mind throughout this set. But right now, Melee's doing a good job of getting around it, has the percent lead, and make it 64 right now on blighted stock. It's still being worked Ooh! away at the combo setup. At number 7, Red Ninja is just cleaning up the West as he gets this nice 3k to cap off the series. I had a lot of fun with it too. How does that win? I don't know. How does that, in, in any world, how does I, that possibly win? Here's, here's, here's what I can say, right? You have Big J5 running around in the back line on Roadhog just trying to cause havoc, right? You have a Symmetra teleporting all over the place. You have up next, there might just be a fourth member on the squad of RPI as the corner comes in clutch to take them to game number five. About as good as you're going to see for a team play off the corner wall and RPI takes a three goal lead. And with that, we have the fastest goal in this matchup so far. We started off with the quickest goal, the least amount of time. Okay, spoiler free intro this time. Someone gets a 4K clutch in this round. You just have to guess who. Might be able to no will find the elimination. Time can back up, not for long. Wukian with that operator takes out somebody. A real powerhouse player has to kiss this round goodbye. UK, they are three rounds away, winning their third round and almost tying us back up. What a shot from Wukian there. It is going to be the blade for taking offline and by that player point blade. Down without that blade storm. They may be able to win this one. Brown Bolo with the three. Can he find the four? Jag, no, it's the right click that puts him in. Wukian with a 4K of his own. Win Kentucky's. In our top half, it's Sonics in his attempt to nine stock NJCU that gives us this next play and this beautiful edge guard. Things will go swimmingly for themselves as of right now. See Hydra playing at a massive disadvantage already at 109, but 92 on Sonic. So this was where we saw them actually take that stock against them. It was just a small little up no B. Way. One hit is all it takes. No, no rabbit. way. Rab oh my. Sonics is too Rab clean with it. For number three, Shrusi's got some things to say as he just pops off for King. So much to oh bear. My. And. Well, at too much to bear. Shrusy, why take on one defenders when you can take on two? Maybe even all of them. Why get a hat trick when you can get five goals instead? 30 seconds to go. Literally every goal of this game has been from Shrusy. And you would go to think, you know, oh, obviously he's got a million shots. That's why he's just been putting on the pressure. Not really. He's five for seven. He's really accurate with what he's doing here. Not wasting his time oh, no. because shots like this, they don't come every day. But for Shrusy, it's another walk in the park. Give him the time in the air and he will do things like this. Somebody call it. Somebody call it. This is unfair. This 
And in second place this week, it's the perfectly timed EMP into self-destruct combo that completely wipes out Wichita State in the opening map against Johnson and Wayne. Self-destruct is there! Gentalian and Rogue combining for a massive fight win right there, 95%. And in our number one spot, it's a tour de force that some would say is almost excessive from Nagwin as he shuts the door onto Delaware. Oh, on the right side of the kill feed. Nagwen playing C long. Great job at it. Oh my goodness, even better. Trying to turn two into three. Not able to line it up yet, but there it is. That tour de force is a tour de force to be reckoned with. Nagwen taking out four to win the seventh round. All right, and that is it. Now, I mean, like, what did I tell you guys? Things are only getting crazier and crazier, and with this wrapping up, that means there's only one more of these videos left to make. That means there's only four more weeks of playoffs left on the table that's gonna be starting up in just a little bit. And I mean, what a crazy season it's been and what a crazy season it's shaping up to be. Special thank you again to our partners at Esports U for providing us that extra broadcast coverage. But if you guys want to stay up to date, I mean, you already know where to go. But hey, if you haven't, if you don't know yet, you want to give us a follow on Twitter at ECAC underscore Esports. And you want to make sure you tune into the action live at twitch.tv slash ECAC underscore Esports. We are live on Mondays and Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern, Wednesdays at 7. Trust me, you guys want to be there. We've only got so much action left in the season. And then, hey, before you know it, we'll be back again right around the corner for fall semester. But once again, I've been KTAD. Thank you guys for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, KTAD here, and as spring break is upon us, we too need a break every once in a while. But with that said, you know we've still got some great collegiate esports action for you, and playoffs is around the corner, so you know that these teams are doing everything they can to make the cut. Let's get into it. Starting us off, it's a POTG for POST as Hiveder spins to win and keeps his team alive in their series against the Colonels. Those they needed that victory, they needed to know that the reverse tip is going to be played. Hosses are with the best. At number seven, Floppy's got a show to put on for us as he juggles Sen Sen around the stage. Off stage, how will they make it back on? Just immediately opting to go for the ledge, eating an uphill and Telly not going to uh, be dying quite yet. He is quite a hefty boy, but what a follow-up. Yeah, ping pong with It's overtime out the gate for our number six clip and Ebest Drew hangs it us a little to the left to clutch it up for Farmingdale. Gets it over one, has indemnity to work through now to flip over him. Chance, oh, it's top of the box Ooh. for St. Drew. That's a goal game one winner for Farming Bill. Yeah, that's Ebest Drew right here. Fantastic shot reception, or that pass reception, I should say. After Otto puts this across the top right here. Up next is Curious George with the Cura Ace to clutch up the round for Keen. And yes, the editors came up with the name of this clip, not me. Behind it, and now you're going to be talking about a bolstered close point here. It would probably be in the best interest of Keen to go ahead and just save the weapon. I'm not exactly sure how their guns are looking, how their economy is looking, excuse me. But this just seems so unfavorable for them. They're sort of making it work, mind you. Curious George, he's going ahead and giving it the old college try. He's going to make it an ace, but does he have the time behind the snake fight? He can go ahead and stick on it. And by God, again, Keen just cannot keep getting away with it. They're disjointed. They're scrappy as all hell. It's ye old faithful in our number four spot as Putnut and Kofi toss out a huge Grav Dragons to flip the point and secure a map number one for Nickel State. They're gonna have to fade out this uh, immortality first. We're gonna see that committed on the pack of the Grav, but the Dragon Strike is massive. A four shot for Kofi. 
And with that, the Colonels will take control of the point once again. Now this might only be our number 3 clip of this week, but you guys have to check out this play from Nat Leopard as he pulls off these ridiculous moves to juggle the ball right past the defenders of Central Missouri and into the net. It's possible setting up a counter-attack potential, but Fan Shui here and Nat Leopard. What old Nat Leopard! They have families! Stop it! They beat all <laughs> three defenders! I finally figured out why it's not Leopard. It's not Leopard because it's messy. Messy with the dime, the dish, the left to the right. At number two, this is probably one of the smartest plays we've seen in a while. Now, UNM's Wicked Pro, after finding the spike on A, decides to ult and immediately rotate out after getting the info that the rest of the attackers are mid. What happens next? We'll just watch. A bit frustrated about that one. Oh, and this is a great play going around from the smoke from the belt. They have the perfect opportunity. And once that falls, everyone will be revealed. They'll be hit with the decay. This could be huge. Yes. Mishiro. Got on, on the zip line. Oh. Wicked gets two. Another 4K for Wicked, who is playing out of their mind. The 500 IQ play. You knew that it was a weird angle to have that Viper spit. You knew that they were going to check everywhere inside. And... All right, number one, let me break this down for you. Series three, last man standing. The anchor in Atata as he somehow manages to bring Illinois Wesleyan back from being in a 1v3 for this series. A big lead here for Wayne State, but we'll see. You know, Atata's not out of the count just yet, and they might be looking, I mean, they're definitely looking to take the, away with the three stock, and they can't play too risky. Okay, we see the NBA flash there. They're gonna make it back to ledge. We also saw a pretty Hail Mary forward smash there at low percent at that. The risk reward on that is a little skewed. Ooh, look at this jab reset into the forward smash. What a beautiful combo. They just feel confident in their team, and there's nothing more that I love with that. But the mess is already trying to make a statement saying that you, sh you should have brought the oh person who could goodness. take the stocks first. That is amazing right there. We saw the PK fire, multi hits goes for the doubter. There's an off stage air dodge. Suddenly, this is looking very bad for Young Link and potentially Wayne State as a whole. Side, don't let them grab you. You still got to be careful. Mess is a threat no matter where they are on the stage. Nice rising fair to you know, kind of even that out. Good blade beam to catch the PK fire. Maybe the PK fire is in reaction. There's a climb hazard. This is Ness's time. That forward tilt takes it. And IWU, Illinois Wesleyan Titans takes it over Wayne State College. 2-1. Across the set, the final game going two stocks to Atata over Chef Louis zero stocks. Oh my goodness, what a heart wrencher. Well, there you have it. What a crazy week it was. And honestly, I know it's only going to get even crazier as we move on. Now, the competition is fierce, not only just in Division A, but even some of these open division matches are going the distance and coming down to the wire. Now, as always, if you want to stay up to date on everything, give us a follow on Twitter at ECAC underscore esports. Or if you guys want to check out the matches live, we broadcast Mondays and Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern, Wednesdays at 7. Once again, a special shout out to our partners at Esports U for providing additional coverage of our matches on their network. But I mean, that's it. That's all I've got for you guys this week. We're almost we're only two more weeks out after this and I mean, I'm really curious to see how the playoffs shakes out this year. But don't go anywhere, guys. Come back right here every week, every time. Same day, same time. You guys know how it runs. And don't go anywhere. I'll see you guys next time.
Hey guys, KTAD here, and welcome back to another ECAC Top Plays of the Week video. Now, normally I know we like to switch the hosts out every week, and you know, I know there's a roster that we want to bring up to you guys, and don't worry, we've got that coming with some returning faces from last season, as well as hopefully some new ones this time out, but again, you guys got me for one more week, it'll be okay, I'll see you guys at the end anyways. Now, in any case, as per the usual, we've got a bunch of incredible collegiate esports action coming at you with some of the coverage brought to you in partnership by Esports U. So, huge shout out to them. But, you know, I know you guys don't want to hear me talk about it anymore. It's okay. Let's just jump straight into the action. Here you go. Starting us off this week, we've got Gorilla as he power slams the ball into the net. Don't have a goal to show for it. It means almost nothing, especially when Grand Valley has a response like that. Gorilla solo playing. At number 7, it's a play of the game from Shiz that has him jumping fearlessly into the enemy team to secure the second map for Savannah so College. It's so rare to see these, especially in a map like this one, where there's a lot of potential opportunities, but that means willing to make a complete change if necessary, and we didn't really see that for the start of the match. Shh, we've got to be a bit sneaky here. He's got the huge flank to get the 3k and secure the... As I was muted, we are now fully live and ready to go. And I appreciate your patience as we're going into this NJC AAE best of three match between Suffolk Community College versus Westchester Community College. Two community colleges, but which community will come strongest today? Well, and uh, it is a, an interesting matchup because both of these uh, teams are, are these colleges are part of the uh, State University of New York system as well. So it's uh, going to be interesting, a uh, homegrown matchup, if you will, between Suffolk and Westchester. But I, uh, I'm, I'm excited to get things started. Both of these teams are undefeated as well, which is uh, going to add to the tension, I think, as we look to get things started. Where are we headed, though, Chad? Uh, we're going to be heading to a wonderful new place. So it feels like a new map, essentially, at this Brand point. New. It's not Pearl. It is New Fracture. And also, Haven, my favorite map in the whole game, always has been and maybe always will be because the game, the map just seems so perfect. We're talking about the green room. But anyway, a was taken away. Pearl's taken away. Icebox and Breeze as well, so which brings us to Bind. So a little bit of a new look for this best of three matchup if we go the full distance for Bind, but especially to start things off on New Fracture. Yeah, I mean, definitely, you know, we were kind of talking about the consistency with which, with which we see Icebox and Ascent very much away from that, which I think is uh, is going to be interesting. Uh, and, and Fracture specifically is a pick that I feel like if you can get away with a Fracture, and like if you have a good Fracture, you are, especially in Collegiate, in a place where you should win a lot of series automatically because fracture is just not something that people tend to play and because so many people don't play it i get the feeling that a lot of smart in-game leaders just don't ban it initially because of the fact that so few teams are willing to pick it out right so i think there's a lot to think about there and uh i think we're already seeing the uh, fact that uh, this suffolk team not so familiar with fracture based on their picks I'm going to, have to do my best to fight against bias because there's a fellow Chad on the side of Suffolk Community College. So you see them lock it in already. And Astra, honestly, on Fracture is a very new look. That is not something you see very commonly. Uh, if, you see, if you see <laughs> controllers, it's very commonly Brimstone, as you see over towards Westchester. Um, Omen sometimes gets played instead. Uh, sometimes people try to throw the curveball with a Viper as well. But Astra, that is a very surprising pickup. Yeah, and, and I think that Fade's so good right now, there's no question whether or not that's a good pick. But I also think that realistically, uh, energy going towards the Rays is also, I mean, not unheard of, but definitely not the norm. Much more common to see, like we're seeing Janet go for the Neon. So, um, as as I mentioned, this is, what, this is Westchester's pick, and it's clear to me that there was a, a lot of thought put into the Agent Select on their side, whereas mm -hmm. Suffolk... Maybe this is just, you know, their brand of Fracture, which, I, you know, I'm readily willing to admit, but it definitely is a little different on the outset. Yeah, this is Westchester's map pig, and it's Suffolk going with a very unorthodox non-meta pickup. So 
usually that mentality of like, oh, this is crazy, not meta. That means that they're map pick and they had some like crazy plan cock concoct. But no, Suffolk was just ready for this, or at least like have a read uh, on new fracture. Because fracture with those recent changes, like I said earlier, it feels almost like a new map, especially over towards Dish. It got closed in as just basically one lane uh, over yeah. there instead. Um, so I, I think change. that might be a big part of why they go with Astra because you can use a stars for that more choke point location. There's not two areas to wrap around that dish anymore. Um, so maybe that could be one of the reasons why that they went with the new Astra. Yeah, I, I think for me, it comes down to number one, not necessarily having a, a great plan here, probably. And number two, I think we're seeing a situation where this is just not something they expect to be playing. But we're fast and quick on the beast tonight. Hate's going to take the first, uh, the defensive frags. And it will be Westchester moving their way into uh, the site. They have control now. They have to play defense four on four. Reaver is just three. The plant was so fast. It's hard to miss it if he blinked and. Or hard to catch it if you blink, I should say. Easy to miss. Uh, other way around. Alpha, though, being quite the Alpha alongside Sopa. Fresh Prince as well. Everybody doing the part in that post playing, getting the frags for themselves as Westchester on the map pick off to a fantastic and extremely fast paced start. Very fast indeed. The initial engagement there were fine. We saw a hate find a one for one. All right. But the control that Westchester had on the out, on the back side of that was just too overwhelming. The B-Site retake not so successful for Suffolk Community College. And I uh, I think, well, we're going to have to point our eyes that direction one more time because I think you, you see what I'm seeing, Jad. This is a, a look towards B once again. Just run it down and just overwhelm. <sighs> Lenar, though, answering right back, saying, no, you can't have your way up that dish. But that was all just the fake. It's going to be a long journey for the other two members of Suffolk. Capitalize off that first pick because the spike was already planted. It's a 4v2 on site. That time is already ticking. A little bit of damage done from Nar already. Two bullets prepared in the head hunter. Problem is that nobody on Westchester is interested in giving... This headhunter the chances to claim an additional kill. A little bit of info yeah. gathering done, and yeah, pretty much standard fare. Love this from Westchester. Don't need to overcommit. And uh, later on, take these fights together, exit as a squad. Suffolk members trying to get those exit frags and find their way out. Still successful for Westchester. Nar actually might not be able to make it. No. Oh no! Tragedy on B site post plant post round even as Nar couldn't even get the death there. So at this point, we'll have to buy just a stinger because of that survival penalty. Yeah, and, and to, to explain further about why that's such a big deal, if you're not so familiar, it's because if you don't go down and you save on the defense, you don't get any additional death or credits for it. So it's just the one thousand. Yeah, you're just stuck with that one thousand. So massive. It could have been twenty nine hundred and gets one thousand less. So nineteen hundred credits penalty there for Nar essentially, and forced into a singer. I mean, it's not the end of the world because they can still get armor. So if they have first contact, frags get straight out, they can get a rifle off the ground anyway, especially with Hake getting a double kill on the site, realizing Westchester's MO is fast and furious. So getting them down the angle is on the way in and falling off to the next rotations has worked out so far, but we still see a spike be planted immediately for Westchester, but the odds are so much more in favor for Suffolk this time around. One enemy remaining. A long Perfect way home line. for Westchester, and they're unfortunately not even going to make the first step in the right direction with a clean bit of utility coming through Nar placing that nano swarm effectively. And uh, Hate will pick up the defuse after picking up two two frags on the uh, on the fallback there. Took that initial fight up towards tower, and then even found the additional fight towards fresh prints. So. Everything lo looking good in that round. Yeah, I bonus need. round. Uh, as we discussed last map, it's here. a situation where you're typically going to find yourself at odds. But I think that at this point now, Westchester going to uh, swap things up just a wee smidge because 
it has gotten a little bit easy to read. Yeah, I understand that this is your that was your bonus as well. So coming out of the gates fast, throw the demolish, checks them up. Second round, you're anti eco, you have the advantage anyway. Cool. Third round is the bonus, so you're probably not going to win it anyway. So I understand if you just keep rinsing and repeating the same strategy. But now this round matters a lot more. This is a big five round. So slowing it down here so far, I like to see that from Westchester, not just completely sending it every round, but it's still going to be a beat take nevertheless. Oh, no, no, no. This might be just a slightly slower. <laughs> yeah, I slightly. Know. Look at this read as well from Suffolk. The uh, orbital strike comes through over towards uh, Tower. But nobody's there this time. For the first time this game, actually, Westchester, they had found players from Suffolk in tower three times over. Not this time. Realizing that an orbital strike was coming for it. A very forward position, speaking of, from Imdems. Gonna get punished for that endeavor. Now five on four with the man advantage firmly in the hands of Suffolk. Ooh, almost a good kill for Janik, who's by Narda, to be able to stick out there, but Energy was not able to punish the positioning. Jesse, Chad Tones trying to answer back, keeps it into a two versus two situation, and Sopa, but hate keeping the odds in their favor, is all down to one versus one situation. The headhunter doesn't find the head to be clicked. Sopa is the one to find the frag, let's spray down the Phantom. And this will be another round win for Westchester yet again at that B site. Yeah, and, and listen, Suffolk do a great job of taking that round where they have the advantage in the weapons, but you got to be able to win those rounds out when you are in even stead. That just doesn't doesn't come to fruition this time. Though, in fairness, where, where did Suffolk gather all this money from? They're, they're so rich. So rich. I mean, I guess they had four survive in that one round, but still. Yeah, I think a lot of it was the early rounds. Their bonus was very healthy going into it as well. Their anti-eco was very healthy for live at the end of it. And they're still on offense as well, so they're getting a spike planted every single round. That's bonus crest for everybody. Right now, though, it's the offense from the defense, essentially, as Nari is good for two. But no more flashes to work with. A swing it through is not good enough to finish the round, but it makes it a two versus one for the team. And Suffolk members trying to regroup. Chad Tones tracking the audio, using that nebula, making it a little bit scary for Sopa to go through, but Westchester's MO. They are not going to hesitate. They are going to push through. Spike will go planted again, but the gun will not be ready in time. Chad Tones positioned perfectly for that. We'll be able to win another round for Suffolk. Yeah, and I think that you got to give credit where it's due. Suffolk doing a great job of answering that, uh, that B hit with some ultra aggression towards the B main position. That was the right call to be made, and they were able to trade effectively into an advantageous position. So, beautiful work into the next round, though. Now it's time to start to wonder about the economy. Westchester, it's going to be stingers across the board. They have enough to invest a little bit, but they can't fully move forward with it. So, stingers alongside maybe one uh, Spectre, you're going to be the best they could offer. That lockdown position, yeah, that aftershock not being used either to stop it. Fresh Prince falls in the meantime as well. Three members left in Westchester. All stagnated right here. The Steers in hand, though, they have a fighting chance. Steers definitely was recently buffed and was not a bad spot before the buff either. It's only one last member of the spike. This could actually be bad if energy gets taken down. Last player standing. I have retrieved the energy. spike. Energy, they're gonna out. fall. But the damage is done. 19 health remaining. No, uh, no thought to use that neural theft, which understandable considering the investment into this round from Westchester. But a one on three now, just two remain. <sighs> That will be it. Three frags for uh, your counterpart on the uh, <laughs> on the server. And three to three. Nice, uh, nice adjustment here from Suffolk. I mean, yeah, they they started out losing that pistol, but they have recovered nicely. I should play some Astro. Proud to be a Chad these guy. last two rounds. That's for sure, Vincent. <laughs> Chad tones positioning perfectly for the post plant. Lap the round before gets a 4K here. Comes through, winning the fights. 
It's gonna be a buyout for Moe's. Nimdims couldn't quite cut it. The Cypher utility is still pretty expensive, so if you're investing in the full utility every round and also dying off a lot, then it's really tough to keep up. Well, that's a swift attempt with the showstopper. No, no frags coming off the back of that. So investment, I mean, not useless. Here, the walk straight into Jesse. Hello with the door to force. Flash to push them out in the rendezvous to answer, but into an even odder off angle. Swatting Ooh. over the top, but a brilliant shot from Fresh Prince, Whoa. and he's doubled down. Outrageous. Might fall as he's tagged up, but gets away in time. Fresh Prince, a victory here would be on his shoulders. Well, my body could be a really big opportunity for... Westchester there from that Marshall. Couldn't quite connect the second one. Fresh Prince already doing so much work for the team. And only 21 HP to oh, work God, with me. now. That'll keep them off the spike. Make it a little tough to punish this heavy load, but it's still a Marshall having to just spam through. The spam for Nars even better against a weakened Fresh Prince. So if that Nebula wasn't there, that aftershock could have been massive, but that smoke alone was just too much. It's tragic to see Fresh Prince do so much good work, only for it to fall by the wayside in the end. But nonetheless, solid play from Suffolk to stop what was a onslaught from Fresh Prince and the breach utility. We are down, though, into a position where leading initially, now down by a round. Westchester back to the save. I'm really curious about how this cosmic divide is going to go as well. I I, I don't ever see Astro on Fracture, dude. Like my mind is like, what do you do with this ultimate here? Yeah. <laughs> so I I kind of want to just wait to see. <laughs> you know, like it's so unique. They know exactly where Sopra is from that Prowler as well. A bad buy for Westchester. It's tough for them to hold any lines here and full speed ahead. The aggression, the aggression from Sopra worked. Earlier on in the rounds, pushing up from B-Day, and now pushing out as well from Dish. Narg working in the cutoff. It's going to be a 5 versus 2 retake Spike for a site. So, I'm going to keep it a buck, chat. I don't feel like I'm watching Valorant right now. This looks like I'm watching Overwatch. One enemy remaining. Like, like, Suffolk are walking around in, like, a death ball. That's what it feels like. They're, they're playing... They're playing Brawl at the moment. <laughs> and was... it's working. It's working yeah. very well. I like that their response to Westchester being super aggressive earlier on was, let's just hold the line and gun them down. Okay, it's working a little bit, but not the best. All right, let's just try playing their game. And then we'll just be aggressive against them, play it out, yeah. force through. And Westchester's like, whoa, I don't like that. <laughs> Is that, that what it feel feels good? like? That doesn't feel good at all. <laughs> we'll stop that. And it's worse to time out. Look at this. Yeah. Time for uh, the coach to get a moment to conversate and, and notice some some interesting strats. And all, honestly, I think there's a lot to communicate here for uh, for Westchester because Suffolk have just opted out of that uh, that aggression as you were alluding to. All right, well, I mean, you know, if you want to if you want to W key on the B, we'll we'll just push A and get all of the map control and then retake and win. <laughs> Nara has been popping off a lot with the shots, finding the cutoffs a lot of times too. Uh, so has done a really good job of being there for the side for the team and using the utility for Killjoy to really slow down that aggression from Westchester. Um, that's actually huge that they actually grab the Killjoy, but it, also working those flanks and those angles, working those cutoffs. We just saw him finding Janik a round before that is working so well for the team. Aim's been on point, everything like that. So lockdowns available again, two lockdowns in eight rounds. That's pretty, huge. Pretty snazzy. Yeah. Nar, by the way, the in-game leader as well of this squad. Leading from uh, the very front, by the looks of it. Ten kills leading the entire server as well. Yeah. So, with the uh, timeout now over. Initiated. It's going to be that lockdown, as you just mentioned. An instant. Wow. Very much so. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to in indulge. Boy! Wow. Check the PC. Spike Check it. That's not normally. Causing <laughs> well, to, to try to cut off the that spike location. So 
Cutting off the spike, isolating, using the nightfall, pressuring the spike for her and sandwich on the sofa. Gets a kill there, forces everybody else back. Pushing through, there's nowhere for this breach to even flash, but the bullets run out! Is Fresh Prince good for three? Chad Tones pushes through, but doesn't realize there's only one bullet left to work with. It only does a little damage to the body. It's all up to Nara, the player that we hyped up just now, having to win a 1 versus 1, 53 seconds on the clock. It's all the time in the world for Fresh Prince to get the spike plan and make the play happen on either side. The turret on one side, alarm bot towards A. It's going to be Nara almost forced to hold this middle ground. The good news is they will get the uh, information. Wait. Was for a moment going the wrong direction. All good, though. 150 health. Nar started this with an opening pick, a blinder through the smoke. Just needs an additional 33 damage. Two swarms, wrong place. Not gonna take it, no, my goodness. Rush Prince swings at the perfect time. Nar down and out. The clutch, 1v4. Second one we've seen tonight. And I'd argue a fantastic one for Westchester. Yeah, Fresh Prince was the one made one of those rounds earlier look really winnable with really clutch double kills. Unfortunately, couldn't quite close it out. There's still too many people alive, but this time around, finds the frags. Yeah. Man, what a moment for Fresh Prince on this breach. And what an interesting game as well. Hyper aggression for both teams at certain points. The IGL Killjoy topping the frag for one team and the breach topping frags for the other. You do not see either of those things often. Right there. No, I mean, you can definitely frag from an initiator position at times, but breach especially, it's so important to be that player following up. Not on this team. The clutch. As the entirety of the Rolling Thunder moves forward. We're seeing this. Uh, it's like deja vu, I think they say. Two players, though, Ooh. through that smoke. And it is a blindingly fast tank, but even quicker on the defense. Last player standing. A little rough spot for Alpha, completely stuck in default back there. So the plays that they plant a lot, so you can see. The energy was ready for it with that paint shell shot. Sopa completely stuck as well. That boom bot confirms the location. And spike coverage by Selfolk. Gotta give a lot of credit for hate this round. Just dominating out of the tower, shutting down those two members from Arcade alone. So Westchester is going to have to hate dealing with hate left. every round in tower hold. It's really been a nuisance up there, 100%. It's looking like time is going to be the problem with uh feeling infinite stars chad's going to be able to push back sopa 10 seconds left it'll be a save into the next round all of those heroics done in the last entirely inconsequential now what an exciting match we have here benson this new fracture hyper aggression from both teams it's fun and and not only is it just like it's not just hyper aggression of both teams just throwing themselves at each other you can all, you clearly see the adaptation from Soulfolk especially has been so good to respond to that aggression not just crumble under that strength and power that westchester was initially showing on this first half but they responded and adapted in a way where it, it feels firmly in the grasp of Suffolk even after westchester took a timeout yeah and and here's what i think actually worries me for Westchester, despite the fact that they picked this map and that they look very prepared, is that they haven't seemed to realize the problems with that ridiculously fast B hit. Like, they've been punished three times now, like in a row, uh, in that when they go to that position, and they only won that previous round because of Fresh Prince and the ridiculous clutch that he provided. So, Westchester, they need to do some adjusting of their own, and it seems maybe they have. We're headed towards A, a change of pace, you could say. Clustered up in A, waiting to explode. That seems to be their go-to is explosion gameplay. With a breach, brimstone, fade, neon composition. Certainly gameplay that works really well. They answer back. Stop down first. The showstopper underway. The game of the frags and distraction. Jesse takes advantage of it. Nara as well. And suddenly it's just two left alive on the side for Westchester. 
All down to one as them Dems with a frenzy in hand can find one almost magically. But it's just not going to be enough. Yeah, I mean, like, no matter how much good work you're doing with a the frenzy there, with the weaponry, the distance at play, and no place to hide, you're just not going to get Last much round more than that. In the half. Suffolk. It feels like they were they were outplayed, outpaced in the first four rounds. And now they have shown that they That's can play at the same pace and more. The Westchester is willing to offer, and it's Westchester now who's getting outpaced, despite playing on the attack, which is crazy. You don't usually think about the high pace of a defense. Yeah. Very unusual. Yeah, when a team comes out strong, first game of the series two, being very aggressive on offense, it, it does statistically work really well. Because teams are like, oh, we got to we gotta warm up, we got to adapt and acclimate to this, we got to calibrate to that speed. And they, they don't play, they didn't make changes and don't play as they normally would. And it, it makes it difficult. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. oh They're all there, but they all get mowed down. They line straight up for soap and fresh prints. I think the fact that they got one and nobody checked the ropes was at, in itself miraculous for them. And suddenly it's now a two versus four for the last round of this half, Benson. Oh my goodness, so but continuing a devastating timing to lose out on the Prowler. Continuing. I hate. I don't know how that Prowler didn't see him, but Mdims has the connection anyway, 7 to 5. And, and uh, pro tip, Chad. That's why you, you just don't have three players on on the zip line at any time. Yeah, we, we saw that at Champions. Like, how it's, that just goes a, it's a no go. No go. <laughs> at the very least. Suffolk oh, didn't right. send five people in the zip line to get up <laughs> an ace. It could we have been quite on that level. <laughs> but watch but, this. Yeah, just as so risky. Nobody even has their gun out, and it's still enough time. It's so so risky because coming off the the rope, you're all going to be in the same spot. They just kept gun down that one spot, and you didn't have good hard information of exactly where the enemy is yet. Mm -hmm. So I know they want to go for like a fast flank option. I get it, but that reward definitely comes with a massive risk, and they did not get to capitalize on it. Did not cash in. Cool, cool to see them try that though. Yes, definitely, definitely a no-go situation. It would have been sick if it worked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Would it would have been clip of the week, hundred percent. But either way, I mean Suffolk. They, they turned things around from a 3-1 to one score line, or 4-1 to one score line, actually, um, into a victory in that half. So I, I think a lot of credit deserved as they head towards this attack side. Yeah, I think overall, I mean, clearly they're ahead on the rounds, but especially with the way that they had to respond to those early rounds, I think so definitely destroyed. should to be a little better on that half. But... Well, let's rough to see how things change as this tripwire ruins the day of Gnar, but energy's right there for the answer back. And a fast plan of their own for Suffolk Community College. So they have to deal with a player there. disadvantage. As it's three versus four on the site. Plot riding on this. Need to hit it, but what, what a, shot. a shot. Adjustment from Alpha with Last perfection. Chad trying to bring this back. He's gravity well. And then the flashpoint to follow up, trying to adjust, desperately connecting, but it's just not enough. And Westchester might have taken a uh, talk, talk. quick way into this game, or back into this game, rather. Game Six to seven with the pistol victory. And we'll have to see how this goes, because all this tells me so far is that Westchester is the better pistol team. But we've still seen what Sofa can do once they get rifles in hand. And once they start adapting to the play style of the opponents. So. I like that pinch that Suffolk did to get onto the site. I thought yeah. that was really neat. But they just lost too many numbers in in attempting to get to that position. Stacked up for A. Blinding. Sitting back and forth. Gotta get that spike. There it is. Gonna be a little late for dish. <laughs> but, uh... Better late than ever, I suppose. It's all good. The team's trying to figure out where the utility is. And honestly, Cypher might be a really big issue for Suffolk going into this half. 
so much info for this camera and not shooting is I so huge for the team just holding that it's like camera di trigger discipline oh now he gets the information that four people are here because he's waiting uh -huh. and they're still here everybody move over they're not moving they're not leaving just stack up the site this, this, this is their is anti eco too oh i think this is an experience on this map talking right now here because i, I mean obviously this is a little bit new as well but not looking out for this position is just All something five. they can't do. Hey, they're here, guys. Come, hey, come rotate. Yeah, because that's the G's hand versus the pistol where he dropped down as well. The Nar so finally weird. finds the camera. And now they realize, oh, that's why there's so many people here. Yeah. But it's too little too late for this round, at least. They were knowers. <laughs> I will say, left. if you're going to learn the lesson of where this cheeky camera placement is, it would be on the eco round coming off yeah, of the pistol true. Boss. You have <laughs> five classics? Time. That is the round. Absolutely yeah, fair. All good. We're, We're probably going to lose this one anyway. Now we learned the lesson. <laughs> yeah, what if there's anybody hit? Whoa! <laughs> no, please. That is illegal. There's... Is can they like red flag? Is there a foul? Can we call I don't know, man. Foul on the play. <laughs> that was absolutely unreasonable. If I if I'm every like that's a free gun by the way, chat. It's a free yes. gun. <laughs> Well, we're all tied hurt. up though. Stuff like that hurts the economy. Yes, what is problematic for some folk is they were not able to get the spike planet, so all that bonus money gone. Uh, we're seeing also MDM is going for that same camera placement as well. So I'm, I'm curious to see if there will be more camera placements. Remember, this is Westchester's map pick. So if that's part of the big pack, big pick is like we have this chamber camera placement, but no other creative placements. That could be an option that Suffolk can respond to. Well, we clearly have seen Suffolk's good adapting. Yeah, I, I think that that's that's what makes me not so worried, even after those two rounds for Suffolk, is that they they are adaptable as we saw. Here they come, straight up in towards spawn area, but stopping oh. that in its tracks. Hate what a timing. Still down the player, double swing. Love that. It's moving forward. It's Jesse finding at least one hate on the trade, and it's been equalized. Oh, the Rolling standing. Thunder Spike has swung down, out feet. and taken advantage of a one on two energy. They need it bad. Yeah, this could be very tragic. It's looking really rough right now because the weapon upgrades have already gone through for Westchester, at least for Sopa. So now, yeah, Phantom's in here for both of them. Energy. Needs to click a couple of heads here. Nightfall is available, but left. Aftershock was already suspended this round. I don't think Nightfall will be used unless the timer runs low enough that energy is going to be forced hand and kind of checkmate a situation. We'll see on timing. Oh, they do, but it's just so difficult. I mean, it would have required a, a very impressive 180 shot there from, from energy. Yeah. The crouch off that. angle, that's so rough to deal with. Yeah, exactly. If, if it was more of a traditional angle, you know, you have the muscle memory, but no. No muscle memory to pull back on. And uh, do you see what I see? I, lo I like the, these aggressive purchases on the, uh, like, you lose out on that, on that gun round. You go for the very aggressive stinger play with enough money to buy into the next, but maybe lacking a little bit. I'm a big fan of Singer Supremacy. Very, very, very big advocate of it. There have been many rounds mm. that people have been very annoyed by me running down with the Singer. <laughs> a man of Be culture. That's before the buff recently, too. I was like, what? This is getting buffed? Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's clear that those Singer type, these Singer plays are a direct oh, result you. of that buff. At least for me, I think. So we are rotation back. Good Sopa already finding another frag. Who's quietly been team. having a stellar performance. We're talking about fresh grants and Nar earlier, but Sopa, we saw on the scoreboard as this round started, as top of the boards now, having a wonderful showing. You want to play? Great part Let's of why play. this team's in the lead now. And there's all these stingers, but the tour de force being the big one. There's no more smokes alive either. So it's gonna be hard to push that fourth tour de force back. Fast lane at least will be able to do enough of a job for now. So much utility still available. It's overwhelming. 
It really is. It's our position. Remaining. Just not allowed to be here. And I didn't even hear the defuse. I'll keep it a buck. I don't think I don't think Suffolk heard it either. At all. Only positive is I mean energy's gonna walk away with the a vandal, so that's good. Twenty and nine uh, Sofa. Really? Dang. Yeah. What a show. That showing. is impressive. Same same timing on this timeout here, though far less success than in that previous half. Yeah. Uh, it definitely seems like Westchester's desire to make this the map pick comes more so on the defensive side. That Cypher locking it down a site alone has been so rough that so uh, Suffolk has just gone towards B site entirely ever since. But then it's been a stack of Westchester since then. And now with Suffolk not finding any success B either, it's a little bit of a read of maybe they might mix it up. So we're going to do it the same. Cypher over towards B site set up instead now. And stacking towards A is to be Westchester's call. I wonder what the conversation point is for Suffolk because it feels like Westchester have just had the better of the utility overall. And and on, on the, around like the previous where you're working with limited weaponry and limited utility, that's understandable. But as mentioned previously, the sheer value from that single camera that MDEMS was able to find was simply outrageous. Simply, truly outrageous. Smoke down. Old line for any league fans out there. <laughs> the gems are truly outrageous. Going towards Arcade will be some folks' decision here. And you said before they had a good pinch over to B side, and they're going to try to work something somewhat similar. Clearing the traps with a Prowler, I like that change, dude. Oh, very nice with Sopa. Brilliant hold. The Fade is standing tall and very consistent. MDEMS taking one away as well and hate certainly going to be hating this situation. I would. Yeah. It's like, guys. Oh. What? Goodbye. Janet will... Get a free pass back to Swan. Winnable? Okay. Not so much. <laughs> Fresh Prince saying, listen, that's my job. You can calm down. I'm the only one to one before. Man, I, I like the idea of some folk trying to challenge from Arcade, cut off sight, and then just push into the spawn of Westchester to cut off anybody who might be rotating in the moment, but they just ran to the brick wall of Sopa. Alpha taking the... <laughs> First point as well, getting a frag before he goes down. And Sopo just drooling down the remaining members. The Sopoke on the way in. They tried being aggressive and swing through, but a laser beam of bullets from the Phantom is just too strong to deal with. Well, All these ultimates online right now, Vincent. So many opportunities, so many possibilities. You know, and previously what they did was they had somebody playing the other side of that. Uh, and, and so it was truly a pinch. Instead, this was more of a one-sided uh, attempt last round. So... I think that too has a factor. But as mentioned, ultimates do indeed abound. Eight of them between the entirety of the server. Fresh Prince doesn't need it though to find the opening. And that's Gnar, the heaviest hitter for the Suffolk squad to go down. It's a heavy cost, sure, but they do have tower off the back. That showstopper ready to go. But who? Who do you shoot at? Yeah. This is just for space at this point. They'll shoot the last second. Just dodge away as Westchester and all of these new ultimates available. The Cosmic Divide's up, but will that really stop the Nightfall pushing through? Smokes. The fast lane as well could have vision. Boy, a grenade. That was a huge grenade to stall him out. Look at the damage as well. But. Orbital Strike goes in towards tower, forcing players wide. Three players remain for Suffolk as they move forward. The Aftershock as well, and Chad comes alive with a double energy the same as Suffolk finally are able to stop the bleeding. The crossfire too perfect as that actual pinch works out. That paint shell from energy was everything in that last moment. Because that's stalling all three members towards Canteen. Also doing a lot of damage to make it easy for the kills later on as well. 
And because of that, the, the timing was just jointed. They couldn't explode out with the Nightfall like they wanted to. And also, the Cosmic Divide making it to where, okay, they won't hear where we move either. So we can't hear them from the Nightfall, but they can't hear us on the other side of the Cosmic Divide. So they just completely spaced out, spread out, and energy getting that angle down the line. Chad Tones coming from Arcade. All the angles worked out so beautifully for Suffolk at the very end there. But that momentum getting shut down as soon as Westchester possibly can do it. Instantly in the round, getting frag. They're not done. MDMs once more. A little, a little aggressive if you ask me, but we'll just hold back, calm it down, and wait for more information. But I think that, that almost puts Westchester in an even worse spot because, you know, now you know MDMs at any point can just decide, oh, yeah, it's aggression time. I'm going to be pushing. Still posturing for B side is Suffolk. They're trying to see if Westchester goes aggressive and try to catch them out on bad timing and bad positioning, bad angle to take. The rotation on the zip line, they're covering for each other this time around as well. Hate does not care. Full audio. Left. Let's just go. <laughs> we're, we're running it. And it, that they are. The bush, the fresh prints. They aren't the same things out, but Spike in the top position, the Rolling Thunder to stop it, and oh no, oh. he's going to get tagged up. There's not a lot of time. 15 seconds and counting. 10 seconds left. I think they've lost. They've lost on time, and they have. I think saving is not a bad call here. Westchester's at 11, so it's not going to be match points. And you force them to burn the Rolling Thunder. So that all happening, plus you get to save your weapons going into the next round. You can even buy it for Gnar. One second, I, I think that was a good call. To play some stars. Well, I, I agree, but I, I think, to be fair, that's if you, if you look at it from the perspective of we weren't winning that round anyway. I think yeah. Suffolk wanted to win that round, oh, and yeah, they just got course. timed out. You know, great decision, you're right. You know, Nara making the call, hey, let's not just walk in and die for free. So many teams do that, and, and a great, great point there. The lockdown's available, but you have to kind of read where the breach is. So you don't want to just be aftershocked right away. That's why we don't really see Killjoys often these days on Fracture. So we talked about the Astro you pick run. coming in, being very odd and strange. Killjoy equally so finds the spot where Breach is anyway. Try to put in a very unorthodox position and Breach is there anyway. That's so unlucky. But what is good for Suffolk oh is that they were able to get that first frag by energy. Taking out those smokes as well. So the retake's going to be significantly weaker at this point in time. So this post plant should be fairly strong. See, he's just barely missing hate. Not that it really would have been easy to follow up upon anyway. Westchester, a win here would be a massive advantage. Down player already. Have the overdrive available. That not going to be used. Not denial. Once again, though, prowlers go out for both sides, and MDIMS has found the entry. It's Chad to play a crossfire on the site. Despite other player going down, it is up to Sopa. And the one on two with the blast back. Trying to move forward, but oh man. In the low HP scenario, the, the bot actually does damage. Woohoo! <laughs> that would have been a bummer if energy died to that. When well, they could have ran away earlier on. But not even close, baby. We knew exactly the timing, positioning. Calculated. Calculated, surely. <laughs> well, I, listen, Suffolk, they, they, they won the round. That's, that's the key. They have enough to buy in, albeit, you know, a little light there on uh, on Jesse, but that's no problem. The real problem is a double up? Is that what I saw? That, but what isn't seen is a Ooh. kill from one of the ops. Janik, the turret was shot out by the rifle as well, just to hide the fact that the operator was there, but the swing was so wide and aggressive, they weren't ready for it, but Sopa is... Alpha One as well remaining. swinging through to support their ally. And that's the spike dropped. The plans of Suffolk diminished and ruined foiled immediately. 
devastated. One could say 12 to 9, the score line for Westchester. And it's their defense that Nine has points. been indomitable this whole time. Just two rounds for Suffolk Community College thus far in this half. And they've rebought it after the tragedy that Janik befell. They want it back. Wow. I, I feel like double up. Like, Not clearly, it. <laughs> it would technically work because they won the round there, but yeah, I still don't agree with it. Uh, I think. I, I mean, it uh, could be effective, I guess, but it's. But you have an operator just... in phase hands? And that, even yeah. Neon is not the best op wielder. They're not going to the, sh the chamber or the jet. Might be some confidence going on. I'm not sure. But what I do know is wow. that's a nightfall. They just get it. That one haunts that recharges, allows them to get the orb for an ult. And Good trade. So far, it kind of seems like they're out of ideas. They're just kind of defaulting over towards green side and just saying, can we get a pick? See if we can wiggle one person over here towards dish and uh, nope. Fell a drop. And now I guess we'll go slowly over towards B side, but they're gonna run into a cipher and a fade that can drop a nightfall as well as slow everything down. A lot of times the rotation can happen. This would be a miracle to come in with this you one. Want to fight it. Online. It's really not gonna like cut off anyone of note from the site. Energy though. That's a nice opening. MDEM's trying to play behind the cage. Will it get punished after just one? This is the plant for Chad Tones down on the site. Three on three now. Showstopper is another tool at the disposal of Suffolk. I think seeing energy fall back towards B main is a really good call. It's worked out well in the past. Doing it yet again. Showstopper could retake and just challenge that default position if he needs for later. But Alpha wins the fight anyway. It's all done. Just an Odin wielding chamber to try to keep them alive in this map. And they're not going to be able to do it because the stun comes through. Fresh Prince able to close it out and maintain the Fracture Kingdom of Westchester. And the victory on their own map pick as well. And I got to say, the fact that it was so weird on that attack side from Westchester. It, it shook my confidence in them, in, in all honesty. But then they were able to come back and simply show that they had all of the preparation done for this map. It made a lot more sense on the defense. And I think props to them. They they showed off the reason why Fracture is their map. Yeah, they may have a fresh prince on the team, but Sopo was the king of that server for sure, uh, especially on that defensive side. It didn't seem like a round went by that they didn't get a double kill. Uh, the last round, funny enough, was the one round that they didn't really have massive success on. It's because they got swarmed yeah. around a corner when they have an operator in hand, uh, which that alone I feel like was maybe a little bit of a hubris by it. But nevertheless, the round before that, they got a double kill with the operator. So like, it's, it's tough to really say it wasn't the right call, but I will say it wasn't the right call. Uh, but they still win the right, nevertheless, because they just simply were a great team that was in my pick. They seemed a lot more comfortable on it, especially on the defensive side. And they just shut down Soulfolk in a way that Soulfolk didn't seem to have any answers at all anymore. The playbook just kind of ran empty. Um, and like you said at the top of this cast, of if you, in collegiate scene especially, if you have good strats on Fracture or Pearl, one of the two newer maps, then it really seems like you get a free win because a lot of teams don't seem to practice a whole lot. And it does seem like Soulfolk needs to do a little bit more of that. Yeah, I think this is a really winnable, winnable game for Suffolk, which which does make me excited for the rest of the series because I, I think that Suffolk on Haven could be a really interesting team. That will be next, though. We're headed to a break for now. It'll be just a few moments before we return. Don't go too far. They know Jet is heaven. Smokes are going to come down. Bomb is down in that corner of heaven. And now Nova's in a very tricky situation. She's going to halt out. Doesn't have a, gr a great amount of visibility as she plays back now. Oh, Matthew with a 3K. That game, that round itself was on the brink of defeat for LC. Don't get turned around here as his Spaniard pulls the will over Michael's eyes to send him a right off the stage. Although this is a very dangerous opportunity here. Let's see. Yeah, she's working for the guard, a beautiful sky smash, and I mean, no, oh. what a beautiful, what a, what a beautiful reflector! Stopping the recovery from being able to come back on, forcing this into one sock, and we've seen what it's
In our top half, it's Mr. Nene as he whips and does the dance with three different members of LIU to clutch up the round. He's the last alive. Granted, he's got a Vandal. He makes the trade. Now a one-on-one. -on -one. Can he find it? Doesn't have the intel. If, he's, if he does heaven, he might understand that he's hell. First shock dart will come out. He knows he's there now. First shot's coming out. He still doesn't have all the intel. He looks to peek. He gets the kill. It. Third kill, Mr. Nene. Gonna close out that round for LC. And you can never count out James Madison so long as Impulse is lurking in the wings with this crazy death blossom. Going to deny the dead eye. Unfortunately, they just missed the timing on that defense matrix. And now Georgia State once again in control here. Oh, but Impulse oh, comes in beautiful with ultimate the Death Blossom. Including the hack from Sombra to get a risk. In our runner-up, Bryce in a disadvantage finds a way to just dunk on pace to take St. Joseph's to the final series. What a play there. Great usage of that portal. We've been so effective thus far. Bryce really wants to take this to game number three. Roll. Oh, great usage. You know, I can't even believe that we were not believing in this DVD. Yeah, oh my god, yeah, <laughs> I take it all back. This is exactly the pick they needed. Oh man, huge. He can... Oh my goodness, this is massive. He can win this right here. Oh He's my god! Him. Oh! Nice! And at number one, it's Captain Insano off the top rope to suplex Grand Valley onto the map. Alright, and that is it. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but the action this season is really heating up and it has me super excited to see how these teams shape up come playoffs. Now, if you guys want to catch all of the action live, make sure to follow us on Twitch at ECAC underscore esports. We stream Monday through Wednesday, either on 8 p.m. or 7 p.m. Eastern. Or if you want to stay up to date with everything that's going on with Collegiate Esports, give us a follow on Twitter as well, at ECAC underscore Esports. Trust me, guys, we've been posting a lot more this season as to when we go live, what the matchup is, how we're looking, and all of that. You don't want to miss it. But if you also want to give our partner a shout-out, if you want to show them some love, make sure to follow them on Twitch at twitch.tv slash esportsu. As always, it's been a blast, but I'm sure we'll have even more to talk about next week with a new set of plays, a new host, and all of that that comes with these videos. But as I said, guys, I've been KTAD. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you next time. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Collegiate Esport Commissioner's Cup. I am Septilins, and I get a really neat opportunity here. We get to interview Burns from E United. Burns, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing great. We're on day two of the event. It's been a fantastic one. I ran into you yesterday, but yep. we were running around like chickens with our heads off, and it has been, I mean, how, how has your time been here? What has this event kind of been like? Yeah, it's great. I just love being in the passion pit, seeing all the college kids go at it. Uh, reminds me of like an old school MLG event almost, but being like in the epicenter of the passion yes. pit, seeing Rocket League, Valorant, Overwatch, and Smash, just, it's amazing to see all these schools compete against each other and get a shot to play on this main stage. Yeah, no doubt about it. And tell us a little bit about kind of what is what is E United, right? Because we know that yeah, sure. you're here, we know you're here to represent them, but for the people that don't know, what, what is E United? Yeah, E United was founded in 2016. We're a professional esports organization. Uh, we've been in League of Legends, Overwatch, all the way to uh, Battle Ride, I think it was called back in the day. Uh, <laughs> 
right now in uh, 2022, we are in Gears of War, Halo, Rocket League, PUBG, wow. and announcing a new title tomorrow. Ooh. Uh, I know, get, get the small intel here. So it's a, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I went pro in Call of Duty when I was younger. I ended up playing my last event under E-United, switched in 2016, and I've been wow. uh, the GM ever since. So it's, uh, it's a true blessing to be able to stay with an organization for as long as I have. And uh, we love giving back to the collegiate community. Uh, I actually graduated from Full Sail in 2013. I was a little confused yep. about the jersey. I was <laughs> yeah. A little... yeah, so the Full Sail boys are out of the tournament, unfortunately, but I decided I would rep them today I in their it. honor. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's just great. I, I love working with younger individuals who are trying to find their path in esports, and yeah. these college kids are really showing what they're all about. Yeah, so to be kind of an ex-pro player, where a collegiate scene at the time didn't exist, especially not to the scale yeah. right now, what is... All righty, we have returned, and map number two is coming up. I'll be honest, uh, that was a great map one, definitely competitive, and that that excites me for Suffolk pick over on or over on Haven. Yeah, because both teams show that they're willing to be aggressive out the gate for the start of rounds, yeah. and if that's the case on Fracture, Haven is the map that you have a lot more success doing that more than any other map right now, which is part of why I love the map because you can find success being aggressive because the defensive side of the field is naturally going to be spread out because you have essentially five lanes to work with, five defenders, you kind of have one and one, 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 one. So we'll see um, what the situation is going to be, but I do expect to be a lot more high velocity gameplay, perhaps even more so than what we just saw in Fracture. Yeah, and, and just to kind of continue your point, you are forced to be aggressive defensively if you want to be able to hold everything because, well, you have to take space, and, and that is that is a key. So that defensive aggression is absolutely a huge factor at play on this map. So with that being said, I, I think that for for coming into here at Westchester, obviously they were able to take the victory, but, mm -hmm. but Suffolk, they were right there. I mean, they were right there with them, and... It looks like they're going to play the same comp as well, which makes a yeah. lot more sense over here on uh, Haven. Yeah, I uh, just got that raise there. Uh, energy is out. Sasaga is in. Still the raise, mm -hmm. though. Uh, Levi's in here for that chamber. I think this composition is better on Haven than Fracture. Um, oh, yeah. Chaton is running the Astra. I did not really like we saw kind of a cosmic divide worked out a little bit on post plan because the energy was able to take a good space and have a perfect timed paint shell blind on prediction through the cosmic divide. Yeah. Um, but besides that, I, I don't think the cosmic divide really provided much value and a lot of those no. stars didn't really play this a lot either. So maybe go with something else like a Brimstone Omen or even Viper, literally any other controller. On Fracture, but on Haven, I think Astra <laughs> has more value for sure. Other side of the field, Westchester, MDIM's picking up a Cypher again. Something I was going to wonder of, if you go Cypher on uh, Fracture, then you probably would want to go Cypher on Haven as well because, like you said, a lot of defensive teams especially wanted to aggressively take space. A lot of people push through mid and go through that window and try to like rotate through A's. C lobby, A lobby, get the back space. But if you have something like a Cypher, a lot of people just use a trademark from Chamber, but Cypher is a lot better at just doing anti-flank strats. So especially mm -hmm. on this offensive side, we're going to be seeing a lot of that from MDIMs so of placing those traps and allowing that backside to be completely covered. Uh, hopefully not in bait ways where they can just hop over or something of that sort. We'll see if that could be the case, but possibly like, the race could blast back over maybe. Or you can just jump over the stairs here. <laughs> the garden, we see that sometimes. But I, I trust MDIMs do better than that. Yeah, well, and listen, sometimes with the blast pack, of course, you know, that's going to happen. But it is audio cue, so... It's not like you're, you're mm -hmm. losing out entirely. Um, what what yeah. I will say, I am I'm not the biggest fan of Killjoy on Haven. I think that it's not egregious, but I, I find that the lockdown is very difficult to use effectively. Like you are, I'd say the majority of the time, it's it's not getting much value. It's just forcing one or two cooldowns at most. But hey, that's just me. Suffolk, we saw them get good value, and NAR played incredibly on this agent as well. So, as I mentioned in our previous matchup, if you're comfy, go for it. My biggest concern with Suffolk's team composition, uh, something that was a little bit of a concern last map as well, is just no hard flashes. In fact, you're only even like near sight is from those prowlers of the fade. So it's really hard to just command and force space to be taken for yourself, straightforward oh, right. front. Uh, so they're going to have to do a lot of map work and movement for corner work and macro reads uh, to really find a lot more success this, round, uh, this map, I should say. 
Well, it's also a lot easier with the jet, I think, to, to be like the tip of the spear than with the uh, than, than with the raise. But speaking of being the tip of the spear, the jet dash into the position. Chad, though, doing some good work to deny a couple of players. A three-on-three -three ensues as the Westchester side gets their plant in. As well, as set up. Wolf. Really introduced into the lineup, Ooh, able whoo. to move forward. That dash was effective for Fresh Prince. It's like, dude, I, did, I didn't even do anything. Why am I dead? That made this round pretty winnable for Hate, honestly. I mean, oh, still can be you. one tap to the head from the ghost, but one tap to the body for Wolf, one, maybe two to the body for the breach. It's all Hate would need, so it's still a tough spot, though. Like, you can't say this is advantaged for them at all, especially with this oh, angle from Sopa. And we saw what Sopa can do last map. And they're already back to the good strengths this time around. Yeah, some brilliant work in that in that last map for sure. Wolf though, player like we just mentioned, just coming in, already showing uh, themselves to be very much strong, picking up the pistol. And this is currently Westchester 3-0 uh, in pistol rounds, I believe. Yeah, it is. So. I mean, listen, I, I'm not one of those people who, like, pistol rounds are the entire game, but, right there. I mean, they definitely give you a significant advantage. You get a couple yeah. of rounds for free if you play it right. Yeah, if you trip at pistols and you get four rounds of the 13 you need, you're a third of the way there. Just yeah. by being good at pistols. Uh, not, not insignificant by any means. And what's also not insignificant is the bulldog in the hands and anti-eco. Getting that first frag in the middle and then rotating the seaside as well completely open because so folks... Attempt to death ball down mid was stopped in its tracks firmly. So it's gonna be a 5v4 post plane and anti eco situation. So many advantages the way of Westchester, especially since they're already looking the way of Suffolk's approach. Here. The only good news is that there is a player on uh, on the prowl trying to flank around, but it, the flanker's getting flanked. What? But Chad, Chad reads it. Brilliant maneuvers as Chad Jones finds the frag. Unfortunately, that's the only bit of success available to standing into this. He was going to be last alive. Additional kill would have been nice, but it will be denied. Fresh Prince, that bulldog you mentioned is incredibly strong. That that burst as well against unarmored opponents is oh, outrageously yeah. good. You can one type of burst against armored opponents, so it's you need Fair. more you precision need to the head and stuff for sure. But it's definitely way easier when they don't have armor. Uh, it's very strong to a point where you wonder why people don't why, buy Bulldogs more often. I feel like... I, I, I'm with you. I, like, why a Bulldog good. second round as opposed to, like, a Phantom or a Vandal? I, I, I love that. Yeah. Save a little cash. Make sure that if you lose it, it's not that big a deal, but still have good damage. You can... Because with a Bulldog, you can get better utility armor all that kind of stuff, too. It's not uh -huh. forced into a light armor. That's right. It's basically no utility. The big brains for Westchester. Unfortunately, uh, condemns too the big of a brain. Head. Yeah, I mean his whole head. <laughs> too, too, it, too, it's big too big of a head Too big of a brain. Down by one player early on. Not ideal, but not the worst either. They can come back from this. I, I, I want to sit lasagna. Here. I know. <laughs> I'm also on three. Well, it's a saga. Off to a good so. start for this one, yeah. And Wolf, though, trying to answer back. This is the bonus for Westchester. Statistically, should be lost of a round, but we've seen the win bonuses last map, so we'll see if they can pull off some magic here. But now that they're rotating into this giant stockpile of Killjoy utility with an asterisk and pop stars on contact. The trademark in Garage as well. It's going to be so tough to even 30 get seconds to the site. Chad, just kind of holding back and... One enemy remaining. Him. That's a mistake down. for sure. Is Wolf the only one to come away with anything? Rotate. <sighs> one sheriff is wow. just not enough. And it will be a uh, a nice round for Suffolk. I will say Wolf has been a really good look for Westchester. Uh, I mean, I think Jack was doing a pretty good job last map, but Wolf has so far been very good. Fantastic performance, even though that the lost that round was the one making the kills and it got two body shots on the Nar there. Almost got the kill. 
So definitely a player that's caught my eye. I'll be continuing watching throughout the rest of this map. No the Eiffel is available for Fresh Prince. Interestingly enough, Sopo and Fresh Prince swapped agents. Yeah, they did. I do think that was a little bit weird, but clearly it's about being in the right positions. And uh, It might be a lineups thing. Could you don't need to learn well. lineups for a breach, but for a fade, just... You learn lineups for Fracture, I learn lineups for Behaven. Yeah, good way to split up the heavy work, by the way. Not, not, not easy to do by any means. Wolf is a dash forward, but I was about to say, there's still a player there, but that player is going to run a move. Get out. It is dangerous making any sort of audio cue into that position. Wolf, though, do a dark cover, if I'm not mistaken, towards this saga. This is looking better and better for Westchester. Only now that they lost players, it's Snar and Hate to move forward. But Nightfall, Rolling Thunder, both of these available to the back. defense of this fight. One enemy remaining. And on the flank as well, Fresh Prince. That is uh, what we call free in the business. Soap is going to clean it up. And uh, great round there on the, uh, the bonus, but Suffolk immediately get answered back. Yeah, great rotation around by Fresh Prince there. You do not, as Nar expects, V to me be coming right from where he just came from just moments ago. The timing was very good. So the bones look shaky, but ever since, otherwise, it's been very much dominant by Westchester, I'd say. Early yeah. in the map, though, and there's two rotation substitutes as well for a couple fresh blood to come in. Maybe just need to warm up a bit. Okay. That's totally so Wolf, fair. On the other hand, Wolf does not need to warm up. They are <laughs> off to the races. They've been in the DMs the whole time. <laughs> All of the last map. They didn't even watch it. Just been warming it up. Don't know that. I'm entirely guessing. But the performance, now the Blade Storm has certainly told the tale. Just so. Trying to get to fall back. Oh, that oh, trademark oh. was perfection. Nar catches the timing and the blades are no more. That's unlucky, really. Well, trying to be a good well duelist in a great space for the team and just was not allowed to play Valor in that moment. <laughs> okay, push, uh, pushed up is the fade from Soulfolk's side. Hates. Good for one. Has to reload because of just stinger things. You're generally good for one before you have to reload. Just ready to get that second one. This timing on Nar though is not ready as Sopa. Nar's right click so good. And suddenly we see a thrifty round win. That is a free gun. I uh, just, for the record, everybody, free gun by the way. Those right clicks are just so strong. Yeah. Yeah. Been nerfed infinitesimally, but still good. Nar, but the consistency with which Nar has been able yeah. to find value is impressive. In game leader yeah. once again doing the heavy lifting for the team with a triple kill on an eco round of all things. And it's kind of similar to last map. We saw Nar and Chatones both having a really good start on defense for the map. It was on offense that they started kind of struggling a little bit, so. Something to monitor as the map goes on. But it's good to see at the very least a consistent on the defensive side. But it's also, it also seems to be consistent is how often Suffolk gets a free C sites. Mdim's at least able to get a trade. This will be 4v4 post plant situation. Nice Chester's still in a good spot though. Here comes that retake maneuver. Many players through this position. Wolf. Oh, he's not going to get checked. Needs to get aggressive though right now. Otherwise, it's going to be too late. Levi fear. moving forward. He's going to find the nightfall from the offense as they find that push. Now Wolf chimes in. There's a single player surviving. It's Chad Tones with the cosmic divide the trying to remaining. swing desperately. Oh, what Prince, Prince, what are you doing? Takes the knife out. Might have thrown this round away. But fortunately, Wolf and Westchester come away with it. Fresh Prince, my friend, that was ridiculous. <laughs> if Chad don't hit that headshot, I, there was not enough time anyway, 
but I could have been nutty. Nevertheless. <laughs> the one bullet, find the frag, fresh prince, little, try to style a little bit. The player had a fantastic last game. Feeling it, a that's little for sure. too hard. <laughs> <laughs> Rather ambitious with the knife out. Yes, uh, good word. Look at all the focus. I think clear this, hate. Uh... Hate was not cleared. Oh, you're right. And that frag is going to give them a false sense of security. You saw I got Had that first, but hate will only oh, no, come away with one. We're on three now. The plant going to go down. Spike planted. Nothing, nothing really uh, interesting into this setup other than just run it down. Maybe a lockdown for Nar, but where do you where do you place that where you're going to get max value, especially when the, when the shadow is available? Wolf, good for one. Still a 3v2 advantage for Westchester in this post plant. Swarming on the site. The lockdown's available, but is there really time for it at this point? I don't think there is. And so much utility and angle is not cleared yet. Westchester, an unforced error by Nar, swiftly punished by Westchester's in their post plants. Oh, man, they're going to be feeling that in the future rounds. Yeah, that one hurts. And, um... I think that kind of goes to show what I was talking about in the pregame, though, about how difficult it is to use that lockdown in on this map. Like, there's just no good... Like, on the go, it's very hard. And there's just not a lot of obvious places, and the ones that are obvious are not all that amazing. So, yeah. regardless. I, I think that also means, though, Chad, that that isn't necessarily the largest loss. Off your feet. Uh, lockdown is tough to lose, for sure. Could be used right now. By the time for your team to rotate through. We could we take it a little bit better. But they do get the kill on mid. Take down M Dims. Mm. This is a buy round for the nice set Vulcan. Is Nightfall coming through as well? They do need to address long. There's no smoke until now. And they're getting the frags for the team. Site is being cleared. Pushed back to see Long or Westchester's last two remaining members. They don't have good utility to really work with the situation. So many members alive with Suffolk. Good for one is all that Westchester could be done. And another round win for Suffolk. Answering back very well after the blunder of the last round. I mean, yeah, absolutely impressive to say the least. It all starts. In that mid, in that mid lurk, like you talked about, right? The, the killjoy in that position, Nar able to find the opener, and then the two players over towards Long were entirely denied via that that nebula. Shadow Tones puts it in the right place, and nobody there. nobody can really follow that up. I I did think it was it was smart for Westchester to get aggressive when the nightfall comes out because you know long enough time scale you're gonna lose because they know where you are, but still. Yeah. Nothing successful off the back of that. Long combo. Our favorite. All right, maybe practice a little bit more. <laughs> Get out of here. Okay. That looked very casual. Saga walking forward, gonna have the entry. But at the cost of this uh, A plant, to be fair. Showstopper available for the defense as they move forward with the man advantage as well. Levi shutting down Alpha. I'm the Alpha now. The shots for Wolf. Hello, Blades are activated. Blind member gets the reset but can't connect to Levi. It's all down a soap under one versus two situation. Both members are very weak. The aftershock's going in. The angling wasn't quite there to kill Hate. Footsies were better. The shutdown there was able to get Suffolk another round win. Save the day. Yeah, I, I don't think that there was actually enough space for that aftershock to connect. I don't think. It was just a little bit too far forward. But if ima imagine if it was. Oh, my goodness. And I, I got to be honest. I'm typically very critical of wa quote, unquote, wasting ultimates in rounds like that. I love what Wolf did there. Just smelled blood in the water and thought, you know what? This is winnable. I'm going to make this my round and yeah. gave it a damn good shot. 
Yeah, those last knives were narrowly missing Levi's head. If those yeah. connected, pop off Pixels. moment, that would have been a clip. And also, I would argue is the best option in that situation to make that run evil, like you said, as well. You're not going to win that with a sheriff in hand in that way. No. No, it's nearly made Whoa. it, so, to be fair. Speaking of near misses, Levi, nearly, barely missing. Oh, Levi, did he not hear? No! Did not hear the audio cue. Brutal way to lose out to Wolf. Tough spot with an operator in hand dealing with all these dark covers. Everything's close quarters. You know you're in back sight with a showstopper. It won't even matter. The vandals are good enough. Makes it a 4v3. Alpha trying to answer back. Popped off a fracture game. They do it again in a similar situation, but Chad Tone's popping up harder. Getting a 2k and tying up the game. And MDM's losing out on the flank there as well. I thought it was a good position for Westchester to be in, but no, denial, perfect. And yes, a huge clutch from Chad as well. Stepping up Need big time in that moment, now 11 and six. Walking that fine line, fine five. One second, and uh, I gotta visit the an interesting to time for a timeout. I, I don't hate it. I, I just think it's it's been so close all of these rounds, even the eco. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the success from Westchester so far has been just Wolf giving pop off moments. Um, I mean, Sofa, Fresh Prince, Alpha, MDM's like, MDM's not having the most success, but you're also a Cypher on attack, so it feels bad, man, anyway. Um, yeah. I think they, for the most part, have done a really good job. Um, maybe not so eagerly looking for those uh, post plant flank options, because that's been sh getting shut down by players like Nar and Chad Holmes a lot, but. Was I mean, last still, round as well. Yeah, I mean. Still get the utility up. So I, I don't think there's anything really that Westchester is doing like glaringly wrong. Uh, I, I think it's just more of just the, the macro reads that like the step right there with Wolf in the back site with an operator when there's two dark covers covering your link. So you're not really going to have much success in this scenario. So it would be better if you got off site. Things like that, like little changes um, could be said, but there's no like glaring like obviously they're all just sitting there in a lobby and just dying getting swarmed. Like that's not really <laughs> nothing really that major is happening here. Yeah. Yeah, the, these guys a little a little bit above that by uh, every measurable margin here. Very careful amount of investment from Westchester as well, making sure they can bind to the next, but getting the maximum that they can invest upon here. Another oh, look towards B, Levi. With a nice shot though. Torta Force ringing out. Difficult to move forward. Never mind. It's easy. Just blast back in. Saga. Well, underhand. Levi will take the actual duel there. Tim Dems v3. And Levi, a big round to come alive. Being forced to dry peak and operate. You know the Torta Force is holding the angle too. Like, uh, well, I kind of have to do this. There's no time otherwise. They're diffusing. Last round Here we go. Tough spot for MDM's BN. Did win that flank duel though in garage this time around, which is huge. Yeah. Okay. So coming off that time out, not the greatest of looks. And it does feel like if Wolf falls early, doesn't get one or two kills before they dying off, then it does seem to be tragedy for Suffolk. Time out into a uh, into a same round though as well. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So. Say what you will, whether that's the good or not good thing to do, but expected outcome, none of this. So, but opening pick firmly in their grasp, and Levi, the individual who really popped off in the last round, is now down, marked up. Snar tagged down heavily through the box in the nightfall. It's time. Planted. Westchester at the very least very consistent getting the spike planted every round. No flame to deal with when in garage. She's saga. Down and then trade underway, but it's gonna be Westchester forced off the site yet again and now have to fight through a cosmic divide. This will not pull off Nara. They might think that it does, but they'll be able to just stick it. The cosmic divide will last long enough. That's that's oh. brutal. They really thought that that, that seize was enough. 
but it was it not, time. does not catch the diffuser, and, well, Suffolk have somehow got their way into a 7-5, and I say somehow, I mean no disrespect, I'm just thinking, you know, those first six, seven rounds were, were all very, very much in one direction. And this kind of feels a lot like the first game, too, where Westchester starts off very right strong there. and then Suffolk figures out a lot on defensive side and makes a really strong half and makes actually that they're in the lead at 7-5, just like they were on Fracture. But we know the story of how Fracture went. Mm -hmm. It was Westchester that making a comeback there. from being down 5-7 and having an incredibly dominant defensive half of their own. And a lot of the same players here, very similar agents in their hands. So we'll see if that's going to be the same case. And all those plants as well, as you mentioned. Himdoms. Play defense. Falling back. I like that. I like that they're prioritizing living in that situation rather than taking that fight. Suffolk is going to be able to plant Spike. Westchester. Ready and willing to go for this retake ASAP. I'm looking at Nara, the Slanker from two sites. We'll be able to take down M-Dim's post play already happened as well. It's going to burn so much time. It's Westchester now. Where's Nara? Are they still there? We have to deal with this, but the time's ticking down. What do we do right now? And Fresh Prince needed to find the kill, but Nara's still alive. Being such a nuisance the back side of this fight. And on the side itself, so many members of Sofolk are still alive and ready to fight. Have the numbers advantage. They use it wisely and well. Sofolk wins the first pistol round of the series. I mean, yes, yeah, Suffolk does, does win it, but Nar deserves the credit. What yeah. a massive timing on that flank. It doesn't matter that... It wouldn't have mattered, I should say, if Nar dies after that, because the job is done. But not only does he find that first kill, but then finds another one as well. Big giveaway from Fresh Prince. A little bit of a flub taking out the pistol. That quickly swapping back and forth. Hands Nar that round on a silver platter. He's eating good tonight. Indeed. We talked about how the narratives were looking to repeat themselves from the first half, but this was that that was that big change. When the pistol was coming around. But Wolf getting a kill on Nar, who admittedly was being a little bit ambitious with the uh, Marshall pushing up front contact for the site, but the trade's still underway and still will be a Strong post by hold and anti eco for Westchester or for Suffolk. Oh, another nice game. Fresh Prince this time. When you have the gun out, apparently it's pretty good. Shots connecting. Sasaga in position. Another push forward. Gonna get flanked here in just a second. Two players left onto the site. There is that flank coming Whoa. alive. Nice turnaround. 180 headshot. But. Three kibbles? I mean, Don't I'd call that a win. Westchester doing max damage, really, on that eco. All things considered, as a good eco. Still, though, the lead growing ever so much more for Soulfolk. Now seven rounds in a row. Wow. This will be the anti-bonus for Westchester. If you imagine they'll take this one out and stop that momentum, but... Ooh, if Suffolk wins this one, that might be the map. That might be too much momentum for Westchester yeah. to deal with. Might be indeed. Very much do or die. I like this aggression though. Westchester are getting a lot of information. Shot. Continuation. Wolf gonna go down. Ends up falling. The Fresh Prince and Soap up. Meanwhile. Take frags of their own. That aggression in towards the grass was just so perfectly timed. Very spread out as Westchester right now. Mostly just trying to watch long angles. This Marshall went to the body would take down Sopa here. Opened up with this breach. Nearly scary. So for the will survive. Just two HP. It's one more than you need, baby. That's exactly right. <laughs> don't need don't need to have high health. Just a health. One enemy remaining. 
You also need a flash well placed to take down Levi. That's why you only need one health left. Still use utility, still swing and find the headshots, and that's going to be Westchester winning the round. As would be expected, and as they almost needed. Be another buyout for so Suffolk. A nightfall available for hate. Let's see which uh, angle they want to go for. Nightfall versus sea sites. You know, Cubby is pretty good. You know, Garage as well. It's the only early round ultimate available in this entire story. Yeah. Everybody else, two or more kills away. I say that, but I miss Wolf, who apparently was able to grab that orb and it was good for the blades. Yeah. So, yeah. scratch that because I'm blind. And also a very gamble stack by Westchester this round. All BA side, completely FC open, and that actually worked out. But what doesn't work out is just getting blind sprayed by Nar. It was good for two on the site. How could it be so? Emden's finally shutting that tyrant down, but the paint shell is going to be able to shut him down. Emden's not going to find a lot of fun, and that's Nara. It's blades. I mean, it's hard to imagine that they're going to be able to be strong enough here with no utility to deny vision. It's about now. Fresh friends, though. It's that shot. Blind pressure. Wolf hoping to bring this back. Another tap towards the spine. Gravity well. It's actually Nova Pulse. Connecting. Chad's going to shut it down. It's two for the man. Ten rounds. And this is very much looking like a uh, exact copy of what we saw from uh, Westchester in the first half, only for Suffolk. Yeah, we talked about momentum game I've before. Time to go into the Astral Very fall. awkward scenario for Westchester to determine what do we buy here. Eminem's buying up, but the rest of the team starting to sell. They want to play for the next round. Because playing for 11 definitely is a lot more important than playing for a 10. It means I have to force a bad buy at 10, because if you lose that, then you're just going to keep on losing and dealing with a low... Fine. By angles. Yep. So, but Westchester, if they can win this round, the economy hasn't flourished quite enough by Suffolk yet. They can still get to a scenario where they can cut them down, force them into some bad buys, which we goes this half, make that comeback to reality. But they want to do it, at least do a lot of damage on this eco here. A requirement for sure. That being said, it is definitely easier yeah. to look at it from our point of view. Nar. <laughs> Spotted out. He really still finds that connection. And it's clear that Suffolk are, are not interested in over overexerting themselves. They're not interested in overextending. They want to be headed into a site where they have an advantage. A fake towards C. A run towards A. Levi has already found his way on the site. Oh. Three. The shots from Levi allow Suffolk, or Westchester to know, okay, somebody has pushed up to graffiti all. So nobody, that stopped them from eagerly and then recklessly throwing themselves on the site. This great from long range for m -Dims. Was it good enough at first? It was later on as the Saga has their back, but still going to be a player advantage for Westchester on this round that could be so massive for them to be able to win it out. Push up front and center. The judge in hand oh. is good enough. There's no audio, but I can still look on my oh. screen and see your face. So it says Alpha fighting the headshot with the sheriff. And Westchester wins a thrifty. A thrifty that comes at the most thrifty. important time as well. Suffolk on the cusp of 11. Suffolk on the way to run away with the momentum. But Westchester. Answering, standing tall, and Imdims. What a time to come to the forefront. That judge offering full judgment of the Suffolk Community College side. Cutting them down one by one. A lot of ultimates online here, Suffolk, though. Cosmic Drive for Chad Jones. They have been really good timings. They're playing good options for those. Pretty much Barton. winning a couple of rounds. 
Yeah, largely using them in post plants, either for retakes or holds. Really aggressively done. Lockdown's gonna be used instead for that. Breach is not in a position to be able to shut that down with an aftershock. Fresh Prince will be able to shut down Hay, but his saga, his saga was able to answer back. Sopa is right there. The number is evened up. You want to fight it? Still fighting, still hungry for more. Or I don't know how he got out of that alive. There's a crossfire step as well from all that. Like what's planted? Nar wins the fight against Alpha. How is this happening? It's gonna be two versus two. Oh, and Nar with another big victory. It's Wolf. Has to do it alone. Has a shot. Is not gonna be prepared for the close left angle. And Chad clutching out once more. And another big impact with regard to the cosmic divide. That was magical. A big moment. And Suffolk on the cusp now of victory. They just need two more rounds. And this is a round where you see the economy not very good for Westchester. And because Suffolk has 11, if you save here, you're... If you save, you're almost saying like, okay, we'll give up the round and play for the next. It's like generally the mathematical consensus. You know, every round's winnable, of course. Right. But that's why you see a lot of teams force fully on when the enemy team's at 11 because you don't want them to be match point. You don't want to play for overtime. You want to play for the win. I think Westchester. overtime, though, I mean, it's only five rounds. Yeah, they did get the first kill in this round. They didn't fully force up, but still, like, a decent, like, half buy. Deadly with these half buys of Westchester men, though. Yeah. One of Thrifty earlier. Camera taken out. I'm gonna get found out. Oh, yeah, they run away. That is the right decision when you hear a judge. Okay, I guess. Attempt to go for the plant. Stun, Fresh Prince, not oh. there. Chad with a massive frag. And Sopa. Two I'm shotguns with the same angle. <laughs> oh, this is actually... The, the fall of the sight? That's big. These two members Westchester, they'll be able to get some rifles now. 30 seconds left. Rolling outrageous. Thunder is available. Oh, but Chad Tones had a massive kill onto Wolf at B site and now has a massive position. There's no way Westchester expects this, right? I mean, it's so obvious, but at the same time, how could you anticipate? Yeah, they, they have no idea. So it was gonna walk going to walk right Going for a save? <laughs> no saves allowed. No, Wahala. Oh. I am the trouble. I think that's game. What a massive moment from Match Chad. There point. will be a full buy up here, but five rounds. I know you said it's five rounds away. Just that's enough time for Soulfolk to be able to start stockpiling ultimates. Make sure they have a BYD great buy. Like going to Astral to do them Astral five rounds is enough time Eleven. that it feels almost inevitable they'll be able to squeeze out at least one more. But I've seen it done. I've seen a five streak before, even through ultimate advantages. It's a timeout for Westchester. Talk about it. In fairness, I mean Suffolk pulled five in a row at the very end of that last half true so if they very can do true. it so can westchester yeah and thus far it's been the exact same story for attacker versus defense it absolutely has that's a great point literally mirror images as we head into the biggest round of this game westchester as mentioned they are in a hugely advantageous position with the ultimates that they have but it is it is difficult. I feel like yeah, you're you're definitely winning a round potentially up a rolling thunder or a blade storm, but it's a neural theft and from the shadows. Uh, mm -hmm. Those are not not high value. Yeah, especially on defensive side from the shadows it doesn't seem to have as much punch. Uh, you can't get a fast rotation at the least, so. It's still not a terrible ultimate by any means. Neural Theft regarded as the worst in the game. But it still has value. Can't deny it. I'm better than from the shadows. Really? Sometimes. We'll get back to that. Fresh friends. Marked out. Temporarily. Lots of utility. And it's a saga. 
That is a nail being driven into the coffin. Westchester for the moment. Wolf trying Spike planted. desperately to avoid detection there. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to matter. As Wolf walking into Chad. Two on five. Here's the rolling thunder finally, but it's too late maybe. It's hard. That missed everybody on its own. All five strong as well, but they're getting the kills. First two entries. We have to deal with Operator from Levi though. That's going to be too strong for one. The head hunter too strong for the second. And it's going to be Suffolk answering back after losing the first round. First map. Come back strong in the second. Their own map pick. And these see exactly why. Looking incredibly fierce to be reckoned with. Yeah, particularly on that offensive side. It, it was hit or miss at the beginning of the first half when we were just seeing Westchester and Wolf specifically kind of just run it down and win regardless. But it was the backside of that of that second half. Like five straight rounds where Westchester planted the spike and then Suffolk successfully diffused it. That, that is a... That's a crazy run when you think about it. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. That really just shows the post plant woes for Westchester there. Like we point out that one time Wolf was the backside of B after post plant, and the links were all smoked off, and he has an operator in hand. Like, what do you really expect to do in that situation? So if you try to position your resources a little bit better, have the operator towards like the window covering from mid, something like that would have been such a huge difference of things. So. It's those little positional choices were a lot of the changes uh, that could have been made to switch around the results of some of those rounds for Westchester. But Suffolk, they have the better positions. And in the day, it doesn't matter of who plays perfect. What matters is who plays better. Suffolk, they definitely played better on that map. No doubt about it. That was 100% the case. And, well, the bind. That's coming up next. Uh, a third map. Excited to see where this goes. But first, a break. We'll see you in just a few minutes. Such high levels of success, such high levels of support for something that you weren't able to kind of get as much support in at the time. Something that was looked down on a lot more. Yeah, I'm uh, extremely jealous. That's all I can say. <laughs> uh, Full Sail started their program in 2017. When I was there in 2011 and 12, it was just a bunch of nerds running around, just right. creating their own clubs. I was still striving to go pro, but now you have these opportunities to play right. on main stage, play in front of thousands of people. We just had locals back in the day. You would show up and play for like $200, $100. It was like lunch money. Right. Now these kids are playing for scholarships. They're playing for fame. They could pop off here and end up getting a sponsor for ten dollars or $20,000 from somebody. Right. So the opportunities are just endless at the moment and I think it's just great that uh, you know you basically can prove yourself and make anything happen right now it's instead of kind of what you had gone through being in college and also trying to go pro yeah. these kids can try to go pro while being 100%. in college it's hand in hand instead yeah. of those two kind of battling kind of matchups so if somebody's trying to go pro right they're like Burns I want to be you one day I want to be the GM of United one day what is that first step to really take it from a hobby to, to a passion to a job yeah I think I've told this story a lot but it's really I thought about going pro every night before I went to bed right like I live and breathe Call of Duty for years it was my life I skipped I had to skip dinner sometimes I had to skip family functions and my family didn't really understand but it was what I wanted to do and it all worked out but uh, at the end of the day, you always need to kind of be organized. You have to have the ability to not put all of your eggs in one basket. So even though it worked out for me, there are so many opportunities right. in esports. There's being a caster or interviewing people. There's be working in production. There's helping people get waters. Like literally, there are so many opportunities. So, um, oh, this crowd's awesome. They're going right crazy, <laughs> dude. That, they stayed on their last life right off now. Off subject, Smash, regardless if it's middle school, high school, college, oh, it pops off it all pops. the time. I love it. Well, Burns, so, thank you so no, much, yeah, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no it. worries. Thank you, guys. My name is Darian Wheeler. I'm a junior at Cornell College, and I play for the Overwatch and Smash Ultimate team there. I also play football, and I enjoy playing Ultimate Frisbee as well. Wow, how do you have time for all that? 
I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta prioritize, right? Yeah. So how long have you been playing Overwatch and Smash, you said? Overwatch, I started playing the summer before I came to Cornell, which was in 2019. And since then, I've gone from bronze to master's ranking just by being on the team. Um, and Smash, I started when the game first came out, but I haven't played the game competitively until around the end of last year. And what made you want to start competing? At the time, our esports coach, we just started getting into like big tournaments and stuff. And so the t- we went to a tournament where one of the PGR, one of the top 50 players in the world was appearing and we played him and it was not pretty. It was, uh, we got stomped into the dirt. And so <laughs> that I, I didn't like that. So I was, I said, you know what, I'm going to get better. I'm going to play better and I'm going to figure out how to, how to beat someone like that. Cause that that was not fun. And what have you done to get better at the game? Like, what kind of strategies do you use? We have weekly practices. We have Monday, Thursday, and Friday we practice. Uh, I play by myself, of course. I go to tournaments. And from these tournaments against good players, I take the film that I get the, and I VOD review it, learn what I could have done better, um, and figure out things like positioning, usage of abilities, you know, that type of thing. So what do you think about your team? How does it feel to be a part of an esports team? And do you guys all get along? Are you guys friends? Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. We, like, if we're all in the room together, we're we're just joking around. We're, which sometimes makes it hard to practice because it's, it's very hard. It's hard to get serious when it's uh, really goofy like that. But I love being on the team. It's, it's like one of the reasons I stayed on the esports team, despite, because we had a director change, despite the director change was because I just love the team. That's really good. You guys support each other and all that. That's awesome. You said you've gone to competitions and stuff. Well, how often do you think you game a week? How many hours do you think you play a week? Maybe over 24, maybe 30, 30 hours. It's, it's a lot of time. You play Smash and Overwatch. Which one do you like better and why? I really like Smash better. One, I've always, fighting games have always been my thing before shooters, so that's part of it. And I'm much better at Smash than I am at Overwatch. It's, Overwatch is more of a team-based game, so your individual performance matters a lot less. Um, But Smash, everything that you do, it's, it's all on you, so you can always improve on that. And I know you've been to competitions and stuff before, but do you still get nervous when you're about to compete or are you pretty confident? Oh man. <laughs> yeah, I get I get nervous still. It's um it depends though. Uh you know, you I usually have music playing, you know, calm my nerves, but especially if I'm going against a player I who I know is very high ranked, very well known, very Map number three is about to be underway between Westchester and Suffolk. It's been a back and forth battle. A lot of similarities, some deja vu moments, but map number two is Suffolk changing the tides and switching the narrative in their favor. Yeah, they did a really good job of just taking that game by the horns. It felt like a a shift in tide, certainly, but the back end of that first half on Haven was really where things changed, right? Consistently, Suffolk making those retakes happen. Consistently, Westchester struggling in the post plant. And it felt as well that the early stages of Wolf just taking over the game was just no longer having that level of impact. And therefore, they were not able to take these rounds. So I think that as we head towards Pine, anything can happen. Yeah, and by interestingly enough, we've seen a lot of aggression of uh, Fracture and the story of Suffolk shutting them down. On Haven, very similar situation uh, overall, and it was Suffolk playing overall better when it came to slower pace controlled Valorant, uh, especially when it's on their defensive side of things. Going into this last map of Bind, this is what I consider to be the slowest map in the game right now. It's very claustrophobic, very tight corridors to get through, basically a lot of choke points, I should say. Um, four lanes to work with. I mean, you have the teleports for fast rotates, but those are played around and understood well enough that those don't really come to fruition that often these days. And looking at the team compositions, 
it might be three maps in a row of the exact, and it is of the exact same wow. team composition from uh, Soulful going into here. And we were questioning it uh, as far as like, do they really have a variety? Is this really the better call? Are they just playing cover picks? Fracture, it looked like maybe it was a bad call with the Astra and the and the Killjoy, but those were looking really good going into Haven and on Bind. I don't know. I I honestly. I'm a little indifferent about this composition on Bind. I, I have strong feelings, Chad. Um, and let me tell you why. Uh, they've broken my cardinal rule. So and that is that Killjoy agent. should just never be played on Bind in any world ever, <laughs> at any time. Like, and if you were going to play Killjoy, why wouldn't you just play Cypher? Or Chamber, for that matter. Like, for me, the, the lockdown doesn't provide value on this map almost ever. It's very hard. And in addition to that, you... Uh, you know, whilst the nanostorms are equally as good as they always are, you know, you tend to struggle to to find the the same level of value that a cipher or a chamber or literally anything else. I mean, put any initiator into that slide, and I think it's better. So, I think that you know that's not meant to be a conversation on NAR or their performance. Just that the agent in general tends not to be performing well here, and uh, so I w am going to be looking to NAR to be doing something incredible to impress me. Yeah, Nard looked great on Haven, especially, and I'm not going to be able to say anything against a player by any means. Uh, I would say that I think going to the Viper in this situation for this composition would be better. I think Viper Astra still is a very strong composition for Bind. Yep. It used to be the hard meta you're trolling if you weren't running them, but once the Astra <laughs> nerf came through and all those changes and all that kind of stuff, then it wasn't really the same. But I still feel like Viper is a good call here i think she, uh, cypher was a good call as well um but yeah killjoy she has places she could find success on buying absolutely i don't think it's a troll pick by any means uh, but i mean I'll, especially if you can just land headshots with classic from long range like that uh it's, everything's gonna go great at the end of the day it's the shooter first and the ability thing second right is what you try to claim it to be so, Nard definitely has good shots. Yeah, exactly. And as mentioned, you know, just keep continue hitting those shots and it won't be a problem. So, opening was nice. All four defenders, though, here. And that C is perfectly placed. Wolf gonna walk away with frag, but it's a trade, actually. And Chad, no, they're, they're up by one. Westchester. They flubbed that big time. They had the advantage from the seas. They were a little too far forward, a little too aggressive, and they get punished. Chad rolling the sniper over towards B side as well. A little bit of a late rotation. Chad would be here for the team on top of it all. I'll find you. Three get two post plant. The haunt gone already as well. It does clear out a few corners, so it does save some time, but still has a lot to clear out here. And Dems find the first kill on an R. Let's both players on both teams engage in 1v1s, but it's going to be Sofolk coming out on top. Went Suffolk. out another pistol round for this match. And only their second, by the way. I mean, yeah, now, yeah. now relatively even, two to three, but still. Taking two in a row is a, another aspect of that that matters in a uh, pretty significant way. Great start, as mentioned by Nar, and and you're right. Just just shoot heads, and and there is no problems. So, I'm I'm happy to eat my words. If Nar continues to perform along that same level also. we have come to expect. They found my trap. Sneaking through, shorty in the face doesn't quite find the frag. No headhunter bullets either for Sopa here. That's tough. Old Shorty gets that kill. <laughs> three games, three different agents for Sopa. Oh, that's a great point. Really solid to have that flexibility. Sopa gotta go down though. Try to get cheeky. Saga. Gonna ultimately lose out in finding that kill, but. It's all good. Hate had it on lockdown. This is uh, looking like everything you would want from an anti eco if you're stuck. One enemy remaining. As we're Long. seeing the end of this anti eco round, 
Go about the way you expect. We talked about Sopa changing to her chamber was Fade, then Breach, and now Chamber. We also have Alpha going away from Controller to Initiator, and First Prince going away from Initiator to Controller go into this last map. Completely, completely different role changes as well. A lot of agent changes across all of these players. Yeah, very unusual to see that many role changes. I mean, just look at the opposition on, on Suffolk side. Pretty much the same, you know, the whole time, every every single every single time. And whenever they, they swap people out, it was, you know, like for like, duelist for duelist or such. Yeah. And perhaps that comfortability can be the difference maker to determine which team is on top of this third and final map of the series. Dwarf Westchester is mixing it up and keeping things feeling fresh. Maybe that could be an expected for them themselves. So far, so good for the attacking team, though, as Nar and Hate able to remaining. find frags. Chad finds two over to his A. Sight completely anchoring away. Catching people trying to get to the teleporter on the way out. And it's a flawless bonus round. Suffolk Community College. Third and final map of the series. Suffolk. That is ridiculous. Uh, doing some suffocating of their opponents into that round. Like, what? Uh, in what world is the bonus ever that dominant? I, I mean, I cannot recall the situation where you just see that sort of domination in this close to the series. Right? Like, that only happens when a team is just far and above better than the other. But that's not the case here. Just a brilliant round and... I think this is an understandable timeout from Westchester. I would be taking a timeout too. Yeah, the two members of Westchester on B side didn't know how to respond and also didn't seem to predict the utility oppression used onto the site, setting up those kills. The timing by Chad Tones as well. Coming out of showers, the exact moment two members of Westchester were trying to just run to the 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 teleporter catching Great. them out. Everything just went perfectly that round for them. Yeah, I mean, just lurk timing 101, right? That's, yeah. that's what that is. Um, and everybody got upgrades. Not a single player died. Not a single player needs to rebuy. And that's what's so magical about a round like that is the cash. The, the money is out of this world for mm. Suffolk at, at this current moment. And if they can... Play this chance on Eco anywhere close to that well, then they'll be rolling in the dough for not only these rounds, but many more to come. Try to be aggressive as Westchester. The timing actually was so good. Is able to find the kill. Got a little scary there, but doesn't feel confident to go and pick up that gun either. Good call because that is being covered by Sasagi. Saga. This lockdown could give them entry, at least to the site, force one player out, but looks like that's not going to be the case. Shot. Wolf. Patience is a virtue, but unfortunately, it's just going to be a, a singular frag hey. taken away. But a trade means that Westchester's still ahead, and that is dangerous after such a ridiculously strong round from Suffolk, it would be tragic to lose it like this. And a little high for home games. You do see Asasaga very weak though. I love Nate Shapiro Shiro's getting back a punch. Gets a weakened member like that. Marked out as Gnar. And they fall back, but it's still able to set up a little bit of a post point thus far. The Lombard not able to go out just yet. The lockdown. This lockdown, this... yeah. This will reach. Great creativity here for this lockdown to, uh, to be very effective. He's even spamming down a player through that top Last screen. Player standing. Again, mentioned, mentioned before how difficult it can be, but Nar getting a, a lot of value out of that. A nice post point setup as well. Last player standing. Oh no. Wait a second. There's, Wait. There's time. There's time. Wait. There's no nano swarms. What have you done? Who's the old dog uh, now? Nar? I, I've just got done giving you all the praises. 
Maybe he placed them and somebody destroyed them and didn't realize? Well, he didn't have any in the post plane. He threw one while the spike was getting planted just to keep people at bay. Oh, you right. I, I do recall. Oh. I don't know. Maybe maybe mistakenly walked through the, the teleporter? I, I feel like it was. They looked at it and ran in. Like, I think I, he I thought agree, the timer was lower than it really was. Must have been. A, a massive flub, though. Oh. After winning that last round, yeah, sure. You survive with a player, but rounds are, are where the victories do lie. Yes. Yeah. At the end of the day, there's a W in the column there for Westchester. Yeah. And lots of damage. I mean, that was an eco round with four kills. And yeah, eco the round win. They burned that lockdown off the R as well because of it. Yeah, it's it's worse than the more you think about it. Nice That's reaction great. speed. Bring them down. Alpha realizing how difficult it is to get inside his spade. <laughs> the utility does not do a lot of work. Setting up for a plant denial. Here it comes. Open up the sky. And uh not the great little bait. Well, I, I think hate anticipating that for sword, but still gets to kill one HP remain. And a one on three, but there is like ten health between two of these players, so. This could definitely go his way. Fresh Prince. First shot. And haunt as well. Little HP player. Looking forward. So dangerous. So dangerous to be swinging there. I, I mean, if you leave Levi, that is a scary thing to be doing. Yeah. Because you're, because hate was one health. Yeah, you, you'd imagine that hate would be first contact. You swing off of that. Yeah. It worked though, so yeah, fair worked. enough. Four to one. Yeah, don't you know, Vincent? Does no successful plays or bad plays. So, you're right. You're right. You know. <laughs> Outcome based uh, information. Have funds to spare? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Good shot by the way, regardless. Every rank, every rank teammate telling me, no, nah, dude, it was a great play. It <laughs> it's a great play. It worked, dude. <laughs> it was a tough uh, 2v1 to really set properly, considering as a 1 HP member. Nar is still finding success, still hitting shots very well. Just want to be on the right side of the teleporters. Oh, a little late on the showstopper. Will it be able to reach just a little bit of damage? The wolf is back out. Not a great start for this half, or this round, I should say, for Westchester. The half still, also. The one round they got was could be claimed as given to them. I would claim that. Uh, nice work though by Wolf. At least doing damage to confirm a one for one trade. Molly back the other way. Fresh Prince B. swinging around. These stingers doing big damage. The rotation is scary too because that allows Westchester to be able to pick up those guns off the ground. MDMs could be rotating faster, so they do have a rifle in hand still. Picked up from the back side of the site. Oh, grabbed it out of the teleport, I should say, really. And it's going to be three rifles versus two, but no armor for a couple of these members of Westchester. Nightfall, Nightfall available. Where do you... What timing do you use that for? Feels like it's in the mid uh, middle of this retake. That, that yeah. would be the perfect time. Stim Beacon thrown out. Probably nice now, timing. But... On, yeah, they lost that timing. Alpha hits both the shots. Farms up a nightfall of their own. That feels like a lost opportunity to use that nightfall and effectively yeah. win the round off of it. At the moment you get the haunts, tags, you just pop the nightfall knowing you get at least yep. two of the members. You start running around realizing you just shoot the bodies and you get the kills. 100%, but not going to happen. And... and Listen, I don't want to be, this is, to me, no disrespect to Westchester, but I think both of their rounds could fairly be placed in the column of handed over. Right here. So that round, I will say, is good utility stop from B long. Very well, wisely done by Westchester. And also, we had the knowledge that the Nightfall had been good there. It's hard to make that call in the exact down. moment to pop it and just windmill slam your ultimate off the haunt tags. And little, no way 
would they know that Alpha was pushed up so far, U Haul and not tagged by the hot? Like, the, they just had a yeah. slightly off timing read. Just pairing up with Lug S works. I think Wet Stretcher definitely earned that round. Still, games in the fans of Suffolk, though. They still have two round lead. They have a lot of ultimates to work with here. The economy is still looking really good. Nar right. still getting first blood basically every round. I know, both of us think of the same <laughs> thing every single time. Six rounds in, that's the second lockdown. Wow. So, I mean, yeah, it's hard to use, but if you get it this often, I mean, hey, I'm not complaining. Not Game about that. That's right. Well, here comes that nightfall. Could be a nightfall the other way. Hate not deciding to use it. Now it's time. Pushing forward. Two players. An elbow here. No one's forward. Levi going to take him out. Nar for the triple kill. One player remains on the HP, low as could be. MDMs, well, at single digits. The hunt just not even bothered. Levi swings out and takes the shot. And I mean, Nar, literally max value from from them in, in their utility. Twelve and four. Halfway to another That's lockdown. Outrage. Just like that. That's, that's crazy. Great job I hate as well on timing. He didn't commit to the nightfall immediately because then they'd be caught without a gun out. So they swapped the gun just in time to have a threat back, force back the enemy to have to hit cover again as well. Do this awkward footsies game until they're able to get into the cover and safety of elbow and Nars hands so they can actually get that nightfall off and made that a really good one around. So a lot of credit play. clearly to Nar for getting those kills. Credit to hate as well for doing the reason timing's positioning things like that a lot better. I mean, they are responsible for them getting on the site at all. Both the kills to open it and the lockdown to provide the space. Talk about a uh, multifaceted player. In-game leader, by the yeah. way. Yeah. That's that's even tougher. Being the IGL, you have to call out all the stuff. Presence of mind for all the macro for the team. Yep. And also focusing on the micro positioning and adjustments to get those kills. Speaking of macro, rotation away while it's teleporter. That first kill goes out of the way of Westchester. It's, it's chance of winning another thrifty round for this team. Oh, would have been an even better chance had that shot connected to help a little bit of a whiff, but it's all good. Even. Pulled out here for Westchester. It's all going the way of Suffolk. Feeling the uh, pressure mounting will get tagged down by a tour de force of the opposition. Six to two. Suffolk. I mean, they invested heavily, don't get me wrong, but that was clean as you like. And the concern I had going into this map for Westchester is we've seen them find a lot more success in fast Valorant. And slow Valorant has been Suffolk's game overall in the series. And Bind is probably the slowest map in the game. So, it, and it's kind of going in that direction so far, this this map as well. Just, Suffolk's been able to control pacing and find explosivity windows after slow inches making miles kind of situations. Well, it also doesn't hurt that Nar has found... I, I, I'm going to go out and limb and say like six or seven opening picks. Yeah, at least well, five. It, it definitely feels that dominant. And yeah. I mean, to put it in perspective, there's eight there's eight rounds that have happened. So it's it's an outrageous number of opening pick success rate. Like I, I Chad, you might know the actual numbers, but like do you know the idea of like a pro's opening pick success rate? It, it's you know, like thirty or forty percent at best. Thir thirty I mean, I mean. Pros like yay. Consider the best player in the world will get <laughs> well, maybe a third of the rounds. Yeah, it's a thirty percent. Yeah, this, if you're like, if you're having an guy, amazing game, it's like thirty percent ish. Yeah. Exactly, and this guy is sitting at like almost like fifty or more potentially. So still on the on the map, we'll see if he can continue that dominance because yeah. that's that is very impressive. Like obviously, um, and if you're getting that kind of success rate, then it's not crazy to imagine that they're in the lead pretty heavily right now 
Uh, we're going into a tech pause, as you see on the screen, and you see our lovely faces uh, to indicate that as well. Uh, we don't take breaks willy-nilly. There's definitely a good reason for it, one that maybe we'll share to you as soon as we find out. But uh, for right now, it's going to be tech pause. Um, hopefully, that gets resolved very quickly. Uh, and, and hopefully Westchester can figure out how to handle slow valor, how they can figure out better uh, explosivity options, uh, because right now they're kind of be, being squeezed out, it feels like, round after round. Yeah, it really does. And, you know, whenever the hits do come in, it, it's just it doesn't get any better from there because, you know, particularly on the on the defense on bind, it's hard to control the pace of play. You're very much like the only places you can get aggressive. I mean, there's areas you can get aggressive, but it's you're giving up a lot by being aggressive in those areas, whether you're going to showers, whether you're going to, um, you know, mid or whether you're going towards B long. Those are the options. And I guess a short, a little bit less reasonable. But the point being that you're going to be in a tough spot if you do decide to play that way. And we haven't really seen Westchester decide to do that yet. I'm feeling that that's going to be their next their next thought. Yeah, like you said, there's a lot of issues when you're on defense buying because the pace is not really in your hands. Uh, because it's a little claustrophobic, it's also really hard to get away with being aggressive, going for flank angles, things like that as well. Uh, very different than what we saw on Fracture and Haven. Uh, but what we will see is ourselves going back into the match. It was just simple audio issues, Discord crash for one of the players, something of that sort. So they just got rebooted up. Thankfully, Team Speak and Discord both options for audio things for players. Get right back and running pretty quickly. It was like Levi is quickly getting back into the situation where the offensive team has first pick of the round, but Spike Wolf says no more. And I'm going to find two kills of my own and not let you get the spike planted at all. That's going to be spike on the ground. An interaction we really haven't seen. The showers area not invested heavily by that defense. Another one for one pick. This Fresh Prince is going to trade hate out for the advantage. Suffolk Where's that spike? I think Sopa heard the uh, steps from Chad Tones. Oh so he boy. Tucked back away, ready for Chad to push through here. Does Chad clear this angle? Surely. Last player standing. Chad did not want that angle to be there. No. He cleared not it, but all. he mentally didn't want it, like, wasn't yeah. expecting it. He's like, yeah. nah, nah. The double pit, pit take. Wait now a knows. minute. There's a I chamber there. Strike. Levi knows 100% where both of these players are, though. One enemy remaining. Nice shot. 30 seconds Swing. Left. Potential. 30 seconds. Jumping around the corner. Levi going to get the plant for three. And now has his pick of the litter. The, the positions can go here towards U-Haul. Playing all the way around. Sopa has the idea that this is a possibility, but isn't going to peak it at the right time. The one on two. Quad B for Levi. What a round by Levi. That kill on to Fresh Prince was nuts. And getting Nasty. that first kill and realizing Sopa does not have utility to be able to checkmate here on the peak. I have freedom to be able to run away. The jump bunny hop around the corner there was a little scary for sure. <laughs> I know. But I found the timing for it. I was scared as well. I was like, oh no, he's about to get headshot whilst he's jumping. And Levi... Only two deaths this map. 11-2-0. Wow. Oh. That is that is almost as impressive as, as the NAR stat line, yeah. in all honesty. Hey, look, he's got hey, another lockdown. Something. There it is. Thank you, liar out of me. I, I mean, it's not like it's the best, but if you have it every three rounds, it's great. Yeah. Uh, I do enjoy having every three rounds in ultimate in my hands. Well, they, no matter what the ultimate is. Orbital. For a lockdown. What a great trade. And speaking of great trades, is Levi getting two kills. Not even a trade, even honestly. He's going to get getting cracks. Nar in the face of Alpha. It's all down to just MDMs with a singer in hand running gun action. Right click is available. Can they find another kill? There's another moment to breathe. But this turret ruining their plans. Only six more bullets. Up against all these rifles. Chad tones in the round. It's be 8 2 for Suffolk. Yeah. I, I call that winning. <laughs> Just Levi running it down, finding the double kill there. Brilliant work. We should probably play some stars in the Astro Plane. And I, I'm trying to think here, you know, like what the, the way back in, like the avenue for Westchester could be. 
And I'm just not seeing it currently. I, I really don't. Sopa not having nearly the, the game that they were having in those first two maps either is not helping things. Yeah, it seemed like maybe they're going to run out of steam a little bit. I, I personally do feel like switching up roles and agents as much as they are is not beneficial. There's a reason why in competitive play, you see people play the same agents all the time. Uh, at, well, at the very least, stay in the same role. So you can just yeah. have that feel and you can just stay in that zone in that moment. And you can learn all the little intricacies of your agent as well. Um, I understand some people enjoy the mixing things up to keep things fresh, a little more interesting. And some people do thrive in that, but overall, I do feel like it's going to be do more of what Suffolk's been doing. Sopa. I say that as a very long caster curse, just so Sova could be back online. Needs a little bit more, though. <laughs> Looking to try and find it here and now. Nar, once again, infiltrating the back lane. Wolf with a good connection. What spike? Wolf has spike? Spike okay, indeed. Sorry. Oh no, that is brutal. Look look at how far away this is from literally anyone else. There's 30 seconds. Honestly, a safe call should be here. I don't know. It depends on what Chad can do here. Okay, safe. They're yeah. going for it. They have the economy for it. They actually don't really need a save because they've been so successful previously. Nar is finding another kill anyway. Hate has 14 seconds to find a frag on a person who's very weak and cornered. Ten seconds. He doesn't know. Because wow! That was running. I mean, yeah, he had one health, but still. Hey yo! I mean, he had pretty good ideas when he like corner and he was weak. Yeah. But it is close to range, so running gunning is that as accurate when you just need a battery shot. But man, they are stoked by winning that round. Let me tell you. I mean, they should be. Uh, a, a bit of a giveaway from Westchester. Obviously, they don't have the, the information we did there, but right. you know, when it gets down to that 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 wire, it to almost play, feels like you just shouldn't play. go for the fights. Play together. But Ooh, Nara almost had that angle on time. Stunned him again. Wolf, another big impact frag. Okay. All right, Wolf. Chomping away. Recovering it. Finding his prey. No he might be able to get another, but Chad Tones, the spray transfer was beautiful. Finding two, making this a near even Oops. round. But teleport taken. It's all up to Mdims. And the Mdims will stand tall. Single player against them all. One on three. Nebula. Oh my goodness, what? Chad! Oh my god! Mdims won't expect this, surely, right? No way. No way. How could he? Oh, Mdims going to turn at the right moment. He, he got a little bit scared that he hadn't heard the spike and understandably decided that something was up. But oh my goodness, 9-3. I, 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 I want to see Mdims angle for that because I think... Maybe the elbow or, or the barrel or something was peeking on the mm. other side there because it was a really tight corner to squeeze in for Chad. Yeah. But still, 93 and a half for Suffolk. And what felt like really dominant for, pa fashion is a Hello, couple Portland. rounds where you can't say that Westchester didn't earn the round, but also really felt like it was in the hands of Suffolk that they let it slip by through the fingers. Yeah, ready. no, 100% Suffolk kind of walked away with that one. And, you know, it definitely is Nar finding that opening success rate. I think he's still hovering around, like, 50% at this time. This is Saga, though, desperately trying to bring that back to the opposition. Trying to delay, not let them get the plant off. Does do a little bit of damage to Fresh Prince. There. It's rotation from Nar. Backside does not win it out. Mdims gets the victory there. Keeps the backside cleared. It's going to be a teleportation play, though. Interestingly Hate. enough. Hate was not convinced. Hate is still here. They don't check. Nope, not at all. Two for the price of one. Great deals. Great value. And Sopa tries and fails to do anything further.
Well, I I don't think the rotation play was a bad call. Just, you just gotta, gotta check clear corners. those corners, man. Yeah, it's the 101. Check your corners. That should work. So many times you move into that position and that you know nobody's there. It, it just it's so easy to fall into that habit, isn't it? Yeah, but nevertheless, the three constants and guarantees in life are death, taxes, and check your corners. You oh, gotta gotta check your corners. And if you don't, then you'll get a fast track to one of those other guarantees. Quickly, saga. Found the opening last round. Damage done on this round as well. And this is the type of aggression that I was talking about that I didn't particularly see Pulling all that in. often from Westchester. Wow. Great orders by Wolf. Realizing his stuff doesn't do there. Just like that. Gets out of there, but everything else going the way of so, uh, Suffolk at this point. Not a single bullet connection there. Last player standing. Spike down, B. Ready for the rotation play this time around. MDEMS. Pistol, a uh, classic versus a ghost. That is winnable, but it feels bad. The pressure's on. It has been for a bit, but it is getting even heavier now. This Westchester. They gotta win out here. They gotta win this anti bonus. Something they couldn't do in the first half. And if they don't win it here, then they're fighting for an overtime situation, needing to win nine in a round. Or nine rounds in a row? That's that's tough. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think the comeback will happen if if they are not able to come to a victory here, but obviously possibilities do abound and another great decision from Suffolk. Right? They know that they're a so aggressive. And they just take the take this as a as a team. Wow. Nar is there as well. Closer angle than they were expecting. That close of an angle. The Spectre's just fine. Mows them down. It's three versus two situation. Rifles in hand now for Suffolk. And that spike down as well. What can Westchester members do here? Only problem is health, though. Low health on Chad. Already. Actually, no. Chad was the high health player. Other two are low. And they're going to have to rotate out. Or find a different avenue back into this round. Westchester might just be able to bring this one back. Two on two. Lockdown, though. I like what Nar's doing. Taking this opportunity, went and grabbed the ult orb. And also taking that opportunity to run all the way into CT and the defending spawn in a position that it doesn't seem like Westchester was quite aware of until it's been long enough. It's going to be Wolf checking it just in case. Are they going for a save? I think they are. That's what it Low looks HP, like. Low HP, I think it's a good call. Yeah, I agree. They've done massive damage to the economy of Westchester. It's Nard not does like... not need to die for the lockdown either now. No, exactly. And it, even if they didn't get that, that orb, they could have fought for an orb early into that next round. Yep. You know, the showers orb, often easy to get. Same thing for a, the B long orb. So, a huge play. And, no and, way. Oh my, dude, that is so big brain. I've just realized. Oh. Did he intend that? I. You yeah, gotta I, fight through if you're Wolf there, right? Like, I, it doesn't matter I, if the turret's there. You gotta go for it. I think Nard did that on purpose. I don't. I well, think of course. He like, because think, he was so specific about where to put that turret. Well, I think the reason why he put it there yeah. was just to let him know, like, yeah. okay, there's people coming through defenders, so you have to be careful about right. it. When I'm trying to save, I think it was for scouting purposes. I don't think he expected the big payoff of Wolf realizing that, and getting like a little ca overly cautious. Yeah. Didn't want to take the fight. Yeah. Wow. That's insane. New round, lockdown down. I like what they're doing here, though, too. They have the lockdown down, but they're trying to push out, but it's being ready for it by Alpha, but Alpha loses the fight anyway. It's still Nar getting the, the first blood of the round. Hate well, pushes no. through. There's no players detained because they're far enough out. A little too greedy by Hate to continue pushing forward. And that actually leaves B-Site widely open. But we do also see Chad way deep in the flank. We'll be there a lot sooner than I believe Westchester will be ready for. Doesn't have the best of weaponry in fairness. True. This toxic screen, though. Um, 
This is ridiculous. Good, Levi. Teleport's ready. Gonna find the first. Looking to deny, but Fresh Prince gets off. That spike plant instantly. Spike planted. And yeah. This uh, flank from Chad, it was uh, oh. required. Chad was close enough, but MDM didn't give the audio cue notice to the team. They're not looking at be long at all. I Until punch. now, when Freshman just goes in and checks it, just case. With blocking vision. 1v2. Steal the crossfire setup now, but the Nebulas will help out a little bit. No cosmic divide to work with, and no more stars. Say, but it's going to be a wolf on an off angle anyway. Oh man, it felt like it felt like Suffolk were right on the cusp there. There was so much that could have gone right. But yeah, you mentioned a little bit overzealous from from Hate, trying yep. to get too much done. Wolf does a great job of playing denial. Wolf has, I, I feel like, done that beautifully in many of these rounds that um, that Westchester has found success. Is Wolf just playing denial? But another. Sort of half investment. Interesting that Levi's buying here. He's two or, or three orbs away from the Tour de Force, so by no means a guarantee that they'll get that. Yeah. I think just trying to go for that hero rifle play in case and get a couple of kills. I think it's absolutely confidence by. Wolf is already in heaven. Wow, the swinging through these members. He didn't pick up a weapon though. Didn't pick up the singer or anything. And now also Levi fell to uh, Nar, so. Your rifle is gonzo. Ooh, nice recovery. Quick moves from Hate. Nebula set up temporarily. Gonna try and find something. Vandal, nicely done. Chad. Exits. No more. It is still. A very large deficit, but six rounds, they are getting closer. It's yeah. three in a row. The best they've done thus far. Looking. They've been looking pretty good, pretty good. I will say, though, a lot of these rounds have kind of felt like a bunch of like weird half by save things from yeah. stuff like that. I feel like this is what feels like their first really big buy. Yeah, I, I'm right there with you. It definitely feels like... I, I, to call it mismanagement is probably a bit over overkill because yeah, they've, so. they've had such a good economy yeah. into those rounds where they've done so much damage, but it definitely has not been full straight for Suffolk. Nightfall and Cosmic Pride are available. We see how good that Cosmic Pride is from Chad. Four World Strike gets nothing because they're not there to follow it up. There's no way they can know if anybody else is in the U-Haul at this point, and surely enough, there they are by hate. Chad Tones, meanwhile, finding the first play on the round on Alpha, trying to maintain control of the showers, but MDM's trying to say something back. The timing. Chad looked, but couldn't win the fight. Fresh Prince, meanwhile, finding his saga as well. It's going to be two left on site for Suffolk. No more ultimates to work with this round from them. The Nightfall was popped early, and nothing really came from it. No need to continue to invest in that area if you're Chad. Overstaying his welcome, I think, and getting punished. Suffolk. Real chances for them still in this round, though. 3v4. Welcome to my world. Decent crossfire 30 seconds on left. the site. Nar, as well, still alive and kicking. The Viper pit comes down. Oh, this haunt. this haunt can be massive. It's not going to catch anyone. And the Seas, as well, misses its mark. Good idea that they took back to the showers, but what can they really do to keep them at bay there? The showstopper used very early in this post plant situation and getting sprayed out. Our members of Westchester is still holding strong, nevertheless. Sprayed down by Nar, by Hate, not finding the tar targets the way that they want them to. And low on utility. In fact, it seems like they're out of utility. Nar goes for the save, goes for extra frags, perhaps. Wolf finds Hate trying to be overzealous yet again and. It's going to be Levi going for a save as well. Suffolk forced out because of the Viper Spit invested by Westchester. Yeah, and despite Westchester feeling like they, they invested pretty heavily in, into using the utility early, they don't get punished for it. There's, just, there's no way to get back in there. There's just a lot of Viper Spit utility to wade through. 
and it's just too much. Another one of these rounds based on those saves where it's like, yeah, an okay buy, but not great from Suffolk. Yeah. It's starting to look a little scary for Suffolk here. Maybe that comeback does become a reality. No timeouts just yet, though. So still feel like they might have a good mental about it. And the story, the narrative of Westchester being better at fast Valorant and Suffolk being overall better at slow paced. Westchester's now on the driver's seat, though. They can dictate the pacing. And we already talked about earlier about how it feels like it's really hard to dictate pacing at all on the defensive side. And Suffolk's been trying. A lot of times, like they push out from B long, things like that. Chad just last round trying to aggressively hold. Showers, only good for one there as well. So it's Westchester being able to dictate when they can explode, when they can make the combat happen, and thriving in the midst of it. Here comes the push. Face your fear! Potential A split. So that nightfall comes down. Right. Yet to get planted. Now Alpha is going to do just that. That is after the paint shell oh. go and denied once again. And Saga doing a massive amount of work there with that utility. Nearly getting into position in long range. Now the showstopper. Oh my goodness, what a shot from Alpha to deny this Saga. But still, a one for one. The man advantage now for Suffolk. Is it a fuse? Hey, holding, holding, and they have it. It's match and series point for free for Suffolk. Match point. They got a couple of weapon upgrades as well. Their buy is going to look really good here. The Kami suddenly got a resurgence. Still good for Westchester, though. They're still alive. They got four in a row. Can't really say they can't do five in a row from here on out, but the lockdown is available again for Nar. Is that his fifth for the map? I believe it is. The cosmic divide for Chad Tones as well. So the ultimate economy definitely in favor. As Levi is nearing this tour of the force, but Sopa popping their own this round. Sopa is really you strong. You want to play? Let's play. Needs to have a moment here. Bad. And there it is. The opening pick. Denying Levi on the aggression. Nar continues forward. Trying to take advantage of this lockdown. Prowler will confirm the position of this player. What? Nar! Wow. Are you kidding me? Still commits the fight. Gets away with the frag. But it's a trade. It's a saga. Back the other way. And it's Wool doing the hard yards to continue. And Suffolk, they're spawn. Where you buy guns. <laughs> they're going to have a flank hard here. The trademark, though, is kind of ruining their day and determining do we want to commit a star for this? Yes, we will. Let's not let them know that we're going for this flank play, but planted. Westchester, they know Suffolk has gone for this many times before. That's why I see Suffolk ready for this. Ready for it. Misses the shot, though. An opening given to Suffolk. But an easy rendezvous out is the thing. So it's not so bad, not Mark so one. big a problem. Nice work with the line. Now they know at least where that player is. And the big deal is the tour de force, obviously. Last player standing. Tag down. Wolf swings out. Right time. And the paint shells forced back. Any chance of a retake? Another round taken for Westchester. They are on the comeback trail, but they cannot make any more mistakes. And it was Sopa recognizing last time Nar popped the lockdown at B side, they aggressively pushed and looked for a fight down B long. Sopa, seeing that happen again, went and checked B long, ready for somebody challenging for a fight, and there they found Levi. Shut them down right away. They will not have to operate this time around, but Levi will still be able to buy that up. Just a marshal. For the song. That's no showstopper to use. Right there. Levi one off from a tour de force. I That's they have rounds to give, so it's not like a big deal, but like I do feel like Levi should have bought a rifle for Isasaga and maybe a little by for yeah. themselves, one away from the operator and of the ultimate and play for an orb. I'm right there with you. But like you said, Small thing, maybe not gonna matter, but of course yeah. it could always. We'll see. That's the scary part. We don't know what will be the. Oh. That uh, that is not how that's supposed to work. 
Call the right. mechanic. Tech boss. <laughs> Somebody, please uh, take a look. Here comes the V hit. It's a saga. Hey, that's a one for one. So, doing at least the damage needed with the, with the pistol. Nar. Trying to dissuade Nar from this position. Okay, never mind. Nar is just dumb. <laughs> I respect it. Took site back for themselves. And the Cosmic Divide forced them off the site. They have to fight through Cosmic Divide now. Ooh, that incendiary is so good! But hate shots are better. Good for three. There's only one left alive. It's all down to the Fresh Prince, who's found magic in a 1v3 against the Cosmic Divide in the past, but can't repeat that miracle. Lightning does not strike twice here. It's going to be Suffolk with the victory, the reverse sweep in the series to win it out 13-8. Unbind. The old reverse sweep. Man, it's been a while since I've seen one of those in the collegiate side of things. I, lo I love how close this series was. And the near comeback as well. A storyline for the ages with regard to uh, Westchester. A bit of a tragedy, though, considering that they came out with such aggression at the outset of both Haven and uh, on their own map pick of Fracture. But I, I think that there's so much value that needs to be given over to NAR, especially. Um, you know, I stand by my statement in the beginning of the, this game that you typically don't want to be playing the Killjoy on Vine, but NAR made it work incredibly well. Probably the best Killjoy Vine performance I've ever seen. Yeah, definitely a good performance. I think what helps a lot is that NAR just goes ahead and clicks heads a lot, especially to start off some rounds. Uh, but definitely use the utility very well. Um, I definitely, we set up the, the narrative at the start of this cast of this can be a really exciting match because both these teams going into this undefeated, they're both very local schools to each other as well. It's a little bit yep. of a local rivalry going on, perhaps, and it really delivered. Uh, the Sharks versus the Vikings, also a fantastic uh, classic uh, uh, combat there. Actually, this, I believe it was two Brazilian teams way back in Valorant history that were the Sharks and the Vikings. I do remember play. That. Yeah. Um, I believe actually one of them ended up being bought over into Loud. So anyway, yes. tangents aside, this was an exciting match and it delivered the way that we hoped it would. So shout outs to Suffolk and Westchester for putting on such a performance. It was entertaining for sure. And uh, I, I'm glad that we were able to get that kind of match to end off our casting of the night, at least Vincent, even though there's one more best of three after this. Yeah, and uh, that that best of three going to get to be brought through by Flader and Laird, who are coming up next. Uh, so don't go too far. we got more coming right at you. It'll just be a couple of minutes while we get things swapped over. Be right back. In tense situations, I'll always uh, just get nervous, and it just, it just doesn't go well if that happens. Yeah, I still get nervous. Yeah, I think that's natural, though. Are there any specific teams or schools that your team kind of watches out for or that you really want to beat? Iowa State, their team is crazy. So they have most of the top-ranking players in Iowa. So <laughs> those guys are – they have a big target on their backs. Can you tell me a little bit about what you think about CECC and do you think your team will go to Atlanta? Currently, our team is, we're going over a massive overhaul because we're just, we're down a lot of players due to transfers and other things, but it's still possible. I think we can do it. Okay, yeah, we hope to see you there. <laughs> um, backtracking a little bit, what are you studying in school? What's your major? Uh, biochemistry. Okay. Jeez, you do it all. What the heck? <laughs> what do you plan to do with biochemistry? And do you ever see any overlap between what you're learning in school and esports? My initial plans were to possibly go into medicine, but I'm now I'm leaning to more towards uh, biochemical research. So I I don't know if that overlaps somehow, but if it can, I, that'd be great. Would you ever want to be an esports coach? Of course. It's so, it's so fun. It's so fun. Yeah, when you're not doing medicine and you find time between football and the ultimate frisbee, maybe you can be an esports coach. <laughs> uh, I'll find time to do it all, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Are there any players on your team that stick out to you, whether it be a success story, their growth, or even yourself uh, that you want to talk about? Nah. Uh... See, well, of course, myself is, is a good success story, I guess. 
Because when I joined the Smash and Overwatch team in 2019, I was garbage. Like, it, it was it was bad. Like I said earlier, I was bronze rank in Overwatch, which lowest possible rank. It's just it's terrible down there. And then from there, I went to Masters, which is the second highest rank, which is just ridiculous. And then in Smash, I was also bad. So, and now I'm one of the top ranking players in Iowa. So it's, yeah, it's pretty good. So what has been your proudest moment or specific moment? I know you jumped ranks there, but have there any been, has there been any specific moments in a game or tournament that really you're proud of? It was last year during the, we had a Smash tournament, uh, Smash Ultimate tournament. It was a Wi-Fi tournament to qualify for the national uh, region national uh, part of it. We needed to beat this one school, and this school had some really good players. Like they had, I think they had a link player, and I forget the rest of them. But we were losing. I fumbled hard. I lost all three stocks, and I just, I didn't take any. It was bad. And then my team rallied, and we beat them. And the whole room exploded. It was, it was, it was fantastic. Everyone was jumping all over the place. It was. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was a great time. Let me imagine the energy. That's really awesome. So my last question for you is, do you have any goals for the rest of this school year that you want to accomplish? Well, for Overwatch, I do want to rank up again. I want to get GM. And for Smash Ultimate, I want to get a higher rank. I, I think, so in East Iowa, I'm ranked, four, I think, fourth or third, but I want to be first. I want to be at top of the ranking. I don't. I don't I don't like being under two other people. It doesn't feel right. <laughs> well, I'm sure you can do it. Is there anything that you would like to add about your team or you before we go? Anything you want the world to know about you? Um, join our team. We're great people. I don't know. <laughs> good. <laughs> That's good. Well, thank you again so much for your time and doing this interview with me and fitting me in your schedule of all the stuff you have going on. I really appreciate it. No problem. No problem. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you. You too.
Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this production here on Esports U of our matchup tonight, our final matchup tonight. It's going to be Malloway University versus the College of Staten Island, also known as CSI, which is just the coolest acronym I've ever heard. I'm Laird. I'm Absolutely. here with my good friend Flader. How are you doing tonight, brother? Um, doing amazing. You know, we didn't get a we didn't get a, get a chance to stream the first game. It was, I believe, played on uh, Ascent, and they took a long time. Yes. 30 to 4 scoreline, and it seems like they were, like we were talking about backstage, they were rotating every single time, maybe 40 second plants, I don't know. But it lasted quite a while, but right now, we're going to be streaming from the second game. We got Haven, and personally, Haven, one of my favorite maps. I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. I think the fact that there are three points that you can play it on is one of the coolest attributes of any of these stages. As you can see down here, here are the map picks. We're going to be going to Haven right now, as, as we uh, mentioned before. Uh, it looks like they weren't on Ascent, they were actually on Bind, so... Um, oh. that could be why it ended up taking so long. That, that's a very rotation heavy <laughs> map with those teleporters, but going into Haven, oh, yeah. you know, having, having a lot of flexibility to, to run mid, if you need to, to run, to see, there's a lot of variabilities that you can deal with as these characters. Now, in terms of agents, I don't know who favors what generally, but I will say that the, uh, top player who, who fragged out the hardest for CSI was Sano on the Ray, or excuse me, the Rays last match. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a Rays on this map again. That's got some really good versatility with those uh, plants in with those satchels. Absolutely. You know what? Rays uh, is my main agent, so I will never complain about anybody going for Rays. But I do want to point out that a map like Haven, where there are so many places where people could flank from, both in offense and defense, I have I want to see at least two chamber. I mean, two chambers. From from one from each side and maybe you know uh, agents like Killjoy and Cipher coming in and helping with those alarm bots. But Chambers, I believe, on Haven are a must. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Chambers a character who's really crept up into the meta uh, very much recently. You know, he's a sentinel, but he's got a lot of attributes that uh, people who play duelists or like to frag out can get a lot of benefit mm. off of. Obviously, you got yeah. a, a one tap. Uh, sidearm tool that you know you could just pay 150 per shot for instead of paying, paying paying for a whole gun you got teleport to get you off scary situations on site on top of that your your alt is literally an op for free it's great on eco rounds <laughs> absolutely but, and it all comes down to both the, how, how both of these teams um choose the uh, choose their agents because you know one agent cannot decide the fate of the entire game so they got to no. play around their rosters Absolutely. So uh, the, the last match, is uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit, even though we didn't get to see any of it. I will say that it, it looked like a very lopsided victory in favor of uh, Malloway. And, and I mean, the 13 to 4 on bind, it's pretty telling for the, uh, the, the skill gap in these teams. And, you know, MU currently mm -hmm. is uh, going against an undefeated CSI team. So they're looking to prove something here tonight. They definitely are turning to four. That is one good statement to get you into game number two because we believe Max, Taniki, T, and Six, all of them are more are at like ten plus kills from, as uh, however from the CSI side, there's only Sano sitting at thirteen thirteen. So things are not looking so great. Moloway might just be looking to close this one out in game number two. Absolutely, but you you got to keep in mind, you know, who are the big threats for your opponent, and and you know that first match is going to be hard to tell because. Literally every single player on the roster for Malloway went positive that match. Even yeah. even the supports, even the smokes. But it seems like they like to run a two duelist, one sentinel uh, with that chamber rounding them out. And then on top of that, Larry was on smokes. And then you have Sasuke who was rocking Sky. But... Um, mm -hmm. So pretty interesting spread. I imagine they, they know a lot about their, their team comp and their diversity. But on Haven, you can use a lot of heroes in very creative ways. I mean, there's a lot of walls, so Breach could be a, a decent counter pick. On top of that, Omen, really good smokes. You can smoke Heaven pretty easily on that A site. And smoking C mm -hmm. is really crucial for whichever side chooses to go for it. So it'll be interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I, I really want to get into the match here. Uh, you know, a couple player difficulties going on right now, but nothing substantial. Hopefully we'll be able to get the match going on very soon. And, uh, you know, I do want to point this out. No matter what kind of roster you go for, Haven is a map where you can't judge how how a team is going to play if you haven't if you haven't played if you haven't seen a team play on a haven before it's going to be very difficult to predict it because once again it's a three a three sided map you don't see that in any other fps games because it is new it is unique so a lot of teams 
have come up with different strategies to deal with it. So even if this last game was a 13 to 4, we might see something completely different here in second here in the second game. Of course, and on top of that, you don't have the entry gap of oh, you know, who who's this team we're going up against. Now you kind of have a vibe for okay, this is their best player, this is the player we can kind of pick on a little bit and break their line. Mm -hmm. And you know, on top of everything, it's a new map. You get to just reset your mental. New strategies coming in. And I, one of my favorite things about uh, this map, as opposed to you know a lot of other FPSs, is there is a lot of diversity within these stages. Not not calling any shots here, uh, but like you know on Bind, let's take that for example. You've got a teleporter on hmm. uh, on, on on Haven, which we're going to. It's got three sites. You know, you have a couple basic maps, but they still have their own little intimacies. Like Pearl, for example, one of the longest sea longs, but you got some pretty good natural cover there. So again, there's a oh, lot cool. of various things you got to juggle in each map. And I feel like there's really not a bad map in the bunch, except for Split, but Split's dead right now. We don't <laughs> talk about it. Well, I'm sure there are people out there who like Split, <clears throat> me, uh, but... I have, a, I have my doubts against a map like Bind. You don't have mid. Why do you not have mid in a map? Tell me, Lloyd. Why do we not have mid? Yeah, mid, mid's fun, though. Like, it's, it's, it's enjoyable. And, you know, we might see a little bit of mid depending on what the final map we're going to is. But the decider looks like it will be Icebox, which I won't say mid-heavy, but the mid definitely has a lot of various places you could go. So if mm. CSI is able to push us to a Game 3... We could be seeing a lot of that going on as well. But I do believe that, that Haven obviously has one of the most impactful mids in the game just because you do have a site there. So yeah. it's going to be a fun one regardless when we finally get into it. But it seems like most of the players are set. We are just currently waiting on one person. However, before we get into the next map, we are going to be going to a quick little break. But don't go nowhere. Go probably, actually, if you are going to go somewhere, grab some popcorn, grab some water, because this is going to be a really fun one when we come back. First, can you just tell me a little bit about yourself? Hi, so my name is Caitlin. I'm a part of Farmingdale State College's eSports club. I am captain of the Valorant Green team. I am a second a uh, second semester sophomore at Farmingdale State College, and I'm 19 years old. Okay, do you like Farmingdale so far? Yeah, it's a uh, it's really great. Uh, the program I'm in is very specialized, and it's not offered um, that often in the East Coast, so it's pretty nice. I enjoy it. And what's your major? My major is. Well, guys, we have gotten ourselves a good taste of irony on that break. The split second that we cut to break, everything decided to work perfectly. So we are here finally on the agent select screen. Now, Flater, what's looking impactful here? We already see three lock or excuse me, four locked in. Actually, everyone locked in from Malaway. So we do have a full idea of their team comp going into this map of Haven. And what did I tell you? Chamber on both sides. TN6 and Yon both on the chambers. We got Jets and... Uh... I'm surprised we don't see uh, Cyphers or Sky from Mono University. You know, maybe they're feeling confident they don't need it. They are going for that all-out offense. But I believe Mono, Mono University are going to be starting on the defensive side. We got College of Saturn Island, one Jet, Seragraphic, Seraphic, Seraphic on the SOA. We got a Prim, and they decided to switch to Neon. But So pretty interesting roster. I'm, I'm not sure what CSI is going for here. It's basically all over the place. Hopefully they get that decided here in just a second. Okay, we got two duelists and like you said, a chamber to be that equalizer between the duelists and the sentinels. So pretty interesting roster, uh, pretty interesting roster set up from CSI here with Mono University. They, that, that that does seem to be the one that is overall balanced. Yes, so you uh, for CSI, you do have the bearded bros. You got Breach who goes through walls and you got Brimstone who can set him up with those smokes. Uh, and, and then, you know, on the other side of things, only one duelist is going to be rounding out this, this Malaway team. However, double initiator, two of the strongest in the game right now. You got KO, who makes it difficult for, actually impossible, for your opponents to throw out any of their util, which is a very big game-breaking thing uh, for the most part. Because, you know, if you can't run or you can't use any of your stuns, it's really easy for you to just get blown over. And on top of that, you got Sky, or no, sorry, not Sky, you got Fade to Mark's point, get some intel on top of that. You got Dogs to really take some gunfire away from your duelist. And, you know, Smokes, Omen, very good on this map. And then you obviously 
like you were talking about before, Flater, you do have that instant lock chamber as well here. So it's going to be a fun one for Mulloway. Now, on the other side of things, what do you think about their team comp? Uh, if you if you want to talk about CSI, that's that's what I was confused about. They were all over the place at the start of the at the start of that Asian select, but now I believe they decided on Jet and Neon to go for their ne uh, for the, to go for their Diola setup. And I get where they're coming from. On the attacking side, they know they're starting off on the attacking side, so they want to be quick on their rotations, and they chose and they chose the fastest of the uh, fastest of the Asians. Yes, sir. So uh, I'd like to correct myself. We've, we've been saying Malloway all evening. It's actually Maloy. Uh, so, yeah, bit of a difference from what we were expecting. But it looks like our first map is going to be uh, coming up here pretty soon. I'm excited to see this one. TN6. But it's up down. It's a part of that first round, and it seems like CSI's is having a job pushing on site. Never mind. Max is going to get one there. Player standing. Great trade from him. Sano looking for that recovery, but Tanagi does catch him out on the rotation. And last one we won here. Does he recognize the position of the last player? All right, a bit of a technical glitch there. I guess we'll find out soon enough. Or at a main, Tanagi just pushing in slow. Is that? Is he not moving? Okay. Well, it might it have ourselves a decent pretty early. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunate, so uh, we might need to see a, a quick timeout being taken already by CSI. But hey, defense is gonna be eating that one up. They like that, so they're gonna be going into their econ round pretty confident here. Absolutely, getting those specters and marshals, and I was about to say scouts. Too much CSGO uh, these days, but yeah, we got those specters coming in from Molloy University, and I'm not sure what CSI's plan was there. The spike wasn't down. Sano was looking for that last trade, could not get it out, and ended up with no opportunity for his team to pick up on that post plan situation yeah so csi did end up calling a pause there trying to get their breach resynced uh so we're gonna be coming back you're gonna be looking at our luggy mugs for just a little bit longer but uh don't worry about that we're gonna try to keep you entertained so unfortunately not able to see a lot of that first round uh but you know getting the spike down on on site was uh pretty impactful for the defensive side of things forced a lot of pressure coming in from the offense as it usually goes in this game but uh you know not able to see a lot of plays out of the breach like obviously because of that desync and you know as soon as we get that hammered out we're probably going to be hopping right back into it absolutely and i really want to see some amazing uh like you said bearded brother combinations those smokes and the suppressions together can be pretty pretty useful especially in a map like haven where there are so many close angles where you got those boxes of angles which you could, you could just smoke off suppress and maybe throw in a molly there as well right of course and you know uh throw down the uh the the, the shatter on the ground make your opponent stun they can't move as much you can stick a molly on them not a combination i've really gotten to try out yet but it sounds very fun as well but again with, with all the tight angles you got to hold on this map and all the walls especially on that a site breach is going to be a very big threat depending on how they are being used if they can be used because well, I really hope I really hope they can resync up because you know Breach one of my favorite characters to watch in the game just because he's such a volatile mm. character. Absolutely, that man can single-handedly be an off uh, be uh, the be the duelist, be the sentinel. He can be whatever you want him to. <laughs> one of the most versatile characters in the game for sure, but doesn't automatically make him one of the best. <laughs> As you see, you know he's got a number of maps where he is really good on. You got Fracture, you got Haven, where I think he, he'd be held to a high esteem but then you got maps like breeze where he just really struggles so okay we, we got we got word from production we are going to be replaying round one so uh that win was for not for Nalo, for Malloway, but or sorry maloy but Ooh. they okay i'm sorry production is giving me different things here but we are going to be going back into it so hopefully it will not be a, a 4v5 right off the bat for this replay of round one. This will be interesting. And definitely would be an... Yeah, and I'm really surprised why uh, why CSI decided to go for a seaside push there. Maybe maybe we might have missed uh, missed out the early smokes coming in from Brim. As far as I remember, no smokes from Brim did come in at the start of that at the start of that round. So Mono University, well, they will have to take that pistol round again. Yes. So, I mean, again, if they did it once, they could probably do it again. Maybe a little better because it was down to the last player on that initial start. So, 
we will see now uh something we got a little bit of a bit of intel from our production oh boy actually tn6 from um molloy uh, university is really famous on tiktok for their chamber montages so definitely someone who knows their way around their character well, I hopefully we get to see some of that because it seems like one of the players DC'd again and we might have to cut to another break. All right. Well, you know, I'm almost done with my water anyway. I'm sure you guys are at home as well. So go get some more. Never mind. They're good. They're good. All right. Never mind. We're not going to a break. But still get that water, though. Hydration is very important, folks. All right. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, Lurch, so tell me something. How how do you expect this to uh, go? Do you think they go for the same and uh, they go for the same push here again? It seems to me that MU. All right, we got zero zero on the clock. There, the overlay still needs to be uh, updated. But like you said, TN six, the TikTok chamber guy, will be fun to see him in action. Once again, a push coming in from CSI towards the C site. Yeah. I'm surprised this. Uh, I'm surprised this stack with the same option here. I am too, because, you know, C's pretty uh, go, go, go. different from what we're used to. But hang on, TN6 is here on this catch. He's waiting for one person to peek. But I will say this is this is an easy trap to start off the bat here. Oh He's not my overextending. God. There's that line of sight, though. Hi. Oh, gets one. He's going to fade away. I like it. I like it. Recognize that the rest of the team is onto him. So that first frag will be the only person to fall at this point. CSI is currently down a player. Okay, he was that right back up. Yawn, thank God he is able to play again because he's going to take that one. Tanuki not the only man here to uh, towards the A side of the moment along with the Omen just rotating in but it seems like they are looking for another B side push here. Ruben is in a pretty good position. Ghost in hand. Does he peek it? Yes he does but already down to 13 health. CSI starting off strong here. Appomatic. No smokes yet. And none of the flashes coming in from Breach as well, so I would be very surprised if this just try to dry peek this through. Yeah. is just He's sticking around in the smoke, waiting for any flankers, but 13 seconds left on the clock. They gotta do something now, and they're doing it. 10 seconds, the plant will be going down. Yon finds one. 3v4 situation, make it a 3v3 as Larry just walks in, gets two, looking for the third one. Can he get it? The burst not working out in his favor. A 1v1, the Jet versus Jet. Oh. Tanaki comes out on top here, and MU still managed to take that first round. Yep, good stuff from both of them there. Uh, you know, Asano, who was also on Jet this time around, was the top fragger of the last match for CSI. Uh, Tanuki was actually at the uh, second place position on their team. So, went 15-6 and six on the Jet. Still rocking the Jet here on Haven, and they're looking pretty confident with a 2-0 lead on, on the kill count right now. So, uh, the eco round is going to be a big deal for this MU team. Yon, now that he's able to play, was able to drop two that round, so might be a sign of, of different things to come here yeah and i just want to talk about larry's play there he pushed in completely dry nothing in his favor no flashes no smokes he just went and decided to push in with that classic ended up getting two and that was the round changer here as larry once again the man of the day talk, taking three <laughs> kills just to himself mono university alpimatic now finds one but already down to a 4v2 situation it seems like mu will be taking this bonus round with these yep larry's pretty good with these smokes i i'm, I'm quite surprised uh and on top of that he's really aggressive on them as well yon gonna drop one Ooh. there with that ghost it's gonna open up the way to a do you see a, a certain KO who is weaving around going to be going to heaven to make it a little bit difficult for Aquamatic? Yawn right now hanging out in sewers waiting for the flank. Will drop a slam. Aquamatic is going to go for the plant. But no, Yawn didn't hit anybody with that. Aquamatic is the last man standing here. Is blind for just a second, but not able to get a frag. He is going to be getting flanked in just a moment, though. So he's going to get one. He's going to get a second one here. No, he's not. Falls down from heaven, and yes. Okay. Ru Ventus is going to be able to seal that one out. But again, another two-man standing situation there for the MU. You know, they did have an eco round, but they lost a lot of their players. Mm. 
CSI definitely has been keeping it very close when it comes to the economy here. MU doesn't have that huge economy to work with anymore because they're still going to be have to be sticking with some scrappy buys here. Nova's Marshalls and Famas is, well, you know, like I said, too much CSGO uh, coming through for this team. But however, CSI on the other hand, they got the big guns in hand. So this might be their very first opportunity to take that one round. For sure, man. Now, I mean, look at this. You already have two alts ready from both teams. You have uh, Appomattox who has their uh, Hellfire ready, but then you also have Larry who's got his teleport there with the Omen. But he's waiting around this corner right now looking to try to smoke up somewhere. He might be having some people push Garage. It looks like that is the direction that CSI is looking to push right now. Now, if I were Sano, I definitely would have uh, tried to spam at that door because that smoke coming in from Omen did reveal a certain amount of his position there. But they're trying to be vigilant, not pushing in. Seraphic down oh one Oh my gosh! Head. He's there <laughs> just surviving on the Phantom. But look at that. Max doing a lot of work for his team on that defensive side. Can he find another tag? Yes, he can. And they're finally going to rotate out. They don't want to go against that scout. Max is a one-man army on this initiator right now with a marshal just hanging out saying, you know what? I can hold Seasite on my own, guys. Go go mid. Go cover A. I am taking care of it. Looks like a B push coming in here from MU. Okay, that Neon's going to jump in. Blind TN6 is hiding. Doesn't have oh. any visible lines of sight on him. He's going to stay down there with a frenzy, oh. but is going to be falling. Appomattox is going to get some pressure. A has a Vandal to their name right now. Going to go for the plant. It is a four on three in favor of CSI. Oh, definitely possible. The push comes in though from Taniki who finds one. Max with the short, he finds another. And when I said it was possible, I think I meant it was for MU because Sano, last man alive Eight. on the Vandal, finds one. Nice. Gets the second one as well. Down to nine health, makes it work. CSI get that very crucial first round victory. Yeah, absolute good play there from Sano. Going around not where their opponent expected them to. Because when you plant for A, or sorry, you plant for mid, you expect people to try to come from mid to pick you off, either from window or from, from otherwise. No, Sano came around from garage, and that flank was not exactly what the opposing team needed to deal with. So, Sano, the savior of that one, it is 2-1 to one with some very, very good, strong econ from both teams. Both teams have full loadouts. Absolutely. Just a few light armor coming in from CSI, however, should be paid no attention to as it's still the start of the round on a map like Haven that 25 armor can easily be taken care of. You see Taniki here in a bit of a boosted position with TK6 just holding on some of those close angles, but a bit of a split push here coming in from CSI trying to play for picks. Yeah, they're keeping Spike really far back just so they can be flexible on where they go. I do have two on A. Okay, yep, the rotation's coming in now. TN6 is going to pick one up through the smoke. It's a trade, though, because Tanuki is actually down for MU. So the garage push is going to be big. Neon's going to dash through their blind. Oh, and TN6 gets picked up. Great play coming in from Seraphic there. Can he find another one for his team though? He definitely needs to. No, the Prowler comes in. He will be devastated for a while as Abimatic on the smoke finds one. There it is, Rubenus with the second. Larry finds another. A 1v2 position with the ult in hand. Does he use it or does he go for the save? Alright, teleport onto the box. Maybe towards the side though. Really great positioning there. Can oh. he get the first one? No, he can't. The shot doesn't connect and Yan puts it down. I do respect that teleport. That's a, that's a really good way to schemize your opponent a little bit. You know, draw their eyes away from you. However, Jan was right there and quite ready to hold down that angle. Two to two. And it looks like there will not be that strong of a loadout coming in from MU this time. So the momentum very firmly in the attacker's corner at this moment. They've run two straight. Absolutely. Very easily they can take this around against MU. Don't want to be peeking those marshals again. And it seems to me that they're looking for another sea long push with Larry holding on Garage with the Stinger. And uh, Larry, I don't know about you, but the Stinger, it's like the PP Bison of CSGO. And that's kind of, that can be pretty devastating in close angles. Yeah, and oh, well. Sano already going to pick that one up. Weaving around a little bit too. The a very aggressive defensive side already hanging out in window. I like the aggression here. Sano's gonna be hanging on to 15 health. Max gonna pick one up with a stinger. Gonna get two. For this year, doing quite well, but yep, gonna actually fall. And uh, okay, it is a 3v1 in favor of the defensive side. 
And it looks like uh, Suna Sunaval is like hanging right. out on B, but they do not, or sorry, on C, but they do not have spikes, so they're gonna have to go back and pick that up at some point. Teleport's ready. I'll be looking to make this save here because this was an absolutely crushing defeat for CSI. They had the Vandals and the Phantoms, and going down to MU on an eco round has to be pretty devastating. Now it all comes down to Sunawal to make this team make this round work in his team's favor. Does he go with the push? Yes, he does. Peaking oh. one, but already gets traded out by Rubenis. A huge round win. For MU. Yep, not only do they get to keep the guns that they picked up, but they also have a buy for the rest of their teammates who fell. And not too bad of an economy there from CSI. They might be able to buy some big weapons if they want to. Sano's going to be going for a Marshall. Uh, and doesn't look like good eco for the rest of the team. Maybe not able to get one for uh, Sunawal or Appomatic, but... Uh, it seems like they're trying to figure out what kind... Are they going to do light buys? Are they going to do a full buy? You know, what, what's, what's the play here? Doesn't look like it, but they're just gonna go for armor, a couple marshals. Way. Okay, interesting. Let's see what they do with this because as of right now, maybe Serfix ult might be the only way to go as TN6 with the L of his own finds one. And if he finds Seraphic here, that might just be GG's for this round. Seraphic playing it patiently, doesn't want to push in too early. But great peaking position coming in from TN6 here, just holding down a short while on the other side of the map we see CSI just holding out, uh, just hanging out over at top mid. Nobody pushing through, just waiting for somebody to flank into that position, get traded out, and they can decide to push into a different side. Yeah, considering you're already down a player, not a bad idea to play for picks in this situation. Seraphic can alt if they want to, however, TN6 has that hard angle, I would advise against it. We see that impatient yep, coming in, saying. and there it is. There it is. You're absolutely right. We saw them just shoulder, just shoulder peeking in that position, and we could, we could just see it coming. TN6 patience for 60 seconds there over at Along. You know, you'd think that they have already rotated, but no, this man held out his ground. Uh -oh. Does he check the corner though? But look at that. He just Ooh. walks in. Sano with the save finds the kill, and CSI, they're in for the site. Nice. Have a double smoke, though. Oh, and one's gonna get picked up. Double alts could come in if they so choose. Abomatic and Gone both have one. Tanuki's oh. got blinded. Hang on, they only have 11 seconds left to plant, though. Can they do it? Abomatic is down. Gone just has a Marshall. And gonna get picked off by Ruventus with another one. What? Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that guns could do that. <laughs> Never seen that finisher before. I believe it is from uh, the... Okay, you know what? I'm not going to guess it because if I'm wrong, then I'd probably get smashed in the chat. But, uh, you know, it's, it's fine. Yeah, guns do that, Larry. Did you not know that? Do you not know the collection bullet? Because I sure do. I, man, I've had this game for not very long. I don't know how <laughs> many finishers there are. That one's cool, though. I do like unicorns. National Animal of Scotland, by the way. A fictitious one? Fictitious animal is a national animal of Scotland? Dude, Scotland's a funny place. I'm just saying. But this time, uh, Suno, <laughs> Suno Wall is going to be popping their ult. So, uh, a bit of a difference in the chamber this time. However, uh, TN6 has an operator of their own, and it looks like a hard push on site, courtesy of that Neon. Everyone is going to get hit by the Nightfall, though. Two picks for Max, looking for another one. Guess going to get Yawn and the hard angle. Okay, two players stuck in Cubby right now. Really nice ult for Max to stop that push. Bring them down. Take hold. Absolutely now in a 3v2 position here, CSI, what do they do? They're just holding down that cubicle angle, Max. Just checking out all these corners, MU in a really great position. Already already a man advantage, the reveal comes in from Max and that's probably gonna end up right on their faces. There it is, the reveal and MU has all the information they need to go for this push or just hold down this angle, Appymatic on the Spectre. The ult could work in his favor but he's gotta have it, have it positioned right now. No, he goes for the smoke already down down to Suna Wal on that ult. Does anybody peek him? Well, I'm sure Max definitely will in the moment because they are looking for left. that ace here. Max oh. gonna be walking through the smokes. Suna Wal is gonna be holding there. As soon as that smoke dissipates though, Max might be in for it. Wait. Oh, he was in there, but a nice teleport oh. out. He's going to save Suna Wal. He's gonna get the snipe uh, and stop the ace. 10 seconds left. Might not win the round, Ace. but hey, you, you do damage yeah. uh, the, the, the ego of one of the other team's players. So that's a win in my book. <laughs>
After all, is CSI denying MU that ace? You know, it helps. And hopefully, they don't go down here. Larry does find him. Not so, not such a crucial killer. So you'd want to save that Phantom here. Don't have a, a huge lead yet. Only 5-2 is the current scoreline. Economy not booming, but still on a pretty good standards. Over to CSI right now. Uh, we might just be in a bit of a state of great depression. Because only one person sitting on the vinyl and the others are still deciding what kind of scrappy buy they should go for. But I believe an eco might be in the works here. Hey man, the dollar is crashing as we speak, and it is <laughs> very easy to see the intimacies of that going on in this match right now. Now, uh, a couple buys coming in from CSI, but no, not too too many. TN6 holding down Garage with an operator, but it looks like they might have to go through three players in order to do so. Sees Yawn. Okay, now they know there's an op, so they're gonna scatter from that. Again, yes, he uh -oh. does. Seraphic. However, both of them end up surviving here. Tanuki finds one. Seraphic pushes in, and he's not gonna have two more, more than one life here. TN6 puts him down. Rubenus with another max with a fourth down to the last man there who's already flashed. There's nothing else he can do except for just going down and accept that fate as Larry ends up putting him to the ground. He's looking for the knife there, you know, right? He's like, boys, boys, 5v1 position. You gotta give me some credit. You just leave me alone. No. No mercy coming in from MU. He 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 got down and dirty with it. I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie. He actually he was blinded too. He's trying to swing through it. But again, that deficit gets a little bit worse for them. However, they do have a full buy on the loadouts. And Yawn and Oppomatic still holding on to their ults. They've had them for a couple rounds now. Eventually, you gotta let them go and see if you can give your team an opportunity here. Absolutely. Now we see both of these both of these teams having a pretty decent a pretty decent gun, right? So one operator from the MU side can be pretty devastating no uh, depends on where it has been placed on the map currently. However, we see CSI pushing in uh, slowly towards uh, from a long yawn with that ult needs to be pretty useful with that one and yes he is. The play comes in from Sano who finds two T and six puts down the trade CSI down to a 3v3 position here. And it is just gonna be a lot of back and forth shots going left, right, and center. And the plant from Appymatic will finally come down. Keep in mind, there are two ults in favor of CSI. If this thing goes oh sour, they can go for one right now. But a nice pick there from Sano is going to give them the numbers advantage. KO Knife gonna come in, it's not gonna hit anybody. Might have hit Yon actually, now that I think about it. But Max gonna peek that corner, Sano was blinded. Just the initiators left standing here for MU, and they're trying to weave around. Okay, oh. yep, nice Molly gonna pick, pick Sano in the corner. Automatic is gonna have a little bit of help there. Yawn gets caught down, and yes, the double wow. play is going to be giving CSI an opportunity to get this. However, uh, that thing is Molly, so they gotta pay a little bit of extra time to it. And yeah, okay. Rubentis is going to be there with the defuse. So this round is going to be all battened up. MBU is gonna take yet another one and continue their onslaught. And this will be a save round, presumably, for CSI. One of the best rounds I've seen from MU this entire game. The two Sentinels, like you said, managed to take that round win against Tool. It just goes to show how well calibrated these people, how well cohesive these this roster is with each other. Absolutely phenomenal plays coming in from Repentance, and I believe that was Larry at the end there. Great plays, 72 now is the scoreline. Man, well, keep up the momentum if you are MU. Sano is going to go for an ult, try to get a oh pick, and they God. do! Excellent play with a double updraft from Spawn! Is going to pick one up. And, uh, you know, that is a pretty risky play. They're using both of your updrafts to go for an angle that is not usually normally peaked. CSI, they got to be feeling pretty good about that angle. That's one of those things you can only do once for a match, my friend. But, I mean, wait, wait, wait. Didn't Max Nightfall, like, three rounds ago? How do they have another one so quickly? Ah, oh, okay. All right. I, I think I think this is not. This might just be a pretty uncommon. It's called being good at the game. True. Actually, not something I have much experience with. So that's why I'm a little confused. Now, Sarah. But I mean, definitely, oh, this guy has been. Uh, this uh, yeah, I'm really, really sorry, but this guy has been dominant in this entire game. We see him picking players off left, right, and center, both on the flanking position and offensive position. That's we see that coming in. Anuki finding one, two, three. T and six puts another one to the ground. And MU Ooh. on their way to make it 8-2. Tanaki absolutely relentless with that final.
Yep, Tanuki only going to get three. Actually, TM6 was actually able to pick one of the other ones up. So, uh, you know, nice a little bit of assist there. But Tanuki hold a very, very good angle to help out their team. And now this will be a buy round. Full armor, full guns for the team of CSI. But, you know, we've only got a couple rounds left here. But, yeah, take a look at this replay. You, you know, even though they're, they're, they're <laughs> losing, I mean, come on. That, that, that's cool. <laughs> you got to admit it. Absolutely. I mean, Rubentis, he could not have seen this coming in a million years. Not an angle that you normally peak. And, you know, he decided to peak one of the most weird, one of the weirdest angles and gets eliminated like that. Uh, well, that is Valorant for you. Yep, that is Valorant. People be farming for clips and sometimes it just works. So, no, win or lose, CSI's got to be proud of that one and hold on to it. But Yawn right now trying to maintain his team's chances to get back in here. Peaks a hard angle, TM6. Or excuse me, TN6. That's one for the montage. Gonna switch oh my right God. over to that head on her. Get a pick there. And that is going to help him out immensely because it is only one man left standing and they are a control player. Not much you can do here. 150 health to his name. Not the best timing. Oh, I don't know why he was looking towards the wall there. Maybe he would have heard a player and could have been a wall, uh, it could have been involuntary. But 9 to 2 is the scoreline. CSI, if you want to make the curse happen, you got to take one round here. But look at that buy. We got Seraphic on the operator, a Wandel, a shotgun. And this is just the most random guns that I'm seeing here from yeah. CSI. <laughs> Not a lot of cohesion here. You got a couple people who could play up close. You got a judge there. Uh, two vandals, a phantom. A lot of light armor though, but so it's going to be a, a very risk versus reward style. And then you got Seraphic, who is a neon playing up, so this will be a very fun one too. But they are one away from their ultimate, and you also have access to Hellfire from your brim. And Seraphic's going to pick one up early with the op. Going to give them a, a numbers advantage, which Tanuki evens up in a moment's notice. It looks like a fast push coming on A. Tanuki is going to fall back, go to heaven, rally the troops. Seraphic is going to try to push on, try to see if they can waste a lot of you. Don't. There is the Hellfire. Is it going to hit anybody? No. Everyone able to get out of dodge in a moment's notice. Tanuki there with their knives. Throws down two smokes. Goes up. Nightfall comes down. Oh. Two people caught Hell. Going to be a nice trade there. Appomattox making that one easy. A blind from Max. from the teammate. All right. Hell being held down by Yawn. Going to get one. Trades again. One player left standing for CSI. And they are stuck there in is. sewers. And they have to go through Molly. And I don't think they'll be coming in anytime soon. Never mind. Wait. How does he do it, Sano? What, Max? One round, one round, you'd absolutely dominate the competition, and the other one, you'd just be caught with your pants down. As this curse is true, nine to three being the scoreline. Mu still up six rounds, but what a way to take that last round in your favor. Just putting in that last final glimmer of hope before going into the second half. No, that was the dagger. What an excellent play there from Sano, though. Now. Again, that wasn't just Sano's victory. That was the rest of their team's victory as well. Because those trades were actually quite good. They, 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 it looked like a very, very even fight for the most part. Despite the fact that they were at a, a util disadvantage and an econ disadvantage and an ultimate disadvantage. So, you know, very good scrappy play from CSI. They're not out of this thing yet. The scoreboard says only four more wins for MU. But I think CSI on this defensive side of things is going to make it a little bit more difficult than that. I mean, I hope so, because we are, are here for a close matchup here. 9-3 being the current scoreline with MU now trying to push in towards B. TN6 finds two. And, you know, this. these are the kind of plays that makes you wonder, is it close there? Was it ever close? I mean, it's looking pretty good. Sano's going to pick up two with their own frenzy. Going to grab one. Oh, almost gets one on Rubentis. But Suna Wall recognizes that nobody is on site right now, so they are going to go up to A. Interesting clear actually going through B, having to clear two sites in order to get the plant down. I very much respect that. That's a really nice heads-up play there from MU. Teleport's ready. Suna Wall is going to get seen, though. Tanuki not going to peek. They're just going to play defensively. Ooh. Gonna need to clear that corner where Enemy Rubentis remaining. is waiting. Picks up one with oh the head under, but doesn't clear the corner and is gonna fall down. Rubentis holds strong. Three more rounds, and that was a pistol round win for MU. They're gonna be having to buy some eco right now. I really did not expect Tanuki to push in through that angle. He knew his teammate was at 20 health. I mean, uh, by uh, by the grace of that team cohesion, he was still in such a great position, even at 20 health. Was able to catch them. Uh, was able to catch him on the off uh, off guard. Uh, was able to catch him off guard. There, sorry, having a little bit of a uh, little bit of tough time talking. But Sano, really making it work for his team. We see him 15. Uh, we see him having 15 kills. And you know, it's a pretty. Uh, it's a repeat of what we saw last game. One man. Oh, one man. A positive carry, and the rest struggling to keep it to even one. 
Right. Okay. I like that. I like that. Proccing the team a little bit, getting a pick on C, making the rest of the unit rotate around. And now you're going to be going a different way. Going to be covering mid, saying, okay, you know what? Let's make it look like we're going through garage now. Throw down that dog. And uh, Seraphic going to hold garage. Max leading the charge, going to A. And will Sano get there in time to actually make a difference? You got five coming out of sewers. They're going to be smoking heaven, it looks like. And, yep, Sano going to be walking around with a pistol. See what they can do on the site. Oh, and they're going to walk right into a dog and a very angry MU team. <laughs> they want to just take it and they want to just brute force a uh, brute force into the site to take it and uh -oh. never let go. Just abilities coming in left, right, and center. No opportunity for them to push in. Even have a chance to push in towards the A side here as Max finds one. 5v3. See one of the players pushing in with his shorty. Not much you can do. They pick them off one by one. Seraphic will find one. However, it's not going to be enough to even put a dent on MU's economy. 11 to 3 being the scoreline. And MU, once again, two rounds away from taking this clean sweep. Only player from MU to fall there was TN6, so they might be getting a subpar weapon. They're going to be going for a Bulldog. Okay, actually, I quite like the Bulldog here. Um, but full gun loadout from CSI. They need to be convincing because if they lose two rounds, it is over. Really, just could be, and you know, uh, this is something that we saw last round. Uh, we saw last uh, round as well. Uh, looking at the scoreboard, a pretty similar scoreline here in MU. No matter what map they went for, it has been the exact same case. Eleven to three. We see a bit of a split push once again coming in from MU here, playing for picks. The spike alone over at C main now finally decides to come to his senses. Gonna push back <laughs> mid Tanuki and Max. He's trying to push into garage here. Will will get that first prowler and realize the side is good there for the taking. And here it is, a push towards C now beginning. The spread push looking real nice, but I feel like MU is going to decide, you know, play a little bit slow, but we are going to be going to see that is our main objective. Uh, only one hit left for Sano. Um, there's not Sano for uh, TM6. Larry's going to pick that one up, getting a gun there for his teammate. Very even game. It's a 4v4. Oh. Trace coming in. C. Sano holding it down on C. Can't use that. He's picked off from Suna Wall. He's going to get Last hit by a standing. chamber mirror. Sano's gonna pick one up on TN6. Tanuki's the last man standing. Yon comes in. Okay, it is a 1v1, but Tanuki at five health remaining. They do have Spike though, so Sano's gonna need to go in hot left. pursuit. And he should be running straight towards A side. Yes, that is exactly what he's gonna be doing. Playing the long con here. Tanuki gets that plan down, has the updraft and the dash to work with. So. And we have already seen what kind of aim this man has pretty much. I'm pretty sure he's sitting at like 17. Okay. 17 yep. kills. He does decide to use that updraft oh. there pretty quickly. Sano now Wait, on the long Sano. rotation. He could just ca catch him off guard here. Uh, Yeah, they, they, they're not. Neither one of them are expecting to see the other person there except for Tanuki was. Oh. Definitely was trying to cover that flank. Because they said, you know what? If Sano hasn't come through CT Match or from point. heaven at this point, they're going to be going around the other way. So excellent way to hold that ankle. Excellent, excellent plays there. And MU on match point. Actually, set point. How does he do it? Tanuki, in the most perfect timing possible, finds finds the last man, takes his head off, takes the game round, the game score to 12 to 3 in his team's favor, one round away from taking it all home here. And it's Vandals all the way through. Sano on the shotgun. Let's see if he can do something with it. Decides to go for the Kunai's here as the push comes in from MU towards A side. Yep, Sano holding a nice oh elevated boy. position. Only going to get two knives in. He's going to drop the rest of them. That Prowler is going to expire right in their face. So a little bit of a scare. They do have a Judge though. Going to pick nothing up on Larry. Larry's actually going to win that trade. Larry gets another one too. This controller, man, are they doing well. Only two players left standing for CSI. The last one is Heaven. It is Yawn. Needs to withstand a 4v1 in order to come out on top. And with the Guardian in hand, I'm not sure whether, even if even if this were to scream, they'd be able to get out on top here. Max uh, going for a bit of an ambitious play with that knife does go down, making it a little more easier for Yon to take this round back. Here's another kill coming in from Yon. Can he get the second one? Rebentis already oh! spotted. 1v1. Look at what he's doing with Max in such a great position. Rather, TN6 in such a great position. He's going to be putting him down to the ground. 13 to 3 is the scoreline. MU take this in a 2 0 fashion. Excellent plays there. They got wins on both Bind as well as Haven. 
And, you know, 13 to 4 for the first map. I believe it was also a 13 3 for the second one. So, mm. not even allowing the opposing team to get to five. Both sets, that is quite impressive. Normally, you see a momentum swing in between games, but excellent stuff for MU. They are going to be taking this one, continuing a very dominant season. They are currently moving to 3v or 3 to 1 in terms of their wins to losses. And I think CSI, that is their first loss on the season. They are 2 1 right now in conference play. <sighs> Flater, what are you um, thinking, you man? They were pretty. They were, uh, CSI. They definitely had the strats down. It all came just down. It all just came down to the raw strength that we saw coming in from MU. CSI being overrun by the kind of strats that they were going for, and it was a lot of unfortunate timings as well. Because uh, just like in that second last round, there we saw the long rotation coming in from the jet. However, being caught in the most unfortunate timing. And Tanuki does, uh, I do give him credit where credit is due. Amazing positioning. But you got to give some credit uh, to the timing of that play. Yeah, but I will say CSI, they are a team with a lot of big play potential. You had some really strong stands for a couple of their players. Just not quite enough to finish out any of those rounds. Just just so close, but so far. Especially right at the end there with Jan nearly clutching up for the rest of his team. But that's how the cookie crumbles. Malloy University is going to be winning this one. We are going to be looking for an interview. So while we go to break, uh, you don't want to miss this next one. So don't go nowhere. Don't touch that dial. We're going to be having a hard-hitting interview when we come back. pilot degree oh wow that's really cool thank you so is this your first time on an esports team no so i've been a part of the valorant team for two semesters and this is um my third semester and it's my first time ever being a captain okay oh that's awesome can you tell me a little bit about what it's like being a captain so a lot of times i'm organizing the team making sure everyone is properly set for upcoming games um getting scrims for our, our team and kind of just making sure everyone is there present and possible and able to play the games that we're going to, you know, be participating in. We're participating in two leagues this semester, so it's kind of hectic. Oh, gosh, yeah, definitely. I can see that. How is it different for you as a player versus as a captain? Do you feel a lot of responsibility? I basically have the responsibility of choosing who, you know, really plays, what uh, type of characters everyone's playing and what positions and roles we are all doing, as well as um, being there not only as a team member, but also being seen as in a leadership role and having that sort of respect there and being able to delegate um, everyone's role in the team. So it's definitely a lot uh, more different. And my voice is most definitely her. So <laughs> I, I like it. I like being a, uh, a captain. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, what games do you play or what is your main game? I know you mentioned Valorant. Right. So um, I play Valorant, but um, I started off with Counter-Strike and I really always have been interested in FPSs. So um, it, that background has always been there. So my transfer onto Valorant was pretty, pretty easy. That's cool. What have you done to improve yourself in game over time? So one thing um, for my teams, especially, I have open communication where we're able to really give our constructive criticism without taking offense. And me as a captain, especially being uh, it being my first semester, I find it really important that everyone is able to come to me and communicate like, hey, Kate, I don't know um, how I feel about doing this or uh, I want my voice to be heard about this specific thing. And um, just basically taking into consideration everyone's voice and having that open line of communication is really helpful. And that's something I find really important. Okay. And do you carry that strategy into your everyday life as well, would you say? Yeah. Um, communication is really important to me, um, especially in aviation with crew members. You're always trying to communicate properly and efficiently to get the assigned goal completed. And that works in video games as well as in aviation. So um, I feel like it transfers very well. And I put my 100% effort in everything I do. I put 100% in um, the team, the leagues that we're participating in, communicating with um, opposing teams that we might be going against. Um, all those things, I take it really important and can transfer very well into uh, everyday life. Can you tell me a little bit about what you think about CECC and just competing in general? It's a lot of fun and um, we're so grateful for the opportunity to participate. And, um, you know, this is something that every single member of our team has said. We've never had the opportunity to really compete in a fashion where it's not only fun, we're able to make friends, talk to other people from different schools. It's just an amazing opportunity and something we would love to participate in the future as well. Yeah, we're really happy you feel that way. 
<clears throat> when your team is competing with other teams, are there any specific teams or schools that your team kind of looks out for? I think we all have the mentality of it doesn't matter who the other team is. We're going to put 100% effort and we're going to um, maintain our mental, even if the other team is full of radiance. It's not something we're going to keep in mind because we will be able to beat them. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good mindset. Uh, as you probably know, March is Women's History Month. And you, being a woman in esports, how do you think that has an effect on esports? What does it mean to you to be a woman in esports and as a captain? Just could you talk about that for a little bit? Coming into um, being a woman in aviation, which is already um, really a small, a niche type of thing, especially women in video games, things like that. It's just um, we're kind of the minority. And keeping that in mind, um, a lot of times you have to represent yourself properly because you are representing such a small community. So um, I, I, I feel proud and honored to be a part of um, the women's in aviation as well as being a woman in esports and it's a lot of fun and just understanding that us girls are here too and we're as good as everyone else and that we have the opportunity to be a leader in esports um and that we're equal to everyone it's uh really important to keep that in mind because we're here even though you might not see us too often i know you said as captain your voice is heard but when you first started to be a captain did How's it going, everybody? Welcome to this production of Esports U. We have concluded our match between Mal Malloy. I keep saying it wrong. It's Malloy University versus CSI. It's a 2-0 victory for Malloy. And we do actually have the hero of game two for them. It is Max who will be joining us for this hard inter interview. Max, how are you doing tonight, my friend? I'm doing good. How are you, man? I'm good. You gave us a good match to watch. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. Yep. So, uh, you know, let, let's let's start off here with, you know, how are you feeling? How's the team? You know, are you guys excited to get this win? Yeah, uh, feeling pretty good. Um, we came off of a, a pretty bad loss that kind of, you know, set us straight and we got some good practice in and we're feeling good now. Yeah, it's always a big deal whenever it comes to teams like that. So CSI was undefeated prior to playing you guys. That's going to be a, a big relief off of your shoulders. How are you guys feeling? You know, that's going to carry your momentum the rest of the season. Yeah, we uh, we knew coming into this that this would be, be like a big pressure reliever if we won. Uh, now that we did, I think confidence is high, but we're not going to start practicing. So, true. Uh, Max, I I have I have this one question for you. How was that? How was that first game? I know uh, us casters and the stream viewers didn't miss the first game. How was that first game on mine? You know, uh, thirteen to three. It was a pretty. It was a pretty uh, dominant scoreline. But uh, do you think that momentum carried on forth to the next game, or did you just like build it from the ground up again and absolutely smash through the second game as well? So honestly, there was a lot of timing out. Uh, so uh, it was definitely the, the momentum was like yes, there confidence wise, but in terms of like mechanics, you know, like you definitely tell like after pauses we were kind of a little bit off uh but yeah i mean like uh i think we felt pretty dominant the entire time uh the rounds that we lost it was like silly mistakes but you know we're gonna work on that and let's learn and uh, how did the team deal with that first round reset because uh, we saw you taking that very first round but after that dc you had to play it again and that and the, the next time it was played again it was down to a 1v1 position with that i believe in a 1v3 clutch we saw uh, we saw your teammate jet taking yeah. it by a very small margin yeah so uh after we won that first game, uh, the, with the reset coming, you know, we were all kind of like, you know, we, 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 were, we were confident again going to the next one, you know. We, we were like, okay, it's okay, reset. We're just going to win the next one. Set the confidence high. Um, yeah, Tanuki or Brayden had a really good clutch, so uh, he clutched it up. But, yeah, uh, we, we didn't mind. Not that big of a deal. I mean, we, we had a lot of confidence, so it wasn't really, uh, you know, it didn't really matter that much. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, Larry, do you have do you have a question or would you like to me would you like to take one more? I do have a comment actually, uh, Flater. I, I, at one point, you know, uh, when you're defending C pretty much single handedly against a five man stack, you had a nightfall come in, nearly ace the round. I was like, wow, you know, this Max guy, he's he's pretty good. He starts hitting these, and then like two rounds later, you had access to nightfall again. And and I was like, Flater, have you ever seen this before? He's like, yes, Flater. It's called being a good player. So you definitely got some fans out of us. You got a fan in the chat. You got a couple as well, but. Uh, I just got to ask you one thing, you know, the, for your team, your university, yourself, do you have anyone who you'd like to shout out tonight? Uh, show, shout out to the whole team. Uh, we put in the work. Uh, definitely all confident. We, we hype each, uh, each other up, you know. Even, uh, you know, when, when we're not playing, like between rounds, we're all, you know, we're really hyped up. Uh, shout out you guys. Uh, I want to shout out my girlfriend, Eve. She's watching right now. Shout out to her. And, oh, uh, yeah. 
Awesome, man. Oh, oh you're not going to plug the YouTube? Oh, 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 yeah. All right. Plug time. <laughs> YouTube.com slash it really is max and uh, twitch.tv slash it really is max too. Uh, thank you. I appreciate the uh, opportunity here, guys. Of course, man. Well, hey, congratulations on the win tonight on two top fragging rounds for you. Uh, I'm sure you're going to go celebrate, but just make sure you stay safe while you do it. All right, man? Of course, bro. Thank you very much. Take care. Have a good one, my friend. You too, man. But, Flater, that's actually going to do it for us here tonight. And I do want to point out uh, something that I did want to point out to him. One of the one of the scout plays that we were one of the martial plays that we were talking about over at uh, C Long here when uh, we, uh, we saw Mu on an eco and this man just smashed through the entire team, damaging everybody down to twenty health. And they were and they were like, "All right, boys, we can't take C. We got Max there on on the martial. We don't know what he's doing, but." We gotta go away, and that just goes to show how crucial of a role he was to that team. Yeah, Max, the one-man army, he has led his team to two straight wins here tonight. So, Malloway University is going to be advancing on, well, I mean, to a pretty good standing 3-1. to one. Definitely not something to sneeze at. But, hey, for us here, Flater, that's going to do it. We're going to be heading to bed. It is a little bit late for us, so uh, we got to get our good night beauty sleep. But for all of you guys out there, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed our production here of Game 2 of the set between MU versus CSI. Go drop a follow to the Esports U Twitch as well as Esports U2 so you can stay up to date on all of the matches that we have going on. For Flater, for everyone else here at Esports U, uh, I'd also like to shout out our production team, Leighton, who has been on production, and Cool Scoots, who was our... Uh, not not producer our observer this evening but thank you all so much for tuning in until next time i'm laird he's flater thank you so much have a good night seriously being a girl was that respect there or did you struggle with that so i would say initially when i first got on the team i was put onto a support role and you know everyone knows that women normally play healer when it comes to going into any game and now i'm pl i'm playing more of a controller based or sentinel uh which is very crucial for holding down sites so by playing that now and then having those semesters in my backpack of of experience everyone has treated me with uh respect and i i, I would hope it stays that way and either way i demand respect because i I reciprocate that respect to everyone else. So it, it's definitely difficult, especially for girls starting out. Um, that toxicity is there, especially even now, whenever I play a game without my team there, that toxicity is there just for being a girl. But as long as you, you know, don't have that mindset of them affecting you because you're better than them anyway, <laughs> it's, it's fine. <laughs> Definitely. Well, that's good. I'm happy that you're getting respect that you deserve, and that's awesome. And thank you so much again for your time, and I really appreciate it. No problem. I just wanted to add that our esports team, our esports club as well, started only with 13 students and two teams in 2019, and now we're up to 19 different teams and over 350 students in um to date in 2021. Like that progress is there, and even if you have such a small like. If you think that things are so small, realize that a community is there for you, especially being a female in esports. That that community is there for you. Definitely. That's a great way to end it. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for sharing your story. I really appreciate it again and your time. Just thank you overall. That's awesome. Keep no doing problem. What you're doing. Thank, thank you for the opportunity. Of course. I hope you have a good rest of your day. You too. Thanks. Bye. Hey guys, KTAD here, and just like that, another season of ECAC Esports. Regular season play has come to a close. Over the last eight weeks, we saw a crazy amount of hype competition from some of the best collegiate esports has to offer. And as usual, you guys have me one last time to break it all down and to show you guys what we thought were some of the top plays this week. And Honestly, guys, I, I don't have much more to say. Just check it out because I think we've got some really incredible clips here. Let's take a look. In our opening clip, it's Professor Dementium with a straight boot off the stage to kick things off for Bloomfield. 
got himself one. Kick back off stage though. But the air dodge is going to be that Bowser. He'll do it again and they'll also bring himself that down smash so he gets quickly back before that Chalk is able to take any sort of advantage. But uh, well, you're gone. The spikes come through. Let's clean kick to wrap things up. And we've well, got one. He's got one stock for his troubles. Up next, the duel of Donkers and Robeast have some things to say with this beautiful 1-2 combo to close the door on Albany. Hit the intersection and go straight up in the air for Robeast, who's, who's going to work Central Missouri into the offense. Flip resets a good one. The pass down to Donkers, and he finds the net. A three-goal deficit in Game 3. I got to say, Curtis, it seems like after these two teams came out of Game 2, right? Uh, again... In our next play, who needs to be able to see your enemy when you can just take a educated guess? One for one over towards Catwalk. There's still more where that came from. Pyramium is next up, and he will take a couple too many fights. Solsta, as well, is going to be able to take a couple of fights, winning them both. It's 1v3, and Novacorium won't be able to do anything. Johnson, Wales. At number five, it's Saltonix with this huge flank onto Cole College to secure Temple of Anubis for his team. Right now, it's got to be just destroying it straight up. Maybe of the Coalescence, maybe the Supercharger, but that Retire could just immediately are through. Here's that Rip Tire. It does move Joker, but it could have been a catastrophic play. Now Nightfold is pulled all the way off the boy, and that's an easy one. Tonic's coming in with a triple off of that crucial Rocket Barrage, and that is all of them off the point. Now it's time to Joker just to get the touch onto the